Okay. Let's go. This show stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay. Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 12th already, 2023, this sports program starts now! Football! And it's happening in a massive way. Last night, there was a doubleheader on ESPN and on ABC Ooh. where we saw... A Pison lead a Pison locally based uh -huh. team to a massive win over a storied franchise like the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, we saw Tyreek Hill and the Miami Dolphins lose to the who? The Tennessee who? The Tennessee Titans. The Ooh, AFC wow. South is no joke. But now the conversation about who's real and who's not has changed drastically. Will we be overreacting today? Certainly. Yep. Have to. That's our job. But also, we'll be talking about everything happening around the football world. Statements that are being made. Like Patrick Mahomes came out and said, yeah, I regret how I acted. Yeah. You know, everybody was calling me a little bitch pretty much with the way yeah. I acted with that referee. I thought I was just showing emotion, maybe sticking up for my teammate, letting the boys know that I am invested in this as much as possible. And yeah, I might have lost my cool a little bit, but I do regret it, even though I still think that it shouldn't have been called, which I respect and I appreciate. Mm -hmm. We will chat about that and everything else happening around the sports world. We got P.K. Subban joining us okay. in 28 minutes. He's a 13-year NHL vet. He covers the NHL for ESPN. He's a stud. Oh, yeah. Dog. He comes in here and cuts promos. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he's doing it for hockey. And speaking of hockey, tonight, Connor Bedard and Connor McDavid are playing mm -hmm. against each other. Wow. If you don't know hockey, you don't know what that means. Basically, the two... Young, electrifying hockey players are going to be on the ice at the same time in a city that no, none of us know where it is. Nope. 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 Okay, it's, this game's on at 10 <laughs> o'clock Eastern because Edmonton, we do know, is on the left part of Canada. That's a specific time. So it's 10 o'clock at night, Edmonton Oilers, Chicago Blackhawks. This guy, number one overall pick, has been deemed the next one. That guy over there has been dazzling on skates in the NHL for a while. Can they win the big one? No. That's what everybody asks yeah, about. Right. Right, David. We'll talk to P.K. Subban about that. And also, everything happening in hockey. Who we, Who's going to win all this year, P.K.? Boston. Uh, Aaron Rodgers joins us today. Obviously, massive win for the Jets. What do you see out of Zach Wilson? And also, what are his thoughts on the entire NFL? Mm -hmm. More specifically, where guys line up on plays yeah. that could potentially <laughs> go on to be one of the greatest plays of all time. And then in the third hour on uh, YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. By the way, we're a very big ESPN Plus show. Really? really? We should almost start like saying that's our... Actually. Like, I think we're the biggest show that ESPN Plus has ever had. Okay. Huh. So okay. Like, we should maybe start... Who would have thought? As King's the ESPN player. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Okay, now, we're not comparing, uh, like, you know, UFC and uh, events. Yeah, that doesn't no, count. Live, different. We're very different. Dana could potentially right. say... I understand they could do that. But as the Daily Show king of ESPN <laughs> Plus, today we got a treat for ESPN Plus. And obviously for YouTube, our home, our family, our original mm -hmm. place that we always have it. Matt Rule will be joining us. Okay. Head coach in Nebraska. Yeah. Matt Rule obviously uh, was a coach for Temple. Did very well. Mm -hmm. Baylor did very well. What? So well that David Tepper said, hey, I need you in Carolina. Gave him a $70 million deal. Yeah. It was a huge ordeal. It did not work out. Is anybody going to work out in Carolina? I guess that is kind of the question. Now he's back in college at Nebraska building. His program is in the middle of some heavy recruiting and changing potentially the future of the Big Ten. But also, what we have referenced him numerous times is because at a press conference, as a man just got back into college football after having a lot of success in college football, he said... You know, a good quarterback costs you a million, million, mm -hmm. half, two million, just so we're all. And then he moves on, and then he sees one person's reaction. He's like, yeah. <laughs> that's the wor This is the press conference that Matt Rule had just a couple weeks ago describing the state of college football, the transfer portal, and where it's at right now. Make no mistake that a, a good quarterback in the portal costs, you know, a million to a million five to two million dollars right now. So just, just, just on the same page, right? So um, <laughs> let's make sure we all understand what's yeah, happening. You, you just <laughs> so, saw. Yeah. Um, um, you know, there's some teams that have six, six or seven million dollar players playing for him. He made eye contact with somebody that was like, and he was like, yeah, uh -huh. just so we're all in the understanding. What else does he know? Hmm, probably a lot. We're going to ask him. Bunch. And how excited is he to be back in college where he absolutely dominated after doing some hard time potentially to Carolina <laughs> Panthers? Sure. We will chat with him with that. We have a great show. I'm excited to be here. And we also have some special guests. It's not the talks table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt, although the... 
the strength of the pack or strength of the wolf is the strength of the pack. Boom. And that's why you're wearing that shirt today? Yeah, the strength of the pack is the wolf. Actually, there's 10 wolves on here that most of them are hidden kind of oh, nice. in the rocks, Same if you gems. will. So you kind of have to find it. How like many triangles are in the photo in front of you? Bingo. It's one of those. Uh, so, yeah, it's a nice one. But, yeah, I figured, you know, might, might as well start off with some wolves. Got some other wolf shirts later on. But, I mean, last night, there were a lot of wolves out there playing football. Huh? Yeah, one of them super Italian. Speaking of, one half of the hammer, Dan Cowboys, Anthony DiGiulio. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have a question for you. How do you feel about what Tommy DeVito is doing for the state of Italians across the country? I don't think there has been one mafioso or racketeering arrest mm -mm. since Tommy DeVito has started doing his thing for the New York football Giants. Tommy DeVito is doing for Italian Americans what Joe Montana did for Italian Americans. Okay? okay. Joe Montana. We got Tommy new DeVito. Brock Purdy supposed to be the new <clears throat> yeah. Joe yeah. Montana. Mm, potentially no, no, some no. stats, potentially. And now we got Tommy the new Italian American doing his thing for football and for Italians in America. Yeah, I mean, what Tommy DeVito is doing is awesome. I mean, he's got better, if not the same numbers of Patrick Mahomes. So is he the next <laughs> Patrick Mahomes too? I don't know. I Stone. thought that should have been some gabagool or brujute on that on that hoodie there, but that's fine. And his agent said, Don't worry. <laughs> I'll come in and look the most Italian. Any human has ever looked in the history of humans in the United States of America. The size of the Italian horn that his agent was wearing in the stands. He didn't have it on, on the field when he was on the phone. I don't know if that was a fake phone call or a real phone call or not. Fakes, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, Come that on. was a fugaze. For sure. <laughs> figure the Mahomes is calling him right now. Like, yeah, hey, baby, look, I hey, how can we do a little gabagoo? We the size of the Italian the horn KC. was obnoxious. But look at it. <clears throat> Diesel. It's a three-inch Italian horn. Elephant tusk. Kiss me. Kiss me, Mr. DeVito. And then the owner of DeVito Plumbing, by the way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tommy DeVito's dad, we believe, from our internet sleuthing, owns a plumbing company. Yep. And their marketing photo at the top of their social Great. media pages is actually two of their plumbers dressed up like Mario and Luigi. Because yeah, if smart. you do remember, yep. Mario and Luigi were both plumbers. Mm -hmm. That is how the entire thing, that's why they boop, 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 yep. boop, go down in the pipe mm -hmm. and everything like that. This is an Italian story that I could have never seen coming. And shout out to DeVito playing great football. Great, great football. You know, you think about guys like Taylor Heineke and Mike White and other backups that are able to galvanize and rally the troops. And for whatever reason, the guys just like them and seem to play for them. And yep. understand that, hey, this guy might miss a throw seven, ten yards. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. There's Maybe. a chance he makes a bad decision. I might get open as a wide receiver, and he might not hit me. But the expectation isn't that he should. The <laughs> expectation is like, hey, Tommy DeVito is going to lead us to a game today. And he did on the ground. Mm -hmm. He did through the sky. Obviously, his parents gabagool energy coming mm -hmm. from uh -huh. the stands was radiating through the entire team. Saquon Barkley is running wild out there. It was a beautiful thing to watch over there in New Jersey where I believe... 70 million Italians live. Yeah, that's right. right. Could yep. you imagine a better fit for Can't. a team than Tommy David, who almost scores right there, oh. obviously gets tackled by Wandale, who had a huge night <laughs> for the New York football giants. But this guy has sparked something. And you literally think, and there was conversations, how come the Giants are better with Tommy DeVito than they are Daniel Jones? This was, yeah, this, was weird. A, this was a dead football team with Dan Jones. How come everybody seems to be a little bit happier? How come the head coach, Dayball, is coming out of his show and he's happy in his press conference? He's like, do I need to tell Tommy DeVito to relax? No. I, I, every once in a while, I need to tell him, like, hey, we're, we're going to spin us yeah, some bitch. Hey, rip us. Uh, this is Dayball talking about his relationship with Tommy DeVito. You don't think this guy loves DeVito? You don't think he loves Paisano? Listen to Dayball talk afterwards. What was the conversation like uh, trying to keep his composure and stuff uh, yeah you don't have to worry about that he keeps his composure there was really nothing here's a couple plays we like go out there and rip that son of a bitch <laughs> well, I love that I think we're potentially to blame for some of these answers that have been given mm -hmm. you know in these answers <laughs> yeah. people are a little bit more relaxed and I appreciate that I think we're learning more about the humans that actually put the football on the field and the ones that piece it together but him just you can see he admires Tommy DeVito. Yes. We don't have to worry about his composure. No. Like, listen, we, this guy's okay. Have you seen him? Mm -hmm. He is A-OK. -okay. He walked in here in a pink fur. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think he is A-OK -okay in that entire thing. And then letting him rip, it's like, there's probably moments where Debo in the offense coordinator in the headphone headset are like, hey, Tommy DeVito, you're better than Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Remember yeah. that. Fire it. Remember that. And then it cuts off, and then they're still on the side like, you're really good, DeVito. Do your thing. Because all they got to do, build his confidence. And if he continues to do what he's doing, 
Why not the Giants looking ahead with Paisano at quarterback? We obviously have a Giants diehard fan, a coastal elitist here who's not an Italian. Uh, Bruce Brown, I see you're wearing the Giants hat. Haven't seen that in a long time. No. You know, a lot of Michigan hat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As of late, got the Giants hat back on. Is this the DeVito effect happening out here? Yeah, it is full on. I, I haven't seen the city tri-state area captured like this since Lynn Sanity back in the day. It is Ooh, full on DeVito wow. mania. He has injected swag and confidence into that offense, into that locker room. Um, you know, it's an absolute blast. Now we're one game out of the wild card. Who knows? Whoa. Who whoa, knows? Whoa, whoa. Who knows? Hey, Dable has uh, proven to have success. Yeah. yeah. Wink Martindale has proven to have success. Mm -hmm. That's why whenever they stunk, it was like, what is wrong mm -hmm. with this team? They're paying a quarterback $40 million, and it's not this one. No. It's not, no. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, not this not one Tommy here. Cutledge. Hey, Tommy Cutledge. Uh -huh. Interesting name. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we got to that. I think he loves chicken cutlets or pork mm -hmm. cutlets or yep, something. Sure. I guess Saquon gave him uh, the full Tommy Cutlets uh, nickname is what we're saying. They could have really went with that one a little bit further. Oh, Italian. Look at those cutlets right yeah. there. You know what I mean? A little bit further Italian on that. Because to Tommy is a good setup. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And there's so many. Tommy Breadsticks. Yep. Yeah. What? Tommy Raviol. What? Tommy Bolognese. What? Oh, my God. Tommy Gabagool. I yeah. Mean, I mean, there was just so many that it could have been. Tommy Cutlets, we love. Sure. Hey, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We're a big fan. Everyone in, loves Cutlets. In the Paisan agent. Way to go, pal. Mm -hmm. Doing Way it. it. Way to go. On his Twitter account, I guess he has a certificate of uh, from the Italian club up in Boston. <laughs> that's, that's a big right. deal, too. <laughs> I don't yep. think that's, that's, it. Yeah. that's not any club. That's a huge deal. Sean Stolato up there. Blessed to be honored by the Boston Italian consulate. Thanks, Arnaldo Minuti, for the recognition. Name. Legend. Clean fit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he does seem to always dress well. Uh, this is... It's a phenomenal story in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know yes. what I mean? It's just, like, so perfect. Happy for the Giants and... Uh, on the flip side, let's go to our super experts, obviously uh, nine-year NFL vet, uh -huh. host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB, Darius J. Butler's here. Yes, buddy Butch. Buddy Butch, you look super cool today. And also 12-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, Jackie Moon uh, down there yep. at Tampa Bay Buccaneers, player coach. He wasn't the owner, but <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, host in the trenches, A.K. Shipley. Yeah, baby, Q. Hey, Q, before we ask Ty Schmidt, I want to ask you this question mm -hmm. because Ty is going to have a different reaction, I think, than maybe you would because he is <laughs> invested in the Green yep. Bay Packers. We've been riding this wave with Green Bay Packers, and the wave has been very good as of late. We're talking about pipe. We're, we're, we're barrels, I think is what they call those yes. waves. Mm -hmm. we're, we've, been oh, riding yeah. good, we've been riding a good wave with mm -hmm. these Packers over the last like four or five weeks. Like, here we go. This team is hot. Jordan Love has found it. LaFleur has figured it out. Now, no Christian Watson last night. Knew that was going to be a conversation piece because he takes the top off it. Defense has to respect it. But the defense have been playing good. They got like nine number ones on that particular field. The Packers, oh, look out. Going. NFC North. Now they can still do that. They lose to the Giants, though, on prime time. Do we need to worry about this Green Bay Packers team? Jordan Jordan Love didn't have his best game, but just like a few one week ago today, Aaron Rodgers said, like, hey, we need to, you know, maybe just let a guy play instead of just every week saying, yep, he can replace Aaron Rodgers. Nope, he can't replace Aaron Rodgers. Today, big conversation. Nope, he's not going to be able to do it because of what he did last night. Is that fair? Is that real? And what do you see from this Packers team, AQ Shipley? I texted Ty the other day and I said, hey, listen, Jordan Love, he's 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 going. He's going exactly where we all thought, but when you see this, we we instantly overreact every week. As soon as a game happens, it's like, hey, listen, they stink. They're dead. No, that's yep. not the case. No, right? we don't do that. No, no, no. Every Sometimes week, everybody. We're very calm. Yeah. yeah. Very, very calm. Yep. But listen, he's playing with an offensive line that's makeshift, right? They're, they don't have their left tackle who they were counting on for years. I mean, he's one of the best in the game when he plays, right? They don't have a bunch of guys. Um that he's missing a receiver, and the defense has given up a ton of points. He did throw a terrible interception yesterday, which I think we all can agree on. Slipped right? out of yeah. his hand, right? Slipped out of his hand. That, that, that must have been it. And then they give the ball to A.J. <laughs> Dillon. So. He's hammering it, and they stop giving him the ball. So there's a lot of things going on. Classic. Don't know what happened, but – yeah, we might, we might want to worry a little bit. Okay. Whoa. I appreciate the fact that in the end you said everybody overreacts, but now you are worrying as well. That ball just slipped out of his hand. I, I, yeah, I, don't, nice pick. I don't think Tough he one. knew exactly what was going to happen. It was a good pick. Darius, whenever you watch this Packers team, and we'll move to the Titans-Dolphins for sure, yep. but whenever you watch this Packers team, they have, like, a read was electric. Yes. Was, uh, you know what I mean? Now, he's getting the ball going – uh, east west every yep. single time he gets it it yep. seems like mm -hmm. in the Matt LaFleur offense and they're rolling and he great ball spin here at the end too just like, oh I guess they cut it off Damn. but his ball spin was very <laughs> chill 
kind of like how Brandon Aubrey kicks, like very relaxed, mm-hmm. and then the ball just goes. He just casually went like that, and the ball was yeah. very tight. Cyclone. Yeah, that means he's worked on that, mm-hmm. yep. which I appreciate. Anybody that's working on celebrations has great confidence, which I enjoy. The Packers team, are they, yeah. are they the ones in the MC North after what we've seen the Lions Ooh, do the yeah. last couple weeks? No. Remember, Packers just beat the Lions. Yeah, right? Literally I'll, just beat the Lions. Handily. Definitely wouldn't say that the ones in the NFC North, maybe the next two, three years, they're just a young team, and t- AQ mentioned it, the makeshift offensive line who's played decent this year, uh, banged up running back room. A.J. Dillon was going last night. But just a lot of youth when you, when you look at the pass catcher and obviously the guy throwing the ball as well with Jordan Love. 25 years old, been in the league for a while, but this is really his first year. So you're going to have these hiccups. He was on a great three-week stretch um, in late November, December, when that's when teams kind of start becoming who they are. But I'm not worried about them long term. This year, I don't think they, they make a run. Everybody's still in it right now. Everyone's still alive, even the Giants. Great feel good story. Right you know, we had, we had to, we, the NFL, we love a storyline. We love what's going on with his family. We had the pastronaut earlier this year. Whoa. We had oh. probably another story. Oh. You know, Where are you going? Hey, hey. Where are you going? Tom hey. is not, pa- hey. not a gimmick. No, he's, yeah, he's passing not, I'm not, I'm not calling him a gimmick. He's not Tommy hey. Cutlass. He's hard right, to win games in the NFL. He's um, Joe Montana. He is, he is, he is. That's a great 70, yeah. 70 on the ground, you know, three three wins in a row for him. So, like I said, great story right now. Uh, Saquon, he got going late in the game, had some big runs. You know, Turf Monster got him. He, you know, gave up the yeah, ball. That was <laughs> tough. Tried to give the Packers a chance. Yeah. Um, we had, a, honestly, two good football games last night, surprisingly. Agreed. Let's go back to the Packers. Ty, the, now, you this morning, vastly different than you last week. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Last week, remember how high? Uh, riding high, oh, yeah. Back, last two weeks. Oh my! After th- oh, I, uh, since Thanksgiving, it has been oh my, well, all smiles. We got the guy. All yeah, the sunshine. Yeah. Still do. We got the guy. You got people all over the place mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, we got the guy." Mm-hmm. People Make are attacking me because they got the guy. Mm-hmm. Good the coons got the guy. Mm-hmm. You agree with uh, D? But need to be a little patient. Okay, listen. We got two, three years to make this work. It isn't just about winning the Super Bowl this year. No. It's not just about trying to figure it out this year. We got two, three years. So for the Packers fans, let's just relax on this wave. You know what I mean? We yeah. don't need to be up and then down and then up and then down. No. This is a two, three year project, anyways. We all knew that whenever Jordan Love came in, this right? Isn't that the? Uh... Yeah, I'm. I'm not worried about Jordan Love. Okay, I'm, I'm that's not. good news. That's Going great. into yesterday, I told Bruce, I was like, hundred. I think I told Connor too. Yeah. I was like, Packers are going to get beat. <laughs> like this is just after beating the Chiefs and beating the Lions. Like this just seems like a young team. Like oh hey, we can just. We can just show up, and we're going to win. We're playing so well. It just felt like the kind of game, especially with the passing Paisano and everything he's got going. Mm-hmm. It just felt like so- something that could, like anything that could go wrong, potentially would. But four times this year, the Packers' offenses went down and scored in the fourth quarter. And Jordan Love, yeah, he didn't play great last night, but again, he puts them in position to win the game. Uh, Anders Carlson misses a field goal early, which they could have used. But stop me if you've heard this before. Uh, the Packers' defense can't stop the goddamn run at all. Again, they gave up over 200 yards rushing. Like Tommy DeVito, yeah, he's great. Okay, I watched him play at Illinois and Syracuse, so like I've seen him play a bunch. They made him look like Joe Montana mixed Bingo. with Michael Vick mixed with <laughs> Colin Kaepernick last night. Like just. I, I just don't understand. I mean, I don't know how inconsistent you can be week in, week out. And I, get, I guess I get. it was a little Colin Kaepernick there. Is oh, that, yeah. is that oh, what yeah. you're talking oh, about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Uh, is that the Kaepernick used to just chew up the the Packers sure. every sing, in the playoffs every year? Like, hey, got a good Packers team this year. What's going to happen? Colin, Colin Kaepernick's going to throw for 325 yards and he's going to rush for 125. That happened about six years in a row. It felt like, <laughs> but it just. Like, they haven't been able to stop the run in, like, seven years. Like, really, like, since AJ was, like, 23 years old. So, at some point, like, I understand the defense has been much better as of late. But, like, in – I mean, you watch that final drive. Like, there was never – the Giants, it took them three plays to get into field goal range. Like, it was just ridiculous. Like, and you got a – an undrafted third string quarterback playing. They didn't get a sack all night. Everyone's been saying, oh, Tommy DeVito's been sacked a hundred times in the last four yeah, weeks. Yep. Didn't get any pressure on him all night. In the grand scheme of things, no, I'm not worried. They're still uh in that last wild card spot. But for having everything in front of them and being able to kind of 
potentially go go ahead and win the division with everything that kind of shook out this weekend, and for them to just shit the bed like this. And for Randy Bullock exactly. yeah. to come through and bury one. So it's disheartening. Oh, because four, when six out there? You, he looks hey, good. Hey, he looks stank. fit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks yoked oh, yeah. in that. Yeah, he, he, stank. He, he, uh, they're putting him in linebacker. Yeah, d butt. What are you talking about? 46. I mean, he made the kick. That's all that matters. He says bro. jacked as a linebacker. Why are the Giants had to give him 46? He's in year like 10 or 11. I, like, I love those jerseys. I was about to say, Giants should always be in those jerseys. Lace is straight back. The Scottish hammer twists it. That's a great hold. You know, Randy missed one earlier. Push that thing right this mm-hmm. time. We knew Randy Bullock year 12, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know what year this is for him. Wearing 46 in year 12 is... Weapon. <laughs> you need to command a little bit more respect. <laughs> yeah. In that equipment room, potentially, but... Uh, maybe he want it looks cool. Hey, I think it looks uh, yes. More kickers need to wear forties. So I, I wear forty in college. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's I awesome. wore forty in college because, uh, like, I was a freshman kicker at West Virginia. Sure, they just here's forty, mm-hmm. and then they were gonna they asked me if I wanted to change after my freshman year, and I said, Nah, keep it. Let's, Hell yeah. you know, my GPA, my favorite drink. Bingo. You know, like, yeah. Let's go ahead and do this whole thing. But professional guys wearing 46, unless he's going to play linebacker, which we might, don't know. He might Good. be. Randy Bullock might step in. They might have a, a swarm dime package. Yep. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. might put Randy the on the New edge. The New Jersey rules kind of kind of mess you guys up. Yeah, because so you, you guys, guys are just plucking great, them. Yeah, you guys mm-hmm. had great pickets. You and the quarterbacks get all the single digits, all the low numbers. Now you got you know Thibodeau out there with five and other guys with these low numbers. But, yeah, that 4-6. I do something. About it that. doesn't what? matter. He hit a game. That's winner. all. That yeah. Congrats right. to him yeah. and uh, Packers fans. Got a tough one coming up, right? I mean, only uh, how's the how's the rest of the season? No, so that was the thing. Is like the remaining schedule is very easy. And but this was that this was one of those games where it's like, hey, take care of business against the Giants, and then maybe like a team like the Bucks, who again are pretty inconsistent, but are right there. They have a bunch to play for still. So we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not panicking yet, but you look at that NFC playoff picture. It's like. Every team is still in it. Every team has something to play for. So there's really not any layups left on the schedule. Like, yeah, it's favorable, but boy, they needed that one last night and they didn't deserve to win, but to be in the position they were in and then to poop the bed, it just stinks. Okay, let's go to the AFC side now. Uh There's a new conversation at the top in there. You know, the Eagles lose to the Dallas Cowboys and now all of a sudden the Eagles aren't even in the conversation to be at the top of the NFC. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just get them out there. Now, AFC side, Dolphins lose to the Titans, and everybody's like, this Dolphins team's fake. They said. Everything they they lose to the sorry-ass Titans on primetime in Miami, Man. in the beautiful weather down there. That's all of a sudden the reaction is like, all right, Dolphins are dead now. Who else yep. in the AFC is potentially going to be able to get there? Gumpy, I don't love that this is happening to your program and your team, but there's been a lot of things said this morning all of a sudden about why your team could potentially not make it to the Super Bowl. And I think the big one is the injuries to the offensive line. That is a massive ordeal, especially when you operate on timing and two is mostly inside the pocket. I don't think that has really been a spotlighted convo until something like this happens. So where are you feeling? How are you feeling? And have you given up all hope because all the things that have been said this morning about your program on the Miami Dolphins making it to the Super Bowl? I have not given up all hope, but I am down bad. Okay. The mm. way that we lost He's is the biggest out. issue. He's bummed out. I am super bummed so bummed, bummed out. out. <laughs> um, Jerome Baker and Javon Holland both out. Those are the mics on the defense. I don't know how they let them march down the field. It might felt like me. 30 seconds. Like, it's just the way they lost is the biggest issue for me. They had that game, but they didn't play well the whole game. The Titans handed them 14 points to even be up at the end of the game. Now, just to be clear. And I talked about this on um, First Take, which it was an honor to be on there. Shannon Sharp, number one mm-hmm. most entertaining human, mm-hmm. I think, by nice. Complex. Yep. yep. Okay. And then Stephen A., number two most entertaining human. Wow. And then I got a chance to be in there and chit-chat with them. But they asked about, you know, this Miami Dolphins team. And you heard a lot of, you know, internet chatters like, Tua can't operate without Tyreek Hill. It's like, uh... Yeah, the whole offense is vastly different when you have an actual cheetah on the field versus Agent Zero running the same yeah. things that Tyreek Hill would normally do. They put Berrios in there to do the the motions and the late shifts and the distraction and the eye candy. And no offense to Berrios yeah, at all. I don't think the linebackers and safeties and everybody is watching Berrios as intently as they'd be watching Tyreek Hill. So whenever you lose him... now. 
Uh, seems mm. like he got played. Yeah, uh, did he? I'm not 100 percent sure. No, he why. wasn't going to, and then he what texted the, his wife. That, that was the, the ending. The ending of the game. They put him out there to return the kick, and then he didn't play on first and second down. So, like, what happened? I, 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 and if he even went back in, like third quarter, he goes back in. And exactly. It's like, well, the whole first half, we saw him with a towel. He on had his, like a toe tap catch where he burned everybody and then he sprinted back to the huddle it was like and he was bouncing around it's like yeah that's Tyree Kill Tyree Kill is one of the most durable guys in the history of the NFL there's a lot of things that happen to him where he remains healthy and Mm -hmm. it's like damn a guy that explosive that powerful is supposed to have a muscle injury somewhere like at some point he's supposed to have some strain in a groin because he's running 24 miles an hour and he's stopping or a shin or a hammy or something and he's always up he's always good so last night watching him stand up after that ankle injury underneath the body hip drop tackle of course just, rear I mean, combo it, yeah. hip drop, horse collar horse collar hip drop oh okay horse yeah. collar already illegal yeah yeah you know, hip drop dropping your body weight as you're trying to tackle a human in the nfl no that place, is no place for that. that's gonna be that needs that is you sound dumb just you know that just needs to be – you sound dumb whenever you say that. You're talking to – just go try to tackle a human. Yeah. Just one time. Just see what happens in there. But that looked bad. It was like, mm-hmm. ooh. Terrible, yeah. That looked bad. And then he jogs off the field, mm-hmm. and then for whatever reason, doesn't go into the blue tent, and then he's just standing there. Yeah. And it's like, okay, trainer's holding his helmet. Okay. So he's just hanging. He's decided what's going – and then McDaniels comes out, and he's been, like, very forthright of saying, like, we want our guys to be 100% healthy before they go back in. But then he goes back in in the third mm-hmm. quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, he's returning a kick. It's like, what happened? Because their offense goes through Tyreek. Yes. Even if he's not getting the ball, the offense goes through yeah. him. His motions are changing every single play that is happening, even if it's a run game, which Mostert was doing his thing, mm-hmm. and the boys were out, and Waddle did great stuff. It's like, yeah, two is going to look a little different when that guy's not on the field, when he is the – Point of that mm-hmm. entire offense. I didn't that make much sense to me. Now, obviously, I think yeah. they win that game. He plays all four quarters. It's a different ball game. Instead, they lose to the Titans. Now everybody's worried. D, but I know the Dolphins are a team you've been a fan of the longest. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on the game? And uh, that Tyreek Hill situation was wild. Yeah. I, I didn't understand it, anything that was going on. Very, very wild. You know, he had the heavy spat on it. Then he took the spat off. Then he said he came back in the game, you know, on his own. You know, nobody sitting in the back end. It was just a super weird situation. Just, but to echo Gump, like, one of the worst losses I've ever seen. Titans had a good game plan defensively. Just basically, you're going to keep the umbrella over, make them go the um, long, hard way. Obviously, Tyreek getting hurt helped that, but they executed their game plan. Had 14 points basically given to us. Had a pick six yeah. on the drive Ooh. right after, you know, Tua had the fumble. Bad snap. He tries to get it up, <laughs> stand in the pocket, get stripped. It was just bad all around. Bad clock management, I feel like, then. Games on the line, we give up a sack. Harold Landry had a great game, you know, three sacks, two in the fourth quarter. Um, but just bad, bad ball. Defensively, you know, great players. Obviously a great defensive coordinator. Gump mentioned the guys that were missing, but Will Levis just drove down the field. First two-minute drive, just walked it down. No You're time welcome, out America. Yeah. 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 So He's a He had an unbelievable game, absolute maniac. Love watching maniac. the young kid play. But uh, terrible, terrible loss for the Dolphins. Yeah, Will Levis attempted to tackle a D-tackle yep. on a pick <laughs> six with line. his shoulder on the goal line. Very cool. Guy's definitely scoring a touchdown. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and throw my body and face right into this guy. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah. And then uh, he got in the open field, and he saw Jalen Ramsey. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to run right through this guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Him and Derrick Henry on the same team is a problem. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a problem. Yep. We've seen Will Levis jocked up. His interview post game was fantastic. Yes. He's already not entertained America. I can't wait to watch Hard Knocks. He is everything that we thought he was going to be. And congrats to Vrabes, who at one point last night looked at his punt returner mm-hmm. and he said, I don't give a f- what are you, <laughs> yeah. What are you muffing punts for? What are we? I saw a bounce. I tried to stop. I don't, I don't what are you? <laughs> That's the most Ohio look I've ever seen. Yeah. The, the hands up. The shoulders. What, so disrespected that you even said what you just said. You might as well just kept your mouth shut. Bingo. You might yeah. as well have not said anything yeah. yep. right there. I don't want to hear it. I'm asking you a question. Don't need to hear an answer. <laughs> At all. Okay. This is not a – you could easily say, sorry, coach. And then yeah. we're done with this whole thing. I like that Vrabes is still coaching as intently as mm-hmm. he is. I like that Vrabes is still as focused as he is. And I like that Vrabes' team showed up for him. Hey. D-Hop had a big game. Huge. Obviously, defense was doing their thing. And they get a huge win in Miami that they were not – 14-point yeah. dogs. Yeah. That is not normal. First and week 14 of the year. NFL season to figure it out, yeah. So, unfortunately, saw that one coming. But Vrabes, too, um, 
not a guy that I would ex, you know expect to be the the big analytics guy. Yeah. At the end of the game, 14. score you know went for two, and then uh, obviously on the second touchdown, just kicked the uh, extra point to take that one point lead. So. Um, I love, I love, love to see that. I like Rams, a little, little evolution there. Yeah, he's an Ohio guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are those are evolutions not normal over here. No, we it's talk not. to a barbarian every day. Yeah, that's right. different. You see his Cro Magnum head. Yeah, that's exactly it's still right. The same thing. Vrabe's pretty similar from what we've been told as a human. You know, old mm-hmm. school, traditional. Sure. But yeah, down fourteen, you go for two the first yep. time you score, yep. because if you don't get it, you can go for two again the next time. And odds say that you're at least better than 50% to get two yards in the NFL, so it'll end up being time. But if you hit that first one, only need an yep. extra point from Nick Falk, who never misses. Never. Today. And then, boom, you win the game all yep. of a sudden. And they did just that. They executed perfectly. First time, first time, what, what was it? it uh, teams were 0 in 767 when trailing by 14 with three <laughs> minutes or less to go. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. First time since 1976. That was a good year. Hey, that was a good win. It was. Yeah. That was a good win. Unbelievable. We'll get back to these games, obviously, uh, for the rest of the program. And we also have the road to the number one seed for both the NFC and the AFC. Miami still very much. Oh, yeah. 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 Very much in the conversation, even though everybody's thrown on this side because Derrick Henry, D-Hop, Will Levis, and the boys go and get a big win on Monday Night Football in Miami. The NFC side is getting a little crowded at the top. Mm-hmm. We'll check out who has the easiest road at some point. Have Aaron Rodgers in about 35 minutes. That should be fun. You know, because oh, yeah. the Jets Bomb. are living the highest life that they have lived mm-hmm. oh, yeah. since he has been there outside of September 11th with him jogging on yep. to the field. You know, so that was cool. a big moment. That should be fun. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a thing that has happened on this program. Mm-hmm. Not enough this season, mm-hmm. but certainly has been taking place for the last six years. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to shine a light on a sport that you have not watched enough of. And the reason why I know that is because you go to a lot of these towns that don't have hockey teams, and you say, what are your thoughts on hockey? They say, I've never seen it. You need to see it. Mm-hmm. You need to watch it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Hockey is Awesome! Yeah. Listen, I, you've probably heard of the sport. It's on ice. They're traveling like 30 miles an hour. They're mm-hmm. doing death-defying stunts. People are actually in danger every single second they're on there. There's dangles. There's fights. What? There's toughness. What? There's intelligence. What? It's a perfect sport. It's a perfect mixture of everything that competition loves. And if you're not watching it, you need to. This is what has happened since the last time we've done Hockey is Awesome. How about a goalie being a petty Dog like Tristan Jari. He grabs Brandon Hagel's stick here. Look at it. Go back to him. I'm sorry. I was standing right away. Grabs this guy's stick. Oh, you're about to fight, huh? Let me go ahead and bang it. That's 300 bucks. That is $300 just because he's petty. Give me that. Now, goalie's obviously known for a lot of things. Stopping pucks. Right. Causing problems. Right. Not scoring. That is not no. something Never. that happens ever. Tristan Jari, same game. Not only does he break Hagel's stick in the first period, how about in the third period? He goes goal line to goal line for a goalie goal that is only hap- sick, mm, wow. filthy, Whoa. nasty. How many perfect games has there been in the history of the MLB? Like 17. Yeah, 15, 14, 17, mm-hmm. whatever it is. I think there's only been like 14 goalies that have ever scored or 15 goalies that have ever scored in the history of the NHL. Wow. Tristan Jari has a petty night and a glorious night all in the same night down there in Tampa Bay with a long goal from one goal line to the other. Tristan Jari, keep it going, pal. Wow. Keep going, Jari. Need you, to, need you to save some more pucks, baby, yeah. for the Pens. But yeah, I love that on nights you still got a little pettiness and you still got the talent to do your thing. Now, let's talk about what hockey has that other sports don't have. They have a little situation where if you want to disrespect one of our guys, we'll fight you. If you want to touch our goalie, don't even think about it. Immediate brawl happens every time. Now, this is the game of the Kachucks. Yeah, Matt and Brady. Brady. Kachuk. This is... uh, they play on opposite sides. Their dad played. Their uncle played. Whole team brawling here. Okay, everybody, you touch our goalie. We're down 4 nothing. It's the third period. The boys are tight. Grandma Kachuk's <laughs> watching her grandsons. Mm-hmm. Dude, every team. There's the Kachuk right here, by the way. You see him? That's uh, Brady, I believe. Yep. <laughs> Brady Kachuk. He's just mixing it up. Look at his face. Got a little blood on it. Then they'll cut to his brother here. Matt Matt's already in there. <laughs> yes. That's the He's already in the face. He's yeah. in the sin bin, probably for something. 
everybody's brawling, game's over. You know, I mean, they could come and get it, but Beating that pretty ass. much game's over. 30 shots to 19, seven left. Let's just go ahead and scrap. Mm -hmm. Let's just go uh -huh. ahead and scrap. scrap, boys. Not a lot of sports have this anymore, and we need this. <laughs> it's a good scrap. We need oh. more of this. We need our team coming to fight your team. Why? Or well, Babu were losing and all said, don't touch our goalie. No. Don't you even think about doing that. So uh, what's the aftermath of this, you ask? Well, let's go to the ref, shall we? Ottawa penalty number Brady seven Kachuk. has He's... two minutes for goaltender interference, two minutes for roughing. Don't love that. Florida, number 12, has two minutes for roughing. And then every player on the ice has a 10-minute misconduct. Florida will have okay. a two-minute power. So we're going to have to check every... <laughs> There's 10 guys... 12, everybody, mm -hmm. uh -huh. everybody that was on the ice, 10 minute, you're out, rest of the game. See, you. okay, it's four nothing. We got seven left. You know what you did. Okay, it's definitely both Kachucks. And get that grandma the hell out mm -hmm. of the arena as well. Let's, um, let's go in between the benches. Okay. Ooh. Let's go in between the benches because this is something that hockey has that is also awesome. Now, I know football has sideline reporters mm -hmm. and I assume baseball people have people down in the dugout and things mm -hmm. like that. In hockey, though, they have an actual person pretty much leaning over the boards with their head all on the ice in between the benches. Here's every chirp that takes place mm -hmm. between the two. Sometimes gets a body in them. And then also, every once in a while, puck to the forehead oh, no. while covering hockey. Here's Rob Ray. Rob Ray, former goon, okay, Form, former goon for this entire thing. They actually added, okay, a thing on the on the sweater that kept the jersey Ooh. down. Yeah, it's him getting hit right in the face. Brutal. Boom, puck, forehead. Bonk. Oh, wow. looking down. Bonk right in the forehead. He gets busted up, obviously. Rob Ray, this guy, former goon, they had to add something to the sweater that would keep it attached to the shorts. Because whenever he would fight, he would just take his shit off. Love it. He would Peace. just take his shit off, and all of a sudden, you got nothing to grab. Mm -hmm. And oh, 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 aren't we a little? Aren't we? A, Rob Ray's a G. Rob Ray's a dog. Rob Ray got hit in the face with a puck. Here's his reaction to what took place in between the boards. And call, and we're gonna just check in on you, Rob. Yeah, you, know, you can check in. I'm all, all good down here, Dan. Oh, just trying oh. to clean my glasses up a little bit so I can put them on and see through them. Are you going to cut stitches shape? before we yeah, get yeah, it, it will be, but that's, that's fine. But I can't use my page anymore that I have my notes on because it's uh, kind of uh, littered it's in blood. It's a mess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're just trying to keep that very It's a mess. Us. Good to go. Nice. Normal guy would have been carried out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, right. you're right, Rob. Well, Normal yeah. guy, any yep. other sports would have got carried out of here. Probably going to need stitches. Let's Hilarious. go. Let's stay on the benches, though, shall we? Because we see the toughness and the grit, the fighting and everything, and we go, oh, look at these barbarians. Somebody could. Oh, yeah. How about hockey doing good, making the world a better place? Ooh. Let's stay on the bench. Let's go to Philadelphia with the hockey is fighting cancer. Hockey fighting. Hockey. Hockey fights cancer. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're fighting. Uh, well, it yeah. is Hockey Fights Cancer Month oh, there it is. across the NHL. And the honoree tonight on the Flyers bench, yes. that is nine-year-old Owen Machika. He's on a power with a brain tumor At only six months old, by age three, he had had over 20 surgeries and a year and a half of chemo. He's even been diagnosed with a syndrome where it makes it more likely as he gets older that he will develop additional cancers. He's the captain of his youth hockey club. He's on the bench for the first period tonight with the Flyers as the honorary team captain. And we'll show you even more of the experience that the Flyers have put on for Owen Machika a little bit later on. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's Unreal. Awesome. First of all, Owen Machika, you're a beast. Yep. And the coach that got the chair for him so he could sit up and see a little bit is like the meanest human in hockey. That's towards. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously he has a softer side, especially yeah. whenever you hear the story of Owen Machika and he's a badass. But hockey, the NHL, wanted to make sure this kid had a good experience, live his dream, and also inspire the boys. He gave a speech pregame on oh. that. That had those oh, yeah. fires ready to skate through a damn wall. When was the last time? No offense. When was the last time the Flyers won a cup? Ah, uh, forever. Oh, okay. okay, maybe Owen Machika needs to get on the ice for the Flyers. Agreed. Because they haven't been good since. What were that? What was that goon squad they used to, the team they used to? Broad, oh, Broad Street Bullies. Yeah, okay, yeah. All Pretty right, sweet. Good. Yeah, you guys get bullied now, Philly. Welcome to the Penguin State, Pennsylvania, Ooh. Philadelphia Flyers. Sorry about it. And uh, last but not least, there's this young stallion mm -hmm. who was drafted to the Chicago Blackhawks. And he's supposed to be the next one. This guy's going to put the NHL right here. Mm -hmm. 
Right here on his back. Yeah, that's right. Back of his sweater. Right above his. If his first name was Zion, that would be the similar type of hype that they had sure. in hockey that they would have had in uh, uh, basketball. Now, Zion has made some decisions off the court that has certainly led him down a different path. This Connor Bedard kid, as soon as he gets dropped into the NHL, stud. Stallion. Yep. Look at this assist from last night. And now they're down 4 1 late in the third. So people are, Whoa, oh. shake, sauce. Boom. Oh my God. Net. Filthy. This dude is the guy. You watch him. He is the Not him. I mean, great goal. This guy. <laughs> look at his pass. Up over his stick. That's on purpose. That's saucy. Right to this. Right on the, pa uh, the tape. Oh, the fed right on the tape. Boom. He's special. Uh -huh. Hockey's special. And ladies and gentlemen, hockey. Is awesome. Yeah. You need to get into it. Honestly, you need to get into it if you're not. I was very lucky to grow up in a hockey time of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with the Penguins being the greatest NHL franchise uh -huh. in the history. But if you're not watching, you need to. And everything that we showcase, I think, is reasons why you should appreciate it. And it has stuff that sports, other sports don't have. Speaking of, the man who's about to join us, 13-year NHL vet. Other sports do not have anybody that is electrifying as this man. No. P.K. Subban. Yeah, P.K. How are you, P.K.? gang? Hey, P.K., how you doing, pal? How's the hockey season going? You look fantastic. Thank you, bro. Uh, hockey season's going well. I can't wait to get started. I'm looking forward to the second half. You know, more meaningful hockey, but we got a big game tonight. The hockey's been great for the first half. No complaints. Where are you? Yeah, Connor Bedard and Connor McDavid play tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern over there in Edmonton. Two stars. I think, yeah, something's going on with the camera. It keeps, hey, that, that camera's trying to check you out of there. What's that building behind you there? What's that building behind you there? Is that Toronto? Uh, that's not fake. That's really the Freedom Tower. That's right behind me here. This is where I live in Tribeca. So this is where I shoot all my videos every day. So I had to give you guys the best view. Damn. Good, yeah. hey, good for you. Hey, hey PK's Pat, living you good. Know yeah. Hold on, Pat. PK's on, living Pat. good. You got the, yeah. got the mm -hmm. yeah, fur coat. I'm coming on your show. I'm coming on your show. I got to team myself up. I got to show the views. I got to put the car to get on. Like, yeah. Come on. All the gimmicks. I get it. Hey, listen. Yeah. I appreciate it. I respect it. We thank you for coming on. Let's talk about tonight's game. Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid, 10 p.m. Eastern time. If you don't know hockey, these two guys are certainly guys that you want to watch because how they play. How are their teams doing? These two teams going to be in it in the end or? Or, or what do we expect? What teams are we watching tonight? Well, you know, I'm going to get to McDavid. Let's start start with Bedard. Bedard, first of all, has been absolutely uh, amazing this season. You showed that assist. You want to talk about getting your pants pulled down. Backhand <laughs> sauce, like 30-foot sauce pass over two sticks right on the tape for a tap-in to Murphy, who's not a big goal scorer. There's not an offensive defenseman. Like, look at him, find him through the seam. Like, no, no players at 18 in the league should be doing that and that's the skill of the nhl right now but i said that he'd be somewhere between 20 to 30 goals 60 to 80 points which is a pretty big gap but he's right on pace for that 23 points in 27 games 11 goals 12 assists he's having a great season and now you see him making plays like this like nobody makes plays like this guys at 19 and 20 years old his vision his hockey iq is off the charts i'm looking forward to tonight because it seems that when he's playing against the league's best, he wants to elevate. He wants to be considered in that category, in that group. So I would expect nothing less. Listen, his team's 31st in the league. Oh. But this guy still must eat TV watch <laughs> every every night. So That's why they got him, you know, He's eighth in the Central yeah. Vision. They stink. That's why they got him. Yeah. That's why they got him. So I, I can't wait to watch this game. And with McDavid, listen, I'm disappointed with Edmonton. Horrible start to the season. You get oh. blown out. You know, in the opening game, ain't nothing. This game sucks. Uh, you know, I'm not happy with Edmonton. I think, no, they do stink. And it's, <laughs> you know, they're 23rd in the league. They're 23rd in the league. But if it wasn't for Connor McDavid, they'd be an afterthought. Like, he's carried this team on his back. He was 59th in scoring. He's now 8th in scoring. He's 11 points back from Nikita Kucherov. And I got to be honest, if he ends up leading the league in scoring, which I think he's going to do, this might be one of the most insane seasons I've ever seen. I mean, he was completely out of the mix. He's clawed his way back into it. And I actually think they could get into a wild card spot. They're five points back from Nashville now for a wild card spot. 
If they make it to the playoffs, we're talking about one of the best seasons ever by an NHL player if Connor McDavid's able to pull that off. Ooh. And Edmonton's hot right now, too. So we're talking about one of the greatest seasons of all time for Whoa. a guy. Yep. And, hey, he is a fun guy to watch mm, play yes. hockey. Connor Bedard and McDavid, both very fun to watch. What they're able to do, seemingly different than everybody else. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, PK, something you did earlier in the year with Bucci was the NHL Frozen Frenzy, and we all absolutely loved it. What were the reviews on that? What was the feedback you kind of got? And do you think that is something that we're going to get more of as the games get more and more important the closer we get to April? Well, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. I was so happy that the NHL now has tried to do different things to elevate the game and create a better experience for the fans. You know, I still, I don't care what anybody does on TV. I still think that you need to go get inside the building and watch the game live. I mean, it's the best game to watch live. You know, I, I've had some people argue that tennis is more exciting to watch. I don't think so. No, yeah. no, don't, talk to, hey, don't to talk to those live. people. Hey, don't talk to those exactly. people. Don't talk to Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, guys, what are you talking about? I've never I been love, to this game. Listen. I love going to the U.S. Open, but there's nothing compared to watching hockey live. So I love the Frozen Frenzy. It's just going to be tough to do with the scheduling. It's tough. I wish they could do that every weekend, but they, you know, they can't do that, obviously. So I hope the NHL is able to, to, to figure out a way to bring that uh, element more to every season. So I love it. I think it's going to be great if they can continue to do it. they got to make it work with the schedule. Now. I've never been to a tennis match in my life. Nope. I've watched at home, though. It is electrifying. You know, Joker's playing. Yeah, I guess. you got to dress up, though, right? you got to do the whole thing, yeah, whole song yeah. and dance. College shirt. Ears, yeah, the whole, the whole mm -hmm. and then. To a tin? Yeah, you can't be wearing a sweater. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what you're doing, right? This yeah. Is... And then some of this. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that what you're yeah. Golf clap, kind of. Like people are saying that's better than hockey game. I, I, allegedly, that's what they're telling Dude, PK. I, PK, listen, those people are like, I don't like. Saying, I don't like circle. people that I don't okay. know. They, those people are dumb. Mm -hmm. Like I, they probably have very powerful well, jobs too with how America works. But like those people are dumb, right there, PK. Well, Pat, Pat, this was over a conversation with some sports people. It was uh, kind of a dumb summit. It was kind of a beer summit. I was having some tequila, so I don't what? know what they were drinking. But mm -hmm. obviously, they were they weren't drinking something that. Uh, you know, has their brain functioning too well because I don't think it's even in the same category. Yeah. Hockey's the number one sport to watch live, uh, period. I, I, you know, I would, I think I'd agree. You get a playoff hockey game, you get to go to one. Oh my Ooh. God. The okay. atmosphere is absurd. It's a gladiator type feeling in there because you're sitting on top of the ice mm -hmm. with the way it is built. And then just the speed and how everything matters, certainly. Football, I mean, if you get a good football game, my God. Like yeah. a good, I mean, that is That's pinnacle. phenomenal. Yeah. You want one of those UFC fights, box, you know, oh, yeah. true. you get like hard. a good, you get like a good mm -hmm. like one. That Jacksonville one, the first one they had Pat, back where there were four Pat. knockouts. Yeah. Come on. Hold on, Pat, though. I'm just trying to see where tennis. You can literally be up against the glass. You can be five rows back from the action, Agreed. and you're right there. Agreed. Right With football, you're a little bit further removed from the field, Agreed, so two. you're not as close to the action. Basketball, yes, but to me, basketball doesn't bring it mm. full circle. I like the College physicality basketball. of hockey. Master playoff, playoff. You know, I, I think NBA? it's hockey for sure. The physicality. Yeah, I agree. Tennis, though, I haven't found a spot in the top. I'm still. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, below uh, golf for like sure. Like pickleball we'll is to tough to watch. Oh, pickleball. Yeah. But I think that would even be. Ooh, Formula One. I, I think McEnroe put NHL no. one. Formula too. One is below tennis. So that is. <laughs> it's below. Everybody. That is certainly. Yeah, below reading agree. a book. It's certainly below yeah. tennis. <laughs> I'd like to say boxing, but I don't. I don't think what I'm seeing on TV is mm -hmm. boxing anymore. Like you know, I, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. So, I see more <laughs> dancing around in the ring than I see guys actually brawling it out. Every once in a while, I see a fight. I love boxing. I love Mike Tyson. I was at the the Rangers game the other night. I got to see Iron Mike. Biggest fan of Mike Tyson. But I loved watching that era, and I was like a little kid watching that era. But I loved. Yeah. Watching boxing during that time. Now I see guys dancing around in the ring. Can't have, like, can't have it. Can't be a rematch. Can't have. Come on, oh, make can't have it. We need, we need Jake Paul to continue to save boxing. Right, right, man. Francis Ngannou <laughs> is going to save boxing. Mm -hmm. I think actually, with how heavy his hands are. The UFC though, you get a good UFC card. Oh yeah, that's up there. Yep. That's level. up there. Anyways, let's move and let's continue to talk about hockey, the great sport, which is awesome. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, PK. Anytime we talk about football, like going into a, a season, it's usually like. Like, hey, you know, yeah, there's all these teams, but there's basically probably eight to ten teams who actually realistically have a shot to win a Super Bowl. I think same goes for basketball and most of But when it comes to the NHL, it seems like there is more parity kind of, 
year in and year out. So outside of like the, you know, six to eight teams that kind of everyone's talking about and that are at the top of the standings, like, is there a possibility that this year come playoff time, like will be there will be a team that no one's really talking about right now that has a legitimate shot to win the Stanley Cup? Well, you're talking football, and first of all, I don't know if there's a team outside of my Cowboys. I think the Cowboys uh, are talking. Be the team that's uh, well, a right, we get Come it. on, hold on. I gotta slide that in there. Yeah, we, hey, we're all there. on. Hey, we all love the Cowboys. Love the Cowboys. Yeah. Not all, not everybody, but we here. It's a good football. Team. We love. They got a Pittsburgher. They got a Yinzer coaching that team. We love them. We love them down there. You know. Okay, so if I'm going with a team with the outside chance on the West, you got you got Vegas. You got Colorado, you got Dallas, um, you know, uh, people that are considering Edmonton in that mix. I mean, that's a long shot in the East for me. You got Vegas, obviously, to repeat. Right. Yeah. I think Dallas, I think Dallas in the West is a team you got to watch out for. I think Colorado as well. Those two teams, the reason why, and everyone's going to say, I don't know about Dallas, their defense, but they got Jake Ottinger. And with that goaltender, he's a top five goaltender in the league. He can steal a series. And as long as they, they've added some offensive pieces, Matt Duchesne has slid into that lineup, has done really, really well. Tyler Seggins have, is back. Seems like he's healthy. Jamie Ben's back and healthy. They're a team you got to watch out. They're fast, they're big, and they got some experience. And Joe Pavelski is one of the best playoff players in the league. So they have the experience and the depth, and they have the goaltending. you got to be careful of them. Colorado, as long as Nathan McKinnon and Kale McCarr are healthy, <laughs> Those guys are up for their contenders no matter what. Those two are all world, so you got to watch out for them. In the East, when I look at the East, the Rangers obviously are playing the best hockey that I've seen them play in a really long time. Ten years it's been. I really believe the Rangers are going to have a shot to make it to the Cup Final this year. As a league, we need the Rangers in the mix. Nah. They bring so much to hockey. Well, we want to see them there. That's okay. Thank right? You. So – I'm seeing the Rangers. The Leafs, for me, until they get some defense, I don't yeah. care how many games they Amen. win. Amen. They haven't won a ton of games in, in regulation. Everything's an overtime and three-on-three. Yeah. Three. Mm-hmm. They have that skill. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it in the playoffs with the defense that they have. They just lost Joseph Wall, <laughs> who's come in and kind of been a spark for them. I don't know if their defense is going to be, be able to hold up coming out of the East. Say it. So, for me, I think the team that you got to be careful of in the West is going to be Dallas. In the East is going to be Florida again. Yeah, you know I yeah. know I know everybody says this. Yeah, you, they'll pull you into a dog fight. I still think Florida. Matthew Kachuk. I liked what they did Kachuk. last year. They, they they're never going to be a team at the that top of the bro. standings, but they give everybody a hard Boston time. You got to look out right. for that. Okay, oh, we Boston. like the Panthers. We appreciate the Panthers. They are very very kind. The Pittsburgh Penguins are going to win it all. I, I mean, Bruins. I don't, I don't even know where we're talking. Bruins, Bruins only good in a regular season. They're actually in first. Though. Yeah, in a regular season. So? We're, <laughs> I still don't think they're defense. I like their Boom. defense. Just like they're Toronto. Don't have defense. You got the same problem as Toronto. Well, That's what we've been saying this whole time. Mm-hmm. They got they got some holes on their defense as far as I'm concerned. Bruins I don't know geez. if they're going to if they're going to pay some attention to that and make adjustments, but Killing I me. still think they got some holes on their back end. I don't completely trust them. Me neither, PK. The only team I trust, Pittsburgh Penguins. That's right. Las Vegas Golden Knights. Hell yeah, bro. Texas hockey. Yeah, right. Is Madonna lacing up? <laughs> he right. Darius has a question for you. He's a big-time Florida Panthers yeah, fan. Yeah, PK, uh, long-time Florida Panthers fan. Kind of new to hockey as a whole, though. So I got a question for you. I know, like, in baseball, you had Otani and Mike Trout on the same team, and they absolutely stunk. You talk about both Connors. Both their teams absolutely stink right now. So, like, <laughs> how many guys do you need to, like – actually compete. You know, in the NBA basketball, you grab LeBron, Shaq, you're going to at least compete. How many guys on a hockey team do you need to at least compete for a championship, A, or just be competitive and make a playoff run, in your opinion? Oh, you, you have no depth in the National Hockey League. If you don't have balance to your lineup, I'd almost say you have zero chance of winning because it's such a long road to get there. So you can have all the great – I mean, Toronto, if this was about skill and talent, Toronto would be in the Stanley Cup final every year. Like, they got, they got top – they got a ton of depth up front on four. They no just they, they're they're no they're know. weak on the back end. They have too many holes in the back end, and they haven't really been able to to uh, to identify the goaltending issue there. So you need to have depth. You need to have a balance of experience, but more importantly, you need some luck too. It's such a long road. You need to have a healthy team. You need to be able to get into the playoffs. You need to have guys hit their stride at the right time. It's the hardest trophy to win in all of professional sports. I hate to say it. 
But the road's so long, it's so tough, it's so grueling. You look at Vegas, you look at Colorado, you look at those teams when they've won. Look at their lineups. Look at their lineup from top to bottom. Stack. Look Eight. at their four lines. Look at their 6D. Look at their goaltending. Eight. They're stacked, right? So when I look at the Rangers and their team, they got Jonathan Quick in that, mm-hmm. who's won Quickie. three Stanley Cups. Dog, they got dog. Shesterkin, who's the best goaltender probably in the world. They got Truba. They got K. Andre Miller. They got Adam Fox. They got Gustafson, Foxy. who while Fox was out, was leading their team on the back end. Of course. Like Goose. up front, I don't even have to talk about their forwards up front. Panarin's going to probably be up for Brad MVP. Yeah, they got Lafreniere. They got a tremendous amount of depth. So yeah. you need depth in your lineup to get there. If you don't have it, you ain't win. PK, you said a lot of really good things there. However. However. Pittsburgh, I don't think, has <laughs> enough depth to win. Sorry. I hate to say it. I don't think they have the depth to win. Okay, you're, saying, you're saying a lot of terrible things here. Okay. And I'll, I'll refrain from the Lordo, Stanley, mm-hmm. Lombardi conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I will. Sure. I will say. But I think we should celebrate. There was two black dudes talking hockey on ESPN. Yeah. 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 Hey, that was huge. Man, yeah, that was baby. a big deal. First ever. Hey, part of history. That's history, I'm, I'm man. He's probably been on a weeksy. Before? Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Call Weeksy right. now. Call Weeksy now. Oh, 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 oh that would be a yeah, triple box. Weeksy ain't, Weeksy ain't better looking than me. That's what I'm saying. Weeksy's Canadian too, right? He ain't better looking than uh, me. Right. Hey, PK, we appreciate the hell out of you, man. Thank you for representing hockey so well. And we can't wait to see the fallout from tonight. Connor versus Connor in a magnificent battle of electricity in Edmonton, Canada. Where the hell is Edmonton? That's left? <laughs> yeah, we're going out west. It's not too far west from where I am in Ontario, but it's west. We're going west. Which one? Is Edmonton a thing? Is it a province? Alberta. Al- uh, Alberta. It's uh, in Alberta, but at this time of the year, usually we call it Deadmonton because of yeah. how cold it is. That, oh, oh near to Calgary. Near Manitoba. Oh, near oh, where's Saskatoon? Is Saskatoon in the area? There we go. British uh, Columbia. Right up the road. Alberta. Saskatoon's not too Damn, far. Kansas, he, it's a couple over yeah. to the right. Yeah, you can see Saskatoon there. That's Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah, Manitoba's I believe Saskatoon's in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. All right, we appreciate the hell out. You know what, though? Go ahead. Hey, Pat, thank you for having me on, dude. Love watching your show, and keep doing what you're doing, man. I love watching your show. You're crushing it. One of the best on TV, if not the best. So no, that's not true. Ladies and, and gentlemen, stop it. On. Stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> NHL analyst for ESPN, PK Subban. Yeah, PK! Super high fashion with that fur with the thing. Oh, yeah. Great. I don't know if it was snowing in there or if he was just so jacked up that it was, yeah, spit. A little spittle. I'll get like that every once in a while when I start, like, going. And with the game day lights, the way you shoot, I'm just spitting Mm -hmm. right on. I'm like, can't slow down. I'm sorry. I'm in the middle. I don't know why it's happening right now, but I need to let it eat. PK is a lightning rod for hockey. Yes. Yes. They are very lucky Mm -hmm. that he does the hockey. Mm -hmm. For sure. How about you, D-Buck, get a little Florida Panther shout out? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? We got a little something over there from my captain, too. Yeah, the Panthers. Really? The Panthers sent a gift nice. over here. We appreciate the Florida Panthers. They uh, they appreciate us chatting about them. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Which is very cool. A.J. Hawk will be on the other side. Aaron Rodgers will be on the other side. And there's some breaking news. What? Oh, Herbert really? out for the season. No. Malik to Baltimore. Ooh. Yeah, we'll see you in three. Pat McAfee sell on your stunner at WrestleMania. Where does that rank all time? I, that's got to be pretty up there. Man, top three. Top three. And, and I got to say top three because The Rock, number one, the way he oversold, and Scott Hall and some of the other guys that took it. But I mean, you know, Pat has a natural feel for the business, epic performer, great on the stick. I apologize that you're a punk bitch. Athletically, you know, that that match he had with Theory was awesome. And then the the kicker was not only the sell of the stunner, but to lay there selling, still guzzling the beer, the presence of mind to ad lib and improvise and like this is a moment without even thinking about it. I think he's amazing. Uh, He's very entertaining. And as a human being, I like him a whole lot. And here's here's an off the record story. The, the second night that we were, we were at Mania, I was just planning on drinking uh, whiskey with my Broken Skull Sessions crew. And so we had a bottle all lined up and we were just going to drink during the show and show respect to the people that were working. 
Well, Vince called me into his room and said, hey man, would you come out and stun me, McAfee, and Theory? And I said, sure. So I couldn't drink until after the show. Okay, so the show happens. I go out there, stun all those cats. Brock Lesnar gets done with it with his match, the main event with Roman Reigns. And me and Brock had been wanting to bond together and, and have a few cocktails to begin with. And he goes, hey man, you got anything? I said, yeah. I said, where are we meeting? He goes, my locker room. So it was myself, Brock Lesnar, Larry, uh, one of the trainers who's been there forever, you know Larry, Larry. and uh, Pat McAfee. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wisers. Why? Maybe a little whiskey. Why? And we took down a fifth. We just passed the bottle around. At first we were drinking out of little cups. Then it just turned into the bottle. And we, we uh, took down a fifth of Baker's Park in about an hour. And then we all went our separate ways. Hey, we fucking did it. <laughs> and I heard through the grapevine that uh, a couple of those guys woke up twisting your headaches. Really? And I don't want to undersell this. Really hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? From what you had inside the ring that we saw on camera, of and then course. what was there a thing afterwards? Well, you know, there might have been. There might have been, yeah, a lot afterwards. <laughs> but it was a bonding moment, at, you know, after a big show like that of four guys, and I just barely met Pat, but he was already one of the boys because of his football background and how everybody, you know, the WWE has taken to him. And me and Brock's relationship goes back a long way. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. Hour two of the program starts now. Football! Things happening last night. There was a double header that took place on ESPN and ABC that was electrifying from the first quarter all the way to the very end of the evening at about midnight or so. Now, there was a Manning cast that happened as well. Uh, Nate Bargetze, clean comic, and his father did a magic trick. Incredible. It crushed. It went over very well. Yep. It was a fantastic addition to the football world. We need more of that. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don. Cowboys, Anthony DeGiulio right. is here. 12-year NFL vet, A.Q. Shipley is here. A.Q. Is that a, a seal on your... Uh, on your uh, it is. Okay, it was the found foundation, I assume, or it is. seals? It supports... Uh, there's a company called... Oh, uh, you know. Ert, Ert, right? Sorry, what? A lot of the proceeds go to the C4 Foundation, Charlie Keating, former Navy SEAL of the past. Okay. Okay, you need to elaborate. Yeah, yeah. T kind of tell the if story. If you're gonna wear here, a foundation's AQ. hoodie on the show, there's a chance it might get brought up. <laughs> you know what I well, mean? If I look over there and I see a seal big fan on of Navy Seals, it's got a seal on it. Here we go. Okay, so we're not saving actual seals. Correct. I didn't know if we were telling them like, don't swim in this area because a whale's coming. Yeah. And boom, boom. Bang, gonna yep. boom you out of the sky. Can't we nope. do both? It's not. It's Navy Seals. Navy Seals. Oh. Hell yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Troops. You serve. Hey, some bad mother. Bad. Oh, Tough weekend for him. All of them. What's, uh, well, they lose the Army, especially on a goal line stand. Yeah, no. yikes. Yeah. Uh, next time you see those Navy SEALs that you hang out with, mm -hmm. tell them we said thank you. Yep. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Next and also, time, beat Army. Yeah, especially whenever I'm, you know. Yeah. Sticking your neck out. That's not wow. easy. You pick. 
Pittsburgh. That's why you picked. And, the, I, and I agree with that pick. At a military game, absolutely, I picked Pittsburgh, and uh, <laughs> we end up losing. You know, that's yeah. a, that's USA. That was USA kind of coming back at me. Saying, yeah. It's not just about one here. Mm-hmm. This is about all. The the right. Yeah, that is what is all. And I apologize uh, for getting that wrong, but it was great to see them. And shout out to you, rocking a seal hoodie. I believe you're going to uh, you're going to basic training camp. Yeah, yeah tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow. This guy's going to war camp. Uh, Fugues. What? Yeah. yeah have fun. <laughs> he, this, this guy's been training for this in that basement. Yep. Please make sure you get pictures because there will be lots. Are you getting a gun? And They're oh. giving you a gun? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No Live way. Round. Multiple oh, yeah. guns. Live rounds. From what Multiple. I saw, he is wearing full head to toe military gear. Hey, gear. you. I want to go with Flak you. Black jacket. Yeah. No helmet, Full training. night vision goggles. Gilly suit on out there. I mean everything. Face paint. Night vision. You're going to live in the woods right now, stalk somebody out there, and maybe snipe them? You're going to be a, Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know what you, all is going to happen, but it's going to be awesome. You should see how much lotion he brought in his bag to, you know, Jersey's Gergen when he gets bored in the woods, One computer, too. one bottle of lotion. That's all we need. Oh, okay. It's a training okay. camp mentality yeah, for exactly right. AQ yeah. as he heads out into the woods <laughs> for his fake war. Good luck out there. Thanks. Tell the Navy SEALs and them we appreciate them. Oh, Will yeah. do. Like, this feels like a setup, doesn't it? You're going out there with a bunch of guys who pass through buds. Yep. Okay. Wow. These guys, and they swim in the ocean. They're, they're going to they're gonna teach me. They're going to teach me for a whole day. Yeah, okay. Yep. They're going to kill you. I'm never signing up for and that. And you think I'm done? Well, I'm just saying what you're about to go through because you're a football player, right? Remember? So you're a professional football player. Yeah. This is like uh, I would maybe have a drink or two with uh, professional wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Okay. In their mind, this isn't two friends. Oh, having no. a, this is professional wrestlers drinking. And then this is professional uh-huh. football player yeah. drinking, you know? So There's not, no introduction. Like, it, they're just... No, but it's not like a cat. They are watching how yeah, much you wa- They are watching. We are watching. There is a... Uh, yes. Well, yes, this is fun, but also, like, and in this particular case, it's like a uh, professional football player, big tough guys, right? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. That, like, there's that. I mean, they're good people, obviously. Sure. They serve their country. They're the yeah, toughest yeah. of all time. But I, I don't know if you I... Know who are you the with? only non-Navy SEAL going out there? No, no, no. There's a whole bunch. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't, right, don't worry, right. he's doing it with a bunch of MMA guys. Bunch and, of MMA guys. And Jack Osborne. Professional <laughs> fighter and Jack Osborne? Yeah, yep. Ozzy sucks. Ozzy's okay, boy. you're good. You're good. <laughs> yep. That's I'll, be, I'll be above I, that. I watched him grow. That's what I said. Okay. I watched him. If anybody was to be in trouble out there, I think it's potentially Jack Osborne. <laughs> I said at least you're not going to be in last. Have you seen him lately? He is jacked. I right saw now. him in, a, in an RV with his dad the last time I saw him. They were driving around, I think, like mm-hmm. antiquing or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And I respect and appreciate him. I don't know if Jack Osborne. How'd he get in? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. He's a dog. There's a great. He is a dog. He's a dog. I watched the way he grew up, though. It feels like there's a chance there's going to come a moment. Push comes to shove out there. Jack Osborne will show up. Yeah. How often do they do this? I think it's just once a year. Okay. Ryan Bader got me into it. Oh, uh, okay. The guy that can wrestle anybody <laughs> and yep. has the cardio to go for 20 straight minutes. Yep. This is what you've been training for. That's it. Let's go, AQ. Here we go. Hey, you got to represent professional yeah. football oh, yeah. players. Yeah. Here, here you got to go. represent for us. And former fat people. That's right. Also That's a right. big deal. Yeah, before Thanks. after photos. You're the yeah. after photo. That's You're it. representing for everybody out there. Good okay. luck. Nine-year NFL vet Darius J. Butler is here. Maybe keep on. You said you want to go with him. Hell yeah. Next year. What are we Go. doing? We're fake killing things or putting puppets up or shooting them in the head? What? Uh, yeah, I think targets. I think we're, we're we're walking. We got this. We're transitioning. Hey, okay, like you should thing. show them Sean McDermott's a motivational speech. Yeah, see how bingo. It, before you guys go out on a mission, just see how it. Yeah. See how it goes over? See how it starts the entire thing. Joining us now is a man who's in a uh, – that's awesome, though, by the way. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. We're kind of telling you you're dumb. Mm-hmm. For doing this, definitely sounds neat. You've been wrestling and fighting in a yeah. billionaire's basement all by yourself for a year now. At this point, for this moment, you've been letting Jay Glazer punch you in the face. Exactly for this exact moment, you're prepared. You're ready. We appreciate you joining us now as a man who would also love. Sounds like he's probably signing up for this oh, yeah. as we speak. Uh-huh. He's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. AQ's going in the woods. You hear this? I mean, so. Are you going to be carrying a boat with Jack Osborne? Because I think your height difference, maybe your difference in strength, you might get a little frustrated with Jack. No, nah, I don't think, I don't think we're doing boats. I think we're just shooting. Hey, Here. remember Jack's awesome. Aus- Some long PT, maybe? Be careful. So, they're like, like, do you have a full rundown minute by minute of what you're doing out there I, 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 i'm literally going into this blind but i've seen some oh pictures i've my. seen some videos aq oh yeah where yeah. where are you going it's best in, way it's to go in north it. carolina did they show you it's what happens the that's way. the best way to go into it you what go are you there. talking about you go zero expectation stuff and you're like oh i gotta worry about this we got a five mile this we gotta go nah just going hey whatever's up next just go into it. all right i hope they drop for water that's a great mentality right there you love swimming though you love water 
Yeah. I've actually never been. like a swimmer. No, you do love water. You go out into the ocean. Oh, yeah, I go. It's annoying. You <laughs> like you go to a beach sure. or whatever, and I'm a look at the ocean mm -hmm. guy, hang guy. AQ's in that water. Yep. We're talking all day. Out. Nice. He yeah. is in that water, not scared. So good luck over there. Joining us now is a guy who I would assume would crush the fake war thing he's going to. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's also quarterback for the New York Jets. Don't look now. Hottest team in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, four time NFL MVP, ayahuasca dabbler. Mm hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Books. I like that. Yeah. Hey, AQ, have you seen uh, Deliverance? <laughs> I have. Where are we going with this? Here it comes. Be careful out there. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. He's with, like, some of the toughest people of all time. You know, those people, th these guys, I assume, these guys see that bell, you know, and they're, like, not sleeping. They just got dropped into the deep ocean swim all the way mm -hmm. back. Then when you get back, lay at that terrible spot yeah. between the wave and the thing. With the logs. And, and just sit there. And then we're going to actually get a hose, too, and add to it. And, just, and they could quit at any time. They don't. That's who you're going into the woods with. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm ready for it. Last place gets shot in the head. <laughs> so be careful. John, like Wasamo in the past, there's a chance. That's right. Yeah. You want, mm -hmm. Would you rather do that or go on the darkness retreat? Where Aaron that. Was? I'm going to that. Okay. Let's go. All right, then. This, that one's physical. Mm-hmm. The the darkness retreat is you're all here, right? Yeah. yeah. I should not be there with myself ever. You know what I mean, Aaron? Yeah, but you never know who you're going to encounter in the woods, man. True. That's a good never point. know who's going to be out there. True. Hey, when you were in that darkness retreat, there was no freakouts? No. Not no one. Freak not one. Like there was some. There was some boredom. Some 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 boredom set in for sure, but no freakouts. What did you do to pass time? Contemplation modalities. Mm -hmm. Ah, different modalities of contemplation. Yes. Wow, yes. I think I used that properly. Yeah. I feel like I've gotten much smarter. See, the issue would be if I went in there, boy, we'd start overthinking something, and then we'd be like, "I gotta get out of here." And <laughs> yeah, I gotta fix that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I gotta go figure that whole thing out. They don't let you out, right? Or is there a bell like it is, buds? A bell? <laughs> no, the door is open. <laughs> you can walk out whenever you want. Okay. All right. You can just walk out. You could be there By the way, minutes. what are you what are you wearing today? Are you are you turn over a new leaf? Is Sam dressed you? What's going on? So, interesting point about that. Potentially, she uh, <laughs> she might have bought this, but also thirty degrees and all tank tops are currently in a situation are not wearable. Okay, uh -huh. a lot of uh, you know whenever you buy seven dollar tank tops, there's a chance that they do kind of. Fall apart, get stained with uh, deodorant. Sure. That's oh, yeah. the big one. And then once that gets in there, it's a problem. So we're in a process, a transition process of new tank tops, if that makes sense, Aaron. So you're saying you got scabies. I mean, man, I guess I should get tested. What what is uh <laughs> what what is uh maybe? I mean, there's a chance. But my wife, you know, she bought this whole I mean, I don't know when the pants came in, but yeah, I feel real high fashion today. I was on first take too, got to dress like an adult on there because everybody's super suited. But the tanks will be back. Mm -hmm. No yeah. problem mm -hmm. with that. You gotta turn to show the side of the yeah. jeans. I think that's getting lost Racing here. Stripe Boom. Awesome. High fashion. Tuxedo jeans. Wow. Tuxedo jeans. <laughs> Tuxedo <laughs> jeans. And look at this shit. Look at this shit. I got a zipper down here. Ooh. If you want to wear high tops, go ahead and open that thing up. <laughs> if you want to wear low tops, tighten it down. You know what I mean? I mean, this is fashion. I should have went to Art Basel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Art Basel down there in Miami. Let's talk about you. I'm sick of this. Okay? This is stupid. Good luck in war. Thanks. <laughs> Fake war. Sorry. <laughs> Zach Wilson. Buddy. Holy mm -hmm. hell, what happened? How'd this go? How, he's a sweet boy, a good boy. We mm -hmm. know that. Yep. Why do you think he had so much success in that second half? In those conditions, uh -huh. with where he was putting the ball, how decisive he was, how confident he looked. The ball, like, Why do you think that happened uh, this past weekend, Aaron? Do you have a, a direct point that you can kind of show us to and be like, yeah, here's why? Or what do you think while you're watching this unfold in front of you? I just think that sometimes guys get into rhythm and – and. Uh, you just kind of get in that zone, and, and the play caller gives you a lot of opportunities. We passed the ball 10 straight times. I think that was directly related to him getting into a rhythm and us moving the ball. And the ball. Uh, It's pretty crazy, though. I mean, we hadn't scored 30 in the last four games, I don't think, on offense, maybe five. And we came out and scored 30 and a half. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, you know, just little things though. That there was sim- simple plays like uh, this simple play, X shallow cross, which been in the offense since uh, Bill Walsh. Um, and then you know, as as we have to do, this is just uh, you know Aggie four verticals right here. But uh, as as we know, every single week, sometimes quarterback has to make some of those real special plays, and I felt like. He made a couple uh, big time plays there. He had, uh, you, know, the, you know, one that maybe shows up third and twelve. You know, he spun out to the left and hit Garrett for a first down. The next play, he hit Cobby for a touchdown to uh, put us on the board. Uh, but even some smaller plays that are kind of throwaway plays, uh, running a keeper, he extends the play, he makes the guy miss, and throws kind of a late uh, sideline ball to uh, Rucker that he kind of like double caught. And in the grand scheme of things, it's probably a throwaway play. Nobody remembers that play, but it took us from a you know third and extra long to a third and really manageable. We converted and ended up getting points on the drive. Um, we had a big drive there after uh, it went 14-7 to go uh, 14-6. Uh, they missed extra point, but to go down there and score and put it back up two scores was uh, was really good. I thought he was in a good rhythm. I thought Hack called a good game. I thought guys made some plays, contested catches for Ruck. Thought we did. Uh, uh, what we needed to get the ball to our, you know, two stud playmakers. Garrett had nine for uh, 108. Brees had a number of touches. He had eight catches uh, for over 80 yards and a touchdown. So, um, in the in the elements, uh, under the circumstances, uh, very happy for Zach. He played excellent and uh, good to be sitting there with the win. It's been uh, been a long uh, long November. It certainly has, and that was a good Houston defense. That's oh, yeah. a good Houston team. People just see HOU, I think, that maybe haven't been following the season. You know, like, yeah, I did it against Houston. It's like, hey, this Houston defense mm-hmm. has been great, and the Houston offense, that's a huge win for the Jets as a whole, and more specifically, I guess, Zach Wilson's confidence. Go ahead, AJ. Sweet haircut today. Yeah, so where are you uh, Where are you at physically right now? How do you feel compared to maybe even last week, and what do you uh, make of all these – so-called reports of you being cleared, what, right around Christmas for the game that's coming up around that time? What, what are, you, uh, are you leaking things to people? What's going on? Commanders, 24th. Yeah, I'm not sure where that report's coming from. Um, there's been a lot of uh, interesting uh, reporting uh, over the last few weeks of our team. Um, was I'm, it the Counting I'm, Crows guy? Ooh. Was it the Counting Crows guy who was telling people Adam, stuff? No, I don't think it was Adam. <laughs> Adam. Yeah, his lips are sealed. Yeah. Always. Awesome. Yeah, he's awesome awesome guy. Uh, always? Oh, that's a good one there, Connor. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Ty? Um, Talks is Ty even in? Did he make it in after yesterday? Is he oh, 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 oh. Hey, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Are you? A lot of ball left. A lot of ball left. Bingo. Um, no, I'm not sure uh, about some of these reports, but, uh, you know, there's there's loose lips uh, that are, you know, everywhere. I'm not going to let that sink, uh, you know, sink my ship, though. Um, uh, I'm, you know, Getting better, improving. Still, some things I got to do in order to uh, to be able to be cleared. Um, but I've done some limited practice the last couple of weeks, and done some seven on seven stuff at the end of practice. What? With who? Twos, threes, practice squad. Who are you running with? Well, it's a lot of a lot of threes in the P squad, guys. Oh my uh, God! Imagine the defense. Oh yeah. Rest of the year, they're going against Aaron Rodgers in the practice squad. There's going to be somebody that oh, comes no, from this practice it's, squad. It, it's called flight squad. It's uh, oh. flight school. It's the uh, Flight school, it's the kind of peace squad guys getting some extra work in at the end, and I just asked, hey, can I you know, take some of those reps there? So Imagine they said no. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, no, they said they, they, I've, I've uh, finagled my way into taking, taking the flight school a few days but uh, yeah. uh, and enjoyed that. Uh, but I'm, you know, working working in there and obviously doing all my rehab and uh, diet and vitamins and all those different things, modalities, AAA, all the, you know, things mm-hmm. that are, vitamins. you know, important. Uh, still jocked, and he's actually a little bit upset that you didn't mention that he might have been jocked at the party. Um, he's wearing he really a sweater. To, he's yeah. wearing a sweater. He wanted me to pass that along. He wanted me to pass that along. He said there was a lot of opportunities for you and Con Yikes. and well, Ty. I told him, and he felt a little bit offended. Just let him know. Just let him know. We don't want to wrestle ever. No, 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 no Never no, want to no. wrestle him ever. But also, he, in a sign of humility, I believe. Chose to wear the thickest sweater of all time. 
And then also a beanie on his head that was covering his whole thing. It's like, you had to be 7,000 degrees. Had to. He probably used it as a night sweat. Oh, oh. God. Got to session it. So we didn't even get to see how jocked he was because he was wearing a fur coat pretty much as a sweater on top of himself. So we apologize, but we assume a professional like AAA, and I've seen some of his. Oh, oh yeah. Some of his IGs. Oh, he yeah. Is still. Explosive. How yeah. are you? Are you still jocked? Because remember going into the season, it was the most jocked you had been, and you had been working with AAA. Still being able to do all that throughout the entire season, even though the Achilles has been worked on? Well, a lot of that's uh, getting jocked. You got to be able to do some some serious cardio. So I haven't been able to do as much cardio as I maybe uh, want to. But you know, I feel like I'm like a a week of really good dieting away from where I want to be. Oh, um, averagely jocked. But yeah, averagely jocked is probably too fast. <laughs> you know, as the season goes uh, in a normal year, it's hard to you know hard to be as jocked as you are when you kind of first. Uh, start training camp, but I feel like I've, you know, held it pretty good this year. Um, you know, not bad for late 30s, you know, early 40s. So, well, 40 for sure now. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, Aaron. Happy Happy birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday, Aaron. You it's did. really, really cool. You are still jocked. Wait till you retire, man. And not saying that's anytime soon, but when you retire, AJ knows, just look at him. You can just take these things that mm -hmm. just like, it just helps. Aaron. You're just jocked, just immediately <laughs> jocked, pretty much. It's, it's crazy, dude. I can't wait to see. I figured that AQ wouldn't want to be drug tested at this point. Um, no. No chance. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> None of us. Uh, a man who's not on anything, though, just ridiculously handsome. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Aaron, the other guy in your city, I don't know if you've been following this too much, but uh, Tommy Cutlass, Tommy DeVito, has kind of taken over the NFL. And I know you've basically said, like, Hey, let's wait until these guys have played a little bit before we crown them. But they're already doing that. They're saying he's the savior of the Giants and that, you know, he's the king in New York right now. But when it comes to guys like that who are undrafted, he was, a, you know, the, the third string quarterback. Like, how are certain guys able to come in and just have success immediately when they have, you know, he's, ha he's got the same guys that Daniel Jones had. Like, is that all just confidence and, uh, like, Dable kind of working with him and putting him in spots to be successful? Like, why is a guy like him so successful coming in, whereas, like, other guys who we know their names and get opportunities come in and they, and they just they don't perform the same way? I mean, that's an interesting question. There's a lot a lot that goes into it. You know, it's not just one player or one time. There's, you know, there's matchup stuff. There's how the defense is playing. I, I wouldn't know the stats offhand, but I feel like uh, the defense, uh, Wink and, the, and, and his guys have been playing a little bit better, um, you know, last uh, stretch of the season. But the recipe is not too complicated. Uh, it's be opportunistic. It's make good decisions, take care of the football. And, uh you know, I think when you got a little bit of moxie to go along with that, and some, and some charisma, which he obviously does, and presence, yeah, that helps. Uh, but if yeah. you watch the game, you watch the game last night. Uh, he had what uh, very efficient. He only had a few incompletions, right? He had no yep. turnovers. None. He had no sacks. I mean, they'd come in with giving up. I would guess close to or the most sacks mm -hmm. in the league, and to have no sacks, no turnovers. Um, didn't seem like, and I didn't watch the whole game, uh, didn't seem like there were a ton of, uh, hey, there we are, a ton of, uh, hey, like, real, you know, uh, turnover-worthy plays. So that's the that's the key to success, taking care of the football, being opportunistic, making some plays, and then, uh, you know, bringing that, uh, that extra little something. Yeah, a little sauce. Seems like the team really loves it. I mean, how could you not? I guess? Yeah, a little bit of schmay, you know? Yeah, there's a little schmay. And then shout out to Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know what I mean? Shout out to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, Hope he's uh, having a fantastic Tuesday. It's been fun to watch this, though. Like, him, Heineke, Mike White in recent history mm -hmm. have had this run. And then the conversation immediately goes to, like, you know, hold the phone. Is this guy better than the $40 million a year quarterback? And why does the team play better for him? Now, Obviously, Tommy DeVito might be. We don't know. We, we, have, no, we have no idea about this guy. What he's going to be five years from now, maybe he will be the next Joe Montana. Yeah. And maybe so he how does. About five games? Like, how about five games? Yeah. No, games I understand. Left. But let's just talk about the teams, like, though. When teams what did rally, we talk about last week? Are we, are we I'm not saying what that. I'm just, I'm just saying we got to keep the door open for the possibilities that maybe five years from now, Tommy DeVito is, uh, is a guy. He's we have no idea. But why does it feel like teams – 
kind of rally around some of these backup quarterbacks in your eyes, just like your thoughts, because obviously the charisma and the swag, but like they have a belief, right? And the expectations aren't really like Tommy might miss a pass and they're not going to get pissed. I don't think it's like, eh, you know, isn't that kind of a thing? Don't you think? Yeah, I think that's, that's possible. <laughs> Listen, I think a lot of this shit is overblown. It's if, if you win, you know, then then uh, there's a little momentum. You know, the narrative changes so quickly in a week. Um, look at uh, our team. You know, same thing. And what the Giants have won a few in a row now. That was sweet boy. So that's the narrative that's going on there. Um, but every week there's overreactions. There's crowning. There's, you know, trashing. And then it all gets reset. You know, once they're playing either Thursday, Sunday, or Monday, Saturday coming up too, Saturday game's coming up. Yeah, Everything gets reset, and uh, there'll be something else to talk about. Officials, guys line up offsides, oh, cutlets, oh, whatever the hell it might be, there's going to be a new new mm-hmm. conversation uh, that happens and a new narrative, and that's the league we play in. I think it's beautiful because it draws a lot of attention uh, to our sport. It's also... Got to be maddening at times for people that really live and die with uh, the roller coaster of uh, of headlines. Yeah, and somehow you've been able to survive it mentally because obviously the wave of your headlines, personally and professionally, have certainly been all over the place throughout the entire career. Uh, let's talk about what you just alluded to there. You know, you know, last week you talked about Jordan Love, mm-hmm. right? And you said, "Can we let this guy? You know, can we let him have his career before we do anything?" Last night he has a game in which he didn't look perfect, but the defense was obviously a full team. Jordan Love, he's riding this wave. What are you talking to him? Do you message him? Do you think? Do you watch from afar and say like, "Hey, handling it like how he's handling it is good"? Like, what is your whole like at this stage with how you're viewing Jordan Love's first year as a starter for the Packers after your departure? Buddy, didn't we talk about this last week? I think he's doing fantastic. I think he's playing really, really well. Um, it comes down to the same stuff. It's, and, and I've been in the room with Tom before, and I know what he's all about. It's about decision-making. It's about footwork. Um, it's about uh, accuracy. And the, he's graded very, very difficultly. And you might play a perfect game and think that, uh, you know, you get a positive grade. And I had many, many 100 quarterback rating games with negative grades from Tom because Tom believed in me and the potential. And I know he feels the same way about Jordan. So he's getting the best coaching in his room possible. Um, he holds himself to a high standard. Um, but I think he is, uh, everything's in place for him to be uh, a starter at a high level for a long, long time. Uh, he, you know, he, he can uh, throw, make all the throws. He can move in the pocket. Obviously, there's some things it looks like he's doing at the line of scrimmage. So the understanding of the offense and his understanding of defense as well uh, is great. Um you know, I just think for his sake, and I've said this again, I said last week, like the overreaction stuff, I'm sure that he's uh, staying out of it and the ups and downs because nothing really good comes from that to be, you know, feeling yourself after a win or, or downing yourself after a loss. There's absolutely nothing. You just got to ride the ride the wave, kind of staying above it and out of it and uh, being even keeled and kind of showing up and being the same guy every single week. Um, I think he's got a real good uh, demeanor about him and uh, he had a great drive last night. I mean, think about this is how ridiculous our game is in oh, our yeah. media cycle. They take the ball down the field. He throws a, mm-hmm. a crazy pass on a Omaha on the outside. Kid makes a great catch in the end zone. Um, and, you know, you're kicking the ball back off. You're up by what? You're up by uh, a couple po- one, one point. One with how many minutes? Like a minute. Ball on the 20. Ball on the 20. And this is a, they're bringing zero pressure. He throws a ridiculous. Only one place you can, you can throw this thing. Uh, a great catch by the, by uh, was a Heath. Yeah, um, but but better throw, um, incredible throw. Uh, if you look at it from the other angle, there's only one spot for this ball, right? Mm. You know, twenty five is all over it. Kid makes a great hands catch for sure, but amazing play. And what's the narrative if uh, the defense stops? You know, an uh, undrafted kid from going uh, oh. fifty yards down the field. Tommy, it's Tommy. like, hey, you know, Packers are seven and six. Now they're mm. the you know what. Five, six seed or whatever, and uh, all is right in the world. They could win out. They could, you know, with Detroit struggling, they could get the what the three seed. You know, all these different storylines that would start to pop up. But instead, now, like in the AFC, I think there's six teams at seven and six. NFC, there's 
Is it five or six teams at mm -hmm. six and seven? Bro, it's all of the teams. Yeah. Are in it. Somehow all of the teams are still in every single One, playoff two, conversation. Three, four, five. Well, so there's five teams at six and seven. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, I think. Where's the six? The Bucks. Left. Tampa Bay. Oh, yeah, the Bucks. Yeah, NFC the Bucks. South. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there's six teams at six and seven. It was crazy. Three of them are tied for division lead on the one side. <laughs> um, you know, it's wild. A lot could happen. You saw what Dallas and the Niners did to Philly the last two weeks. That's, you know, interesting. Philly's still a phenomenal team. You know, those three seem to maybe be uh, the cream of, uh, of the NFC, but who knows? You know, I think that it's, it's kind of wide open. Obviously, the Niners have been looking pretty, pretty solid the last couple of weeks. Wagon. But the AFC is, is wide open. Buffalo came up with a big win against Kansas City. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Miami got beat by, you know, Tennessee, which is crazy. Um, Jacksonville's lost two in a row, right? Uh, you got a lot of interesting games coming up. A couple of seven and six teams playing each other. Uh, a couple of the seven and six teams going uh, into some tough environments. Um, a lot could happen. You never know. There's four amazing weeks left. Uh, oh, yeah. Baltimore sitting there coming off a crazy win uh, against the Rams on a last second punt return. So the NFL is really exciting. It's, it's, a lot can happen week to week, um, but it's the storylines. You can't just get too caught up in it because they change no, we so do. much. Yeah. That's our and life every week. Our life is the storylines. Yeah. I mean, that is – there's a lot of them in here. You uh -huh. know, And every once in a while, my brain will have a glitch, and it'll go like last year. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. A last yep. year's story mm -hmm. will hop in. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That was – They mixed. Wait, man. I think I was like, yeah. Year, a year and a half ago. Oh, wait. Geez, there's so many. They, every There's so many stories. Because this what guy, were, Hall of Fame, Super Bowl, this guy, terrible. And then just five weeks later, yeah. boop, complete yeah, opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is bananas. The story arches of everybody. Sorry about that, Aaron. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I feel like uh, you might want Connor to jump in or something. So. Well, Connor has a great one, actually. This is where we're heading next. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Aaron, I actually have an update for you, too. Uh, in the conspiracy theory world, people are really going crazy about the new Netflix movie that the Obamas produced. So if you want to dive into that, might as well give it a shot. Uh, pretty bad movie, but, you know, people are... Did you watch? Yeah, I did. I saw it. Okay. I watched the whole thing. All right. Let's go. Okay. It, I think it's called, like, Don't Look Back or something like that. It's Leave, the world, Leave the, the, the world behind. Leave the world. Leave the world behind. Oh, don't Look leave up, the leave behind. the world behind. Bingo, kind of uh, makes yep. the two. Got it. But yeah, maybe you know, give give that a watch. But uh, there was another. Sound like you were being. You sound like you were being, you being a little right. negative about that. Movie. Well, I think the the movie as a whole is just a big pile of shit. But the conspiracy theories around it are magnificent. Oh, okay, you're mm. saying the, the the fodder. Yeah, the thing <laughs> they weren't trying to do with the movie is the best part of the movie. Got it. Because. C words, you're going to see. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love being a C word, yeah. especially on Tuesdays. But, uh, Aaron, there's an update uh, to your body, actually. You got a new tattoo. You added some art to the, I believe, left bicep. What was that about? Uh, what is it? And uh, why did you get it right now? Are you going to show a picture of it so I can talk through it? Sure. I was hoping you would just take your stuff. I mean, we, we planned stuff, you know, so we sure. knew that this was going to come up. Uh-huh, for sure. So we have it right now, obviously. Mm -hmm. The boys are actually making sure that it is the See, perfect well. resolution. Okay, in, the, in the meantime, in the meantime, I, I have seen that movie uh, that just came out. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was uh, thought-provoking, for sure. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, is, is it? Uh, I know a lot of people talking about predictive programming. Oh, yeah. And uh, so it, yeah. there's some interesting, interesting little uh, Easter eggs, sure. nuggets in there. Um, it's unique. But, uh, it's unique how much unique. you know. You know what I mean? About very, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's very, the conspiracy very part unique. of it? Very neat. Well, where do you start? Yeah, bingo. <laughs> oh, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen one. it. <laughs> Very unique. It's got all of them. Okay, I'm excited. Uh, what's it called? It's, don't look. Don't back look up. back. Don't look back up. What's it called? I don't think it's still there. Leave the, the world, the world something. Yeah, leave the world behind. There it is. Oh, leave the world behind. Yeah. Oh, geez. I mean, that, just so, now that I'm starting to think about they it. They explain how to basically, uh, they overthrow the United States of America is essentially oh, what no. happens in it. Oh, no. I love our country. That's never going to happen. All right. Anyways, is the tattoo about maybe not doing that? Maybe standing? Hey, we'll we stand for right. the United States of America. Don't tread on me. Yeah, super artsy, this photo, by the way. the, the art It's the same, you know, it's the same artist who did my forearm, Balaj, my Hungarian brother. Um, this time I didn't have to go to Hungary to get the tattoo, thankfully. I just had to go to Brooklyn, um, uh, which I think they call uh, Little Hungary. Um, 
Anyway, yeah. that might be a yep. newer newer name for it. But uh, but yeah, there's uh, you know some symbolism there. There's a uh, you know dragon uh, love dragons. There's uh, of course. Uh, the eight, uh, oh, number eight, it's sideways eight is infinity, obviously. Oh, um, and then the uh, the oh. two and the 12 is an ode to uh, to my godson. Uh, so yeah, just a combination of a Axel lot of different Hawk. things, but uh, yeah, shout out to Balaj for uh, is he biting his own tail, tails are chasing the dragon, yeah. Mm-hmm. What does that symbolize? Yeah, why is he sucking his own tail? <laughs> What's that mean? No, no, no. But it's just to complete the uh, the eight or the infinity mm. symbol. Oh, because you couldn't leave that open because then it's not infinity. Big right. yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Mm-hmm. Has to be yeah. gnawing on it. Does it connect to the forearm tat? Uh, not really, not yet. Great question. Of okay. DB, as you. How about that hurt? That hurt pretty good. It's pretty detailed. There's a lot of up t- near the yeah up near the pit, uh, the top of the armpit. Uh, that Boom. part really hurt. Everything else was was not too bad. Hey, it looks sweet. Yeah, yes. great, great addition. Looks sweet. Yeah. How long did that take? About five hours. Wow, I don't know how you guys do it. My wife's got a beautiful sleeve, and I don't know how many hours it is, but it's got to be a lot. Yeah. I, you, Are you? Uh, do you still have the barbed wire up here? Or? Me. <laughs> yeah. God, I, got rid, I got rid of the barbed wire, but mm-hmm. our guy. Uh, our guy, yeah, AQ we... Shipsh, AQ <laughs> Shipsh. A- A- down there in Little Hungry, you can get that right there. Yeah, let's go. So he moved to Little Hungry, or is he traveling in to see fam, or just taking a visit? He's just, uh, he's traveling. He has a, a visa to spend time in the country, and uh, so, you, you know, he's a busy man. You got you to gotta find a way to sync up with him, but um, always love uh, spending time with him, and uh, a lot of respect for his uh, his work. Obviously, he's the only person that I would ever let tattoo me. So, oh, that's very nice. Yeah, it's uh, obviously a huge honor for the Hungarian man. They speak English, obviously. Hungarian people. No, we just uh, we have our own kind of sign language. Nice. So, oh, I know what this yeah. means, right? Yeah. Uh, the long yep. snapper for San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, that Tabor. <laughs> yeah, t- taught me this one right here. I think, and then obviously, what does that what does that mean? I think this one's the F word, not a lot of saying. I wonder if, like, uh, 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 Dick White right now is, like, censoring my hand. He might oh, could yeah. be yeah. blurting him out. I think. Pixelating him, yeah. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. And then this one, shit happens, obviously. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Hey, that one's good. I worked with a, a deaf man named Greg uh, at Rudy Subs and Pizza yeah. 286. How can I help you in? Thanks, Greg. How about, yeah. yeah. DK, is, DK is really kind of bringing uh, ASL into yeah. the mainstream. I love it, too. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it as well. It makes life good, especially on this particular program when we're not allowed to say one particular word. Mm-hmm. You just As soon as you find out that yeah. that is, you know what I mean? Oh, it's just it like, here we go. Just start tossing that in there. Then I don't know how many deaf people listen to our show, okay? I don't know how many. I have had to have a sign language interpreter at a stand-up show, though, because one person in the crowd, at least one person, was uh, couldn't hear. Mm-hmm. So I had to, it's like a rule of the thing that you have to have an interpreter on the stage. Can't do, can't have that. Because obviously, yeah. my first 45 minutes was just saying things. Playing to them. Just to see yeah. what the, yeah. see what the interpretation mm-hmm. was. 45 minutes of it. This sweet old lady, 85 years old, normally in there for singers and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, they do the whole thing. <laughs> and then I'm just like, all right, what's like... Uh, you you know and then she like flips i'm like oh i knew that one and then we like build a relationship after it was great but anyways you know every once in a while mm-hmm. and every once you got to get a dragon on this thing right here Bingo. let the world know that we're playing football forever that's right sweet. that's what that means infinity that's how long we're playing for no that's not what it means are you playing this year bring that afc thing back up bring the afc playoff picture back up Look at the bubble. Ooh. Right? So, There's mathematically. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad we made the bubble there because there was some stats that didn't put us on there, uh, some graphics. So, could be back on the bubble. But if you look at it, what we got? 7, 10, 15 of the 16 teams are on the uh, mm-hmm. on the picture there. That's, Come on. Kornacki had them on the bubble. Okay, so that means not mathematically eliminated, right? Nope. 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 Only the Patriots and the Panthers, right? Go to hell. Out of there. Just a reminder. Everyone. The New England Patriots. Yep. Out of there. Completely eliminated. Yeah, the only, only already? AFC team. Already? Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, shut up. I tell you, I tell you, Bill was awesome on uh, on game day, though, wasn't he? Hey, dude, so cool. I, how, cool. How's your relationship with, cool him? with him? Guys with him at Corso. Yes. With him at Corso, that was awesome. That was cool. Agreed. What's yeah. your relationship like I mean, with Bill? I mean, I, I just friendly when we see each other. I've seen him, uh, you know, when we played him over the years, and then 
a couple times in uh, Pebble. He's played in that event. So a lot of respect, a lot of respect. Um, but mostly just uh, kind of short conversations here and there. Yeah, he that was the first time I ever got to, mm-hmm. you know, because normally anytime I'd see him warm ups, Vinatieri is coming up to Vinatieri. You know, they have a great relationship, yeah, obviously. And then I'm on the way out. Hey, all right. See you. Good to see you. <laughs> that was – so getting a chance to, like, just witness his – or as soon as he shows up, New England fans, all right, yeah. we start clapping. And then his, his Rolodex – and you talk about him and Coach Corso. Off air, they were sharing stories. Like, before we even get on there about remembering this and that, it was – Fantastic! His brain, bro, mm-hmm. huge. It's got one of those big ones. Feels like he's going to coach forever. Now let's continue to move on. Hey, uh, Tone has a question for you about the conversation of the NFL this year. Yeah. Hey, Aaron. Happy Tuesday. Um, now with Herbert having surgery, he's going to be out for the rest of the year. Fifty-five quarterbacks have started this year in the NFL. Now the rules are supposed to be protecting quarterbacks more these days, but this year and last year, the most quarterbacks have started in the history of the NFL. Is there any like do you can you think of any reason for that? Because or is it like front offices just being more I don't know cautious with guys? Is there anything that you come up with why there's been so many quarterback injuries the last couple of seasons? Nothing in particular, I don't think. I think there's just uh, some seasons where maybe it happens more than others. Uh, seems to be that there's more Achilles injuries than this year. Hopefully that balances out in the future and there's less of those, but. I don't know. I mean, there's been some kind of weird injuries too, right? Not just me and and, and Kirk, but uh, you know, Herbert broke mm-hmm. fingers now on both hands, I believe, right? And mm-hmm. then Joe Burrow's injury seemed very strange. You know, how often does uh, what he had, you know, happen happen? Um, and then some guys have gotten hurt and come back. Uh, you know, as Lawrence came back after what looked like a pretty bad injury uh, and played this last week. So I don't know. I mean, there's already. A, uh, you know, shortage of, uh, you know, really great ones in the league. So, um, you know, the league wants uh, their star players playing. Uh, if there was one thing in particular that was causing these, I'm sure they'd uh, look into it. They might not do anything, but they'd look into it. Um, they dropped it. But, uh, sniff yeah, they'd sniff around a little bit, but it's too bad. Um, you know, I enjoy uh, Mr. Herbert a lot. I think he's a really talented guy. And just hearing – uh, about his personality and character from Corey Lindsley, who uh, is a friend of the show, whether or not he's been on there before, but friend of the show. Um, you know, big, uh, uh, a lot of respect for him and his game, and, and look forward to him getting back healthy soon. I like hearing the Corey Lindsley, friend of the program. Yeah, I like love that. that. Yeah, oh. he's a dog. He's a dog right there. You know what I mean? He's been, he's been batting over snapping ball a long time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Really, really good at it. I like to hear that he likes uh, Justin Herbert behind the scenes because there's obviously some centers that don't love their quarterback. We saw that on a field yeah, big time. Uh, this past weekend. Uh, there was an <laughs> offensive lineman who had to hold a center back from fighting a quarterback on a football field this past weekend. That's rare, too. Unique. You're talking about. Did you video that? I didn't, I didn't see that. What was that? Eric oh, Boyd, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. I'm not going to have to. We're not going to put you in a spot to have to comment on this, obviously, because anything you say would get taken. However, Derek Carr almost got beat up by his center this yep. past weekend. Oh, wow. On the field. Yeah, on the field. Bad. Yeah. It was intense. But that but did was – did he, did he fart on his hand or something? What happened? Probably. That is interesting. I didn't even think about it. Maybe he pissed his pants. No, I think what he did was uh, Derek Carr said, well, you know, he got yes. upset. He got a sack there. And he Bucking showed a look. Money. And I believe McCoy said, throw the ball. I believe he said uh, – AQ, you might be able to speak for him better than me. I I don't know what he said, but I have said throw the ball before. (laughs) I have said, come on, get rid of the ball. And Jeff Saturday and Peyton have obviously had their situation on the sideline, well-documented, a lot of love for each other. We're not saying McCoy hates Derek Carr there. But, yeah, that was certainly something that took place this weekend. That would have been a unique way to get hurt. Yeah, that would have been rough. Uh, I can't think of any centers over the years that I feel like I would have had a good chance in a fight against. Uh, you know, maybe going back to high school, it may, might have evened things out a little bit, but even still, um, there's a tight relationship between quarterback and center. So I'm sure they got that worked out and everything's fine. Anything between you and Corey over the years with how long you guys were together? I assume there had to be moments. Corey is the ultimate troll, man. He's the ultimate troll in human form. Like, whatever he could do to mess with me, he did. A lot of ridiculous things over the years. You know, if I got mad at him or said something, uh, or, like, we're going to walk through and it'd be one of those doldrum days, and 
he'd just you know slap his ass really hard, and then he'd just fire the fucking sorry, the, the fire the ball. <laughs> thirteen days. Yeah. It was thirteen days. <laughs> Damn oh, it. We had thirteen shows. Such a good run. Thirteen's the yeah. best we've ever had by far. <laughs> He would just fire the ball back at you in the walk through like 100 miles an hour and try and drill you in the nuts or do some crazy things. Like you'd be afternoon walk through and one day he'd show up and wouldn't have any underwear on. And I'm like, come on, bro. Put some friggin' drawers on. What are you doing, man? Come on. It's just like stuff like that all the time. He'd mess with your locker. He'd mess with your quarterback room. He'd, uh, you know, he would love to get on the computers uh, of one of the strength coaches and, like, put some interesting pictures on the background yep. of his computer. Big white button. Uh, still, still to this day, we got a nice little uh, little, little text thread of me and Corey and uh, and Thad where, you know, we send each other some interesting uh, – mostly mostly we send Thad pictures um, because he gets, you know, a little offended about it. But love Corey. <laughs> Corey's uh, one of the one of the all-time – one of the all-time uh, – Great trolls and uh, and teammates. Quarterback center relationship is a real one; it has to be great. Also, a relationship with uh, you know the guidelines that were agreed to between me and ESPN mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. we're on there. What words we'll use and right. mm-hmm. what words we won't use. Yeah. Try. There was one particular word, only one, that was ended up being, "All right, won't do it." And I actually pitched it. You know, because, hey, let's do good business. We don't need to, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything else need, need to keep shit. Need to keep shit. Yes. I'd like to apologize then to <laughs> absolutely nobody. Oh, <laughs> yes. I the double like there's chin. A, there's a disclaimer. You know, I know this because I've watched the show for the last few months pretty religiously. But there's a disclaimer spoken by, I think, a famous coach. Yep. It talks about... There's going to be swear words because that's how people talk in the real world. Yeah. So I know we're on a tape delay. That's it. There we go. Right there. Don't sue us, please. <laughs> well, that's. <laughs> that's for one. That's because. Of, shout out. You know, shout out. Four. Guy, we're all. Hey, listen. He didn't even know. I don't know. Yeah, he, yeah, no idea. I don't even think he knew, but we have to change the marquee. 13 is the biggest number that we've ever been able to put in. You, Gone. Well, you telling me that JJ hasn't uh, hasn't popped off a little Was bit? Was that a Fagaze number? His grandma. His grandma. The last two have told him not to. You know, Grandma Watt. Is that a Fagay's number, though? What? Didn't Jalen Ramsey swear last week? Thank you. In New York? Oh, he, oh, he did. did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Gotcha. Are you talking about only in the Thunderdome, or is that a bullshit uh, number you got up Yeah, there? it sounds uh, like we got misleading so stats. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, my oh, God. No. We Zero. can't. That can't, can't be can't, who we no, are. can't have that. That cannot be who <laughs> we are. That's bad. <laughs> We're going to go to that true. department and let them know. Can't have that Can't state. do it. Men oh, lie, man. women lie, but numbers don't. Well, that one did. Marquee yeah. can't. I got a question up for the crew. Um, what's been uh, the greater comeback from injury? Would you say uh, me and my Achilles mm-hmm. or AJ and his uh, sexual injury uh, eye oh. situation? Ty, I'll let you take the lead there. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, I, I want to say you're Achilles because we've never seen it done before. But, I mean, AJ's eye was just mangled. You know, couldn't even sad. open it. Had a bunch of goo on there. Who knows what kind of patch goo. Patch at one point. Yeah, yeah, eye patch. And then now all of a sudden, just, what, a, a, a couple weeks later, it's like nothing ever happened. You know, I was told that two-thirds of his cornea got taken out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How does that happen? You know, I thought one he was going to lose his one eyeball. Third. I was so maybe told more. by a reliable source at the party that he wasn't able to see the uh, the little insert on the belt that goes around the red ball gag <laughs> for like at least oh. at least yeah. ten or twelve days. Yep. Really? Somebody else had to strap it up for him. He's normally the first one to be able to pull it off. <laughs> Axel. Wow. I mean, I would I would never judge anybody that does that, but that is not my thing. It's not. Of course. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, Aaron. Aaron's very aware and knows all of these things and all these, you know, sexual intricacies that he's been experimenting with over the years. So he likes to try to put his information out here to try to make it mainstream. It's what he's doing. Oh, this is him trying to portray program. He's, I've been he's in, trying to program. I've been in AJ's bedroom, not when him and Laura oh. are um, role playing, but there's. Listen, there's. I've seen swings. I've seen uh, S and M stuff. I've yes. seen a, a multiple uh, kids, ball love gag, that. kids love seeing that stuff. 
Yeah. You got your own room like you're Mr. Gray. Yeah. Is that what you're saying, Aaron? That's not a swing, See, Axel. It's weird, Aaron, because a bunch of Amazon uh, packages showed up the day after the eye injury, and it was a it was like a uh, to a, a chest for pirate. A bunch of pirate stuff was was in it. A bunch of pirate costumes. So I think they took advantage of the situation. Yeah, that wasn't a peg leg, Tony. That was a double header. But also, exactly. uh, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, AJ on Friday when he was here, and this is true. This is real. You actually opened the box on Thursday. Just a big box of sex gummies, sex things you can smoke. First thing, I've never seen AJ ever want something. First thing he did when he saw that box, like, can I have this? Can okay. I actually have this? And oh, he left with it. Did you send that to Zito us? Zito gave it to me. Zito gave it to me and said, hey, they sent this for you. So absolutely. Well, Zito did it. Zito. 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 Zito had two yeah. words out of his mouth, and you're already, yep, okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> Give me the sex yeah, coming immediately. Yeah. yeah, I did. Absolutely. I'm they, not denying that. They sent some sex smokes, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm excited to see how that works. You know, you just smoke it. I, yeah. I, I need to point something. No. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I guess we should ask Aaron. Aaron, do you have you ever heard about this this boinking sauce that people are smoking all over the place? Uh, no, I haven't. Does it have uh, plants from the Amazon in it? Okay, so maybe tell us more. So down there in the Amazon, there's plants that you eat that everybody's just yeah. doing each other. Is that what's going on? You got the boner boner uh, plant you found? It's an orgy plant. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I can't really talk about that. Okay. Oh. oh, you're being censored. Wow. I thought. I thought. I was told. Well, I was told. <laughs> well, you're set. Well, you, are you okay? Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, everything's great. I just, there's, you know, some things that are esoteric in nature that need to they kind of stay where they're at. Mm -hmm. Eso what? Esoteric. Well, we uh, I think we've done that on the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we know that. People yeah, are going to yeah, go snatch sure. up all your sure. boner plants? Yeah, we won't saw down your boner leaves huh. we promise we won't right yeah, the, the, the boner no, forest no, of not. deforestation no. is a real problem aq shipley's thinking about it's taking the seals down there with some clippers yeah. Where, where's this <laughs> all right boys, boys where we're we going this yeah. thing i heard we'll be uh, rocked up for the next week or so before we get out of here <laughs> on uh espn <laughs> it's the best sports show of all time mm -hmm. uh that's what some people some people say mm -hmm. those people also don't have the best taste in things. No. So we should remember that. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Hey, Kadarius Tony was offsides. And uh, <laughs> when you see Patrick Mahomes react the way he reacts, how do you think his teammates take that? And he's come out yesterday, went on a local radio show, and said he regrets the way he reacted afterwards. We talked about how that's the first time we've ever seen him, like, showcase his emotion in our eyes. That's the first. Teammates are going to love it. What did you think while you're watching that all kind of unfold, and how do you think the NFL reacts to it? Uh, I hope nothing happens. I hope they do nothing. They're saying they're going to get fined for criticizing the refs. That's what they're saying. Oh, uh, oh for some of the media stuff? I thought you meant more of the sideline stuff. Uh Listen, uh, I didn't know what to think until I saw uh, an act, a good segment by Dano where he was talking about he broke down every play and he showed multiple plays where it looked like uh, Tony was off sides uh, on other plays. Did you see that breakdown? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was pretty fascinating. Listen, I talk to our guys all the time about this, and it's a simple little thing. When you come out and you're the on-the-ball receiver, look out at the, at the line judge and point at him or put your fist out or whatever you got to do, and he will in turn or she pat their leg or give you a thumbs up, right? Patting your leg or giving you a thumbs up means you're good. You're in the right spot. It's just a normal thing. I think some guys get into the habit of like, I'm just going to put myself what I think is in line of scrimmage and hold my fist out, right? And then the other receiver, who's going to put himself in an off the position, you know, uh, stance, and put his arm back, which signifies to the referee, "Hey, I'm the, uh, you know, off the ball receiver." Because a lot of times they're cheating their splits a little bit, uh, they're cheating the line of scrimmage, and for the most part, uh, the refs let them get away with it. And I think they should. I think that's one of those things that shouldn't be um, policed that well. However, I think um, when we allow offensive players or defensive players to line up in the neutral zone. Uh, and and don't uh, call that because I'm I'm more of like a leaning towards a, a stricter interpretation uh, of the rules. I think in mm. basketball, which I'm a big fan of, I think we can all agree that the uh, the lax interpretation of let's just pick one rule uh, traveling um, makes it interesting. 
uh, what they actually decide to, to call or not. It's really hard to even make a traveling call now because it happens in every single play. I think that maybe they would basketball would say well, the same thing happens in, you know, with football and holding or whatnot. But I think there's certain rules um, that that seem pretty black and white. Lining up on sides as one of those. Uh, checking with the referee now. If the referee, which I've seen a side view, gives him a thumbs up or a pats his leg, uh, thank you, yeah. Um, but from this vantage point, it really looks like if you watch the ref, he slightly moves to his left here yeah. to see that, to be able to see the ball. Yeah. Because he can't see it. Now, I was wondering, is there something that Humphreys does with the football to move the football back? Like, does he have – because if you watch, there's one view you can see Humphreys – actually has the ball kind of tilted up instead of like forward. And that seems to uh, change the line of scrimmage back slightly. Um, does that affect things? But uh, Mr. Tony here should probably just peek, and he does, but he doesn't necessarily get a response, maybe a verification here. Um, but again, it's a, it's a tiny foul. It is. It's a very tiny thing. If there was multiple issues, the thing I love about Gene, right, I'm, and I'm jumping just uh, but Gene's territory, is Gene would always kind of warn you. You know, he'd say, hey, move your right tackle up or, hey, move your left tackle up or, uh, you know, watch uh, you know, watch your hands on the snap count or, or hey, watch the play clock. You, you know, you're getting real right up next to zero or whatever. Um, it it kind of give you one warning. But after that, it was like, no, no, hey, we warned you. Like for, uh, uh, you know, Bakhtiari, you know, he's like, hey, Bach, get your hands inside. We're going to call holding, right? Uh, rarely happened. I must admit that rarely. Of course. Really of course. But if he if he had another you know foul that, that was hands inside the frame, it'd be a penalty. Now I would assume if there are multiple occurrences of this that somebody had maybe said something to him or should have if you're not going to call it. Um, but I think we all just want to see consistency with with uh, with all these calls. And um, but that to me it wipes out a really uh, you know awesome play. Um, but the interpretation of the rule was. Uh, was obviously correct, and it, when it, as far as Pat, like I, um, you know, if you talk about the reps, the refs, you get fined, I guess. Um, but anything else, listen, uh, you know, we all have uh, do things that we'd uh, you know like to have back from time to time. There's passionate moments. There's things that, yeah, I mean, he he, uh, you know, wasn't very happy. Um, yeah, offensive offsides. Yeah, yeah, he said it a couple yeah. times. And he even said it to Josh Allen afterwards as if Josh Allen gave a single <laughs> yeah. fuck. He did not, you know, and Josh Allen. Yeah, just, yeah, you know. They're I don't tight, know though. About they're getting, friends. I don't know about getting held back like that. I mean, it definitely took a few people. Like, what was he going to do if he wasn't held back to the, to the <laughs> rest? What, what if he just knocked him out? Killed him. What if he just won over there? Awesome. Is it, <laughs> offensive offsides, huh? To lose the game? Okay, well, now, dead. <laughs> hey. How about it? That's the last time you do that. That would be awesome, Patrick Mahomes, we, not, knocking out a ref. These, yeah, but we we need these men and women. Agreed. I'm joking. Obviously, we don't punch refs. Obviously, I like yeah. I love the human element of our game. That can be maddening at times for sure. Um, but those relationships are important to the game. The referees really care about the game, and I think they all want to do the right thing and make the right calls. They're not intentionally trying to make calls. I think that referee uh, made the right call. So. Whether or not it should have been called three or four times in, in the game, I mean, you look at some of the look at the Kansas City false starts. They kind of changed the way that things were being refereed uh, early in the season. There was, uh, you know, like forty-two false starts in the same game by the same player, and they kind of called one of them. Um, same nice. thing. Week one. Is that the uh, actual number? Did you do the actual research know. on that? What if no. that was the actual? No. Nah. It's close. No, the, whole, the whole point is yeah. we want consistency. We want consistency. Uh, with the referees, they have a tough job to do. We're all interpreting these things and criticizing these things in slow motion for the most part. And I think whether it's Gene or Terry McCauley or John Perry or anybody on TV, they always try and remind the viewer that, like, hey, this is bang, bang, real-time plays that they're trying to, to referee. Uh, so a little bit of grace and a little bit of understanding, I think, can go a long way because they're trying to do their best. Um, players, we just want consistency. So I think that was the right call. Um, I understand the frustration. I'd be pissed too. You know, uh, you're gonna call offensive offsides on a you know play like that that uh, wins a game. And look at Kansas City. You know, that's how crazy the league is. Like they've had a couple. That play goes for a touchdown. They stop them. They win that game. Uh, they had a chance in another game with a deep ball to Marquez. They had another chance. You know, in in a in a uh, game early in the season. Really three games. I feel like they probably think it could have gone the other way. They're eight and five, sitting at uh, you know. 
uh, 11 and two would be a whole different ball game because I believe that Pat's has he played any playoff games on the road? No. Oh, he hasn't, right? Yeah. So that'd be a new experience. Not that he couldn't do it. He's a phenomenal player, but, um, you know, they're going to have a hard time getting that one seat. I think at this point, you know what Travis Kelsey did on that play? What did he do? Mm -hmm. Two things at once. Yeah. Amen. He was tight end and he was quarterback. Mm -hmm. It was one of the greatest plays we will never be able to celebrate because of the lineup offsides. And people forget Kadarius Tony was the one who scored the touchdown on that play. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's going into his Rolodex as well. Mm -hmm. That's going into his highlight reel for the rest of his life as well. You think Kadarius Tony's happy about all? No, no. no way. Yes. No way. Back to, back to Corey Lindsay. Corey Lindsay held on one of the greatest plays in my career as well. Where I made like three guys missed in the pocket and threw this ball as I was getting drilled in the back of my legs to Devontae Adams against Chicago in the back cool. of the end zone. Yep. So I remember that. No one ever gives a shit about that play because Corey decided to <laughs> hold on. That this guy. Hey, Corey, figure it out. Oh, prick. Don't hold. Yeah, we were talking. If you go back to the play, though, Corey, it's it's one of those interesting holds where a guy just overpowers another guy. Like, Corey literally just grabbed this dude and just. Of course, just like, I didn't hold. I won. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about a great yeah. play for you. I would have had this. This fucking plays on my highlight reel, too. I just picked the guy up and dominate him. Football is wild because yeah. listen to the way we're talking. And at least, I don't know how you're talking, but like how we're talking. Obviously, we're part of the problem. We get it. You remind us every single mm -hmm. week. Bills get that win there, you know, very easily could not have. I yeah. mean, just right here, right, right there. Mm -hmm. Bills don't win. Okay. Just li literally, Bills don't win right there. Instead, saw the. What's that? Just like AJ and Laura always talk about, you know, with their own their own games. Like the NFL is a game of inches. It certainly is. Yep. A couple of them. Yeah. Just a couple inches. And just two, six. Just one or two at different times can make a can make a big difference. So uh Darius Tony was like, I tell him that's six inches. You know, they didn't mm -hmm. even you know what I mean? They yeah. didn't even didn't even look back. But we're talking about the Bills. Being like back, you heard the. Did you see the locker room afterwards where they were talking to Sean McDermott and the players like, "We got your back." Like that was like a real cool. emotional moment almost. It's like, wait a second, are the Bills ready to go? But if they lose that game after what happened last week, it's like Bills are dead. What a catastrophe! Yeah, yeah. They let Travis Kelsey throw a pass in the middle of a play to beat them, and let alone what happened last week. It's like you're right. I guess that we do maybe overreact a little bit to some small stuff. But he, team vibes, like especially for the Bills. Could you imagine that flight back to Baghdad if they lost <laughs> to Kansas City? It'd be a nightmare. They play in Buffalo. Buff excuse me. <laughs> Buffalo. Touche, Connor. Some of your Touché. best some of your best work. Thanks, sir. The last couple of days he's really been he's been seeing the ball. Been sitting on that one. Yeah, he's been seeing the laces pretty good as it's coming. What do we got today on the shirt? What do we got? It's ten wolves, but there's only there's only four wolves that you can see. Then you got to find the other six. Like where's Waldo? Nice. In other news, AQ, do you got any plays coming up that you need some you know a little advice on about? Wow. What was that <laughs> no, but oh. can we all can we all agree that if that's you the hot route we're throwing? Me, by the way, if that's the hot route out. we're throwing. We got bigger problems. This was from five weeks ago. Yeah, a lot what? of people probably don't know what you're referring to. Kenny Pickett, whenever he was the quarterback for the Steelers and Matt Canada was still the offensive coordinator, there was a play in which he threw a quick at to the running back. Three wide receivers were lined up in a bunch formation. They all ran go routes mm -hmm. pretty much. So, yeah, yeah post corner under probably. But. Whatever the case. You get it. They're gone. Not blocking. Bad play. Running back tackle for a seven-yard loss. Mm -hmm. One of the most – Dysfunctional looking offensive plays that the NFL has seen in a while. And AQ said, Somebody go block. What are you what doing? doing? And Aaron just said, Hey, hey, big dumb dipshit. Hey. <laughs> and that, that what you said? Kind of, it's kind of basically what you said. not at all. I don't, I would never disrespect a lineman like that. And I love uh, in the trenches. I think uh, you do a great job. Hey, with you. AQ. Oh, AQ. Thanks, Aaron. It's going to war. It's, good to, but, it's good to be back on Tuesday with you today, too. It was really. You know? I enjoy yeah, it. I know you're, I know you're kind of you're sensitive. You're ignoring me and, and, <laughs> and our Tuesday for a little bit, but it's Ooh. good to have you back. Bygones be bygones. Keep up the good work, man. Love uh, your segment. Love DB's segment. Um, uh, you know, it's it's uh, helping people be smarter. Hell and that's go. all I want is to help Hell you. Yeah. If you're trying to talk quarterback play, <laughs> just maybe give me a side text just to make sure that you know, we're on the same page. I need, I need to get on that sidebar. Aaron, here's the 
here's the thing. The reason why this happened is because a quarterback, the reason why <laughs> In the Trenches even exists is because a quarterback, a man we spoke highly of earlier. That's right. So he'll hear this. He'll get mad that we're saying this. Yep. But he'll, you know, Aaron just yeah. saying his praises. Yeah, a little bit again. Cancels it out. Dan Orlovsky. No, 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 no. no just, you know. A broken clock is right twice a day. Right? <laughs> oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Jeez. Is, that what, you, you, is that what you said? I know, and, I, and I know the story. And I know the story. Okay. okay. Right? Yep. And I, and, uh, I love it. Um, but I think we all should hold on to our, uh, our truths, you know, as, as, uh, Hell yeah. hold on to them, but, but we're not gripping them as tightly as possible because, uh, obviously, as we've seen, science can change in an instant, and, and uh, you never know. Uh, uh, what the uh, the, the narrative is going to be moving forward, but I, I love uh, in the trenches. I think uh, it's definitely something we all can learn from. Uh, and then obviously DB uh, highlights. Uh, you know, I think it's the guys who don't get as much uh, attention because our league is, you know, often so it's specific on on who gets the attention. It's quarterbacks. It's you know a few skill players here and there, pass rushers. Uh, you know, but. Uh, Highlighting the uh, the big boys and then the guys uh, doing maybe the most difficult position in our sport, which is uh, covering, especially nickel defender covering two way, mm-hmm. uh, really a three way go at all times. Uh, so uh, it's awesome, love it. Well, we- um, and and then AJ just what a what a warrior AJ is to be able to show up here day after day um, after some of the you know things That's that happened. go on. Yeah, you know. Um, Peacock feathers, whips, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the whole thing. The uh, <laughs> nipple taser sensor things yep. he's got. It's uh, just, he's got yep. nipple tasers. Good lord, these are all things that you currently probably have in your basement <laughs> or some other room in your house. <laughs> all right, let's so let's move away from you guys doing um, whips and chains, handcuffs, and everything. Let's let's talk about in the house right behind you. There, there's some books. Are we bringing? Is it time? Ooh. Assassination. Let's see pretty if pretty I, what do we got here? Uh, he's got some good ones on the docket. I got some great ones in the back here, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's no, uh, no Ann Rand, but I got some great oh, ones. That's sorry, uh, quite a convo. Mm-hmm. Shoot. Was, let's see if I can pick one. Uh, no, no, no. Let's not just randomly science. pick a book club. No way. No way. Not this book club. Uh-uh. I've got two great ones. One I'm almost finished with, um, and one I'm definitely finished with. It's Sadly, very controversial book. But, uh, never um, again. Harry never Potter. What's it called? Well, that'll be book club. I'm going to tell you once. I'm going to tell you once. Sorcerer's Stone. To... Okay. All right. What is it it's called? C word, or is it in that vein, or what? What? Which vein is it controversial? Who's the author? Yeah. Just so we know. Gary just Paul. so I know what Jones? I'm signing up for. My mentions. Just so I know what my mentions are signing up for. What did you say, AJ? Gary <laughs> is it Info War? Is it Info Wars? Alex Jones? What is it? He's back on X. Yeah, new yeah. video game out now. Back Go get right. it quick. Yep. Back on X. AlexJonesGame.com. <laughs> I learned about Alex Jones and everything he's about <laughs> mm-hmm. four days before he got banned from the internet. Ah. And now he's back. He is. Mm-hmm. Feels like that's been 10 years. Two hour app. Jesus. Didn't he get sold? Are we, uh, are oh, we making some stuff like today? Billion or something yeah. like that? I'm broke. Okay. All right. I can't pay anybody. So. Sorry. <laughs> That's all happened since I learned of this guy. Yeah. And I go, oh, this is an awesome internet. This is an awesome internet character. And I guess there's a lot of people that were taking everything he was saying very serious. Mm-hmm. Including himself. Which I think he got lost. He- he worked himself into a shoot. <laughs> Brother. I think he, he worked himself into a shoot in that entire thing. And then he just got kicked off the internet completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just see ya. Not allowed to not allowed to exist. Had no idea he was kicked off because I thought Will Sasso was Alex Jones for like six years. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. He's back. Alex Jones is back. Still has his fastball at South. Yeah, there. yes, he does. Oh, I'm sure people are pumped about uh-huh. that. I'll tell you what, his wife has her fastball too. Really? <sighs> yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh Aaron, <laughs> we appreciate you, buddy. We appreciate the hell out of you, pal. Thank you for spending time with what us. Do guys, what do you guys got coming? up are you guys all done now no we got coach rule matt rule of nebraska in about 10 minutes or so you know he came out in a press conference and said hey good quarterbacks a million million two million bucks Mm -hmm. that's where we're at right now like just let everybody know because he was big in college goes the nfl comes back to college whole new world from the time he was in carolina so we're just gonna pick his brain on at it you know see how everything's going in nebraska yeah you know i thought about something Oh, here's a book. We got Ooh. one. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I want to just on. highlight a book that. <laughs> put your dong in her. Oh, that was a good just book. More, you know, just like, is there a better book than, than this one, though? That's the best one. Yep. Not many. 
Not many better. Hey, that, that was Book Club book last year, I think. It was. Two years ago. It was, ago. yeah. I just saw it, I saw it on the shelf back there. It's one of my – it's a very good, uh, you know, advertising the, or the orange. Not quite the color that uh, AJ has in his mouth a lot, but uh, definitely close, I believe. <laughs> he doesn't like Clementines? What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Aaron, Huga, dude. Huga. What does it mean? Cherish little things, you know. Cherish yeah. little things. Amen. Jake Ryan, right? Aren't those his uh, hats? No, he's from Norway. Yeah, shout out to Jake. And uh, we'll, we'll get you, see if we can get some sent out there. I don't, know, I don't know if there's one big enough for AQ's head, but I think we'll figure something out. <laughs> he's going to war. He's going to war tonight. We don't know how it's going oh, yeah. to yeah. He might not Campbell come back. He's going, you're going to war shot. tonight? You're doing the war games tonight? Yep. Yeah, war games. That's, that's yeah, actually. It is. Yeah. We're yeah. going tonight. It starts tomorrow. Tonight's uh, oh, what, a reception. That's what you yeah. think. William Regal's there. And yeah, that's what you think. Is <laughs> Dan- short put freedom. Fucking bag over your head. <laughs> Danny and Tommy going to be shipping out tonight? Get, what if you do get bagged over your head, yeah. tossed in van, dropped in the middle of fucking woods and say, if you make it back, you can maybe have a weekend with the Seals. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> All right, happen. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. You and Jack Osborne walking through the fucking <laughs> woods. Yeah. Just shooting the shit. Tell me about your dad. <laughs> that was the first thing sure. Dick said. He goes, well, as soon as I told him he was going, he was like, you won't be last. You'll be fine. Jeez, Jack Osborne. You had the same reaction. <laughs> yeah, you're damn right. Now he's turned his life around. That guy's Jack now. Yeah, yeah. boom. I, oh, you might be last. Better hope you don't see that guy in the woods. Jack he's a survivalist? Be <laughs> yeah. He's all he's getting getting up. Range. He's a survivalist. You're fucked, dude. <laughs> Navy SEAL's actual survivalist. And then now Jack Osborne appears to be living on a mountain. This, yeah. You're fucked, dude. <laughs> I've been training for this. I'm ready. So is he. Put on so a seal is- hoodie is not like the same thing. <laughs> yeah, this is Jack's Super Bowl. Like I put Lolita's whale costume on. I wasn't yeah. a whale you, all of a sudden. You didn't become one? <laughs> no, like that's not how it works. All right, Aaron. Have a great Tuesday. Easy, bro. bro. Easy with the Lolita part. There's another another name associated with that. Um, anyway. Oh, no. He's talking about the oh, no, it's it's Express. Not. Yeah, yeah, go the ahead. Express. Yeah. Come, on. Come on. Fill him in, Aaron. Fill him in. I'm talking uh, talk is it, You probably is took a few rides on that now? plane. Is it time now? Can release we release? Can we finally? You got to be on those flight logs. <laughs> what you He's talking about the news. I'm not sure. If I think the guy had an island. I came in uh, about two weeks ago, pretty jacked up because it felt as though there'd be some more information some being leak. released. Yeah. What about the submarine? Who was all? Bingo. You know what I mean? They're talking about through the sky. Oh, what about underneath the water? Mm-hmm. Anyways. Sounds like there's some be, real would it fucking be, uh, weirdos. Would it be ironic if, uh, remember when I said it like a while back, uh, you know, they were thinking about releasing the logs, which they were, and then Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel took a little shot at me. Would it be ironic if he was on the on the flight logs? It would be ironic. ironic. I don't know how this whole thing goes, but uh, the fact <laughs> that all these humans are involved in it, and allegedly, and they will all have to respond to Aaron on this particular show saying that, can't wait. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just can't wait for that. And then I name, no, I didn't name any. I just it, would it be ironic if the person who you know was taking a shot at me was actually on those? That would be. But that not, would be ironic. Not saying, any, not saying he was on there. Mm-hmm. No. You know, but it would be would be ironic. And Fauci's at his house right now, just like yeah, yeah. Let's just stay on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please, please. Let's stay on that. You know, just thinking no. of him. It, I mean, how about that audio that was released? He said, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not. I, did oh, yeah. not. I didn't hear that. Anyway, all right. We appreciate the hell out of you, man. You're the best. Uh, We're off ESPN, so it doesn't fucking matter anymore. Agreed. Agreed. But also, yeah. like. Uh, Shout out to YouTube, though, the real fans. That's right. Hey, Amen. Uh, yeah. Hey, ESPN Plus now. Yeah, well. Love ESPN, ESPN Plus. Plus yeah. yeah, it's not I mean, <laughs> Yeah. ESPN hey, has never said. That's fake behind you as well, though. That's fake. No, whoa, whoa, cir- whoa, AJ's, whoa, 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 AJ's, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's circle. circle. AJ's fake. That's fake. Circle. Wow. This? Oh, it's nice. Hey, have you seen? There's a great video that made me laugh thinking about that. There's a guy doing an interview with somebody, and his background, which looks kind of like that, there's a missile that comes in. Have you guys seen this video? Oh yeah. Missile that comes in in the background. It comes in and it just blows up. The the scene behind the guy doing the interview live, and the people who are getting interviewed. Freak out. Yeah. Well, I'd really- say, yeah. yeah. It's like- hey, is this, yeah. what are we, how close are we to this? Look out! Yeah. How close are we to the camera here? I think there's some real stuff going on. That's like the thing in New York, the window there, clearly. Mm-hmm. That is live feed of view. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's like 
Channel 7 News, you know, action shot above the city right now, live looking. Chopper yeah. 5. Real window, of course, yeah. but if it wasn't, it would be a live, exactly. mm-hmm. live feed of that whole thing. Speaking of choppers. Oh, Enjoy it, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'll get to the chopper, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So something came out about helicopters, I assume. Oh, uh, yeah. There's Let's po- get to a break. There's plenty <laughs> of stuff coming out right now. Jeez uh, Louise. These last two weeks have been wild. Sounds like it. Oh, yeah. And I'm not kidding that the Obama movie is actually getting a lot of, like, you see what they're doing? They're spelling it out for you right in front of you. I assume. It's that, awesome. Yeah. I just heard that's a real shocker. movie. Yeah. Oof. Uh, bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball. ball. Oh, come, come on. on. The similar Shooter. don't look up? No. Oh, okay. Oh, no. It's basically a... Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the first one made in a while. I haven't really shot in a long time. I felt good. All right, we'll do a giveaway at the end. All right, let's take five minutes. Matt Rule will be on the other side. I assume the conversation will be vastly different than the one we just sure. had with Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Probably. Maybe. I learned a lot there. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> AJ, what's going on in your house? Uh, I don't, you know, he kind of gets on this one track he mind does. and he, he kind of drives it into the dirt. So that's what we're dealing with right now. <laughs> <laughs> just sit, we got to just, just let him get all of the material out, whatever he's trying to come up with, and then he'll move on to something. You seem to love it. You seem to really enjoy that's it. That's what wow. we're dealing with right I mean, now. I, I know what's happening. I see it. Come on. Okay. You can see the bra- the wheels turning and trying to come up with something. Oh, a ball gag. Oh, whatever he can think of. That was good. And that comes out. Get hit too. Ball, mm-hmm. ball gag was good. Come on. And then he was like, "Oh, I got more." Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all recycled Bobby Carpenter material. Believe me, he's taking a lot of this material from Bob. Oh, oh. All right, well, that's, that's, not a, that's actually a compliment. I, I steal from Bob as well. His material. Is that right? Uh, well, hmm. the general. I'll have some good ones. General's getting plagiarized all yeah. day. General writing yeah. lines for yeah. AJ. Mastermind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 The general is a script writer. Yeah. Yeah. For some of the. He's was. Some of the most influential people. (laughs) Well, that's good. That's really good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to a break. Uh, Coach Matt Rule on the other side. We're going to learn a lot about college football, I think. Yep. And what has Matt Rule learned about college football since being back? Mm. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. Five. fresh, my mind clear. Like, I'm going to go do it tonight, I think, you know? Like, I'm going to go do it. 77,899 people going bananas. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep last night. I thought that I'd wake up with high anxiety. That is not the case at all. I am so ready to get out there and do what I was put on this earth to do. I'll be walking out of that thing alone. This is a big night because uh, 11 years ago tonight, I had my match with Jerry Lawler this night. Come on! Broadcast colleagues, same night, 11 years apart, could become the first undefeated broadcast team in the history of WWE wrestling. Not could. We will be. Only two superstars have actually commentated on the same WrestleMania that they had a match on. Pat McAfee joins that club tonight. Pontius is in and Party Boy is here. Pontius is here. Party Boy is in WrestleMania. Pontius' is cheeks are out in WrestleMania. Now he's putting that thing up on Sami Zayn. I would like to say that that's the first time I've seen Pontius' ass, but that is not the case. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Leave it. Punches and punches from Wee Man. Wee Man so angry. Oh, look at look at look at look at look at look at this. Body slam. Wee Man. Body slam. He said he said. Wee Man used to kick himself in the face. Are you kidding me? Now he's body slamming Sammy Zay. You know, I've walked out that ramp into this setting probably 10 million times in my mind. There was a time where every time I walked out of a door, I was acting as if I was walking into a WWE arena. So tonight, whenever I feel that energy, is hoping that I don't have a heart attack immediately. I'm hoping that I don't get too gassed, and I'm hoping I put on a damn good show because I've been thinking about this for 23 years. Let's walk to go and do this thing, huh? I'm prepared. I'm ready. I'm excited. Hey, who do you want to see tonight? I want to. I want to see Pat McAfee tonight. Up, up over the top. Mac 
My ears, like it feels like I got water in my ears. I got beer in both of my ears. But I just had the incredible opportunity and honor <clears throat> to chug beers with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Have a WrestleMania match that Vince McMahon was a part of. I'm living on cloud 50 right now, dude. This is sweet. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wisers. Wide. Maybe a little whiskey. Wide. Maybe some carbs, because I've been ketoing for four weeks. Wide. Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. Hour three of the program starts now. Football! Happened last night. That man has played a lot of football, and I don't know what else, to be honest. Yeah, after. Your friendship is an interesting one with Aaron Rodgers. Ladies and gentlemen, that's A.J. Hawk. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. 
It's been in your bedroom before, he said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah not with you guys in there. Hey, great new haircut, though. It looks sweet. Uh, mm-hmm. The Toxic Table is here at Boss Carter and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. 12 year NFL vet and Super Bowl champion. A man who's going to war tonight, AQ right. Shipley. Nine year NFL vet, Darius J. Butler, also here. AJ, yeah. haven't had a chance to chat with you as we wait for Coach Rule's tech. We're trying to figure out audio, trying to ca- connect with Coach Rule. It's the perfect time to ask you about what your thoughts were on the games last night because we haven't got a chance to get your take on this whole thing. Packers lose to Tommy Cutlets, mm-hmm. Paisano, who has inspired not only a team but an entire region and maybe even a country. Yep. Maybe even a country in this entire thing. What are your thoughts on the Packers getting that loss last night? And what does this mean about Tommy Cutlets and the New York Giants in your eyes? I mean, obviously, Tommy Cutlets, Tommy DeVito's taken over maybe the world. You're right with mm-hmm. his whole family, that's pregame tailgate, everything they're doing. And he's honestly, he's playing well. He moves with it, moving the ball like. Watching him maneuver throughout the pocket and co- complete some of those balls down the field, like that was it was fun to watch his family and agent obviously <laughs> yeah. get, get after it in the crowd. But this was the one that Green Bay needed to win. This sucks for Green Bay. Sucks for Jordan Love and the defense unable to to get stops when they needed to. But man, like Green Bay really needed this one. Tommy's got wheels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tommy's got wiggle. What? Tommy's got moxie. What? Yeah. Doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Tom, Tommy's got it all. He's got the. He's he's literally. Everything you'd want in a starting quarterback. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, how's his size? Well, when he was talking to Aaron Rodgers, they were looking eye to eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? It worked for it yeah. worked for Aaron. He hasn't got his opportunity yet until now, so we have no idea how long this run's gonna go for. True. We know that maybe his stats, although Tone Diggs opened the show with saying they're comparable to Patrick Mahomes', yeah. so <laughs> yeah. you tell me. Mm-hmm. It's like what if in five years from now, and Aaron kind of got upset about it, what if five years from now we're talking about Tommy Bolin Ace? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tommy Cutlets being an actual guy. That's fantastic news. Because let me tell you about the Italian culture. It is an entertaining one. Mm-hmm. And we are already starting to witness it. You know what I mean? They're having they're having Sunday gravy literally in the parking lot out yeah. there. Yeah, it looks so good. So good. The whole the whole family is there. The entire everybody is there and they're just embracing it right today. Hey, where's the camera? I want to tell. I am the most Italian person you've ever seen. And then somebody pushes them out of the way. They come in with a top hat, three piece suits, two pinky rings. They go, I am the most Italian. I am. Pumped for this story. AJ, are you thinking the same thing about Tommy DeVito? Is this flash in the pan? Or do we got a real opportunity here to celebrate something awesome with the New York Giants? I think we might have it. I think we might have a real opportunity here, honestly. And you know what I love about what his whole family and everything they're doing? They're having a great time. Isn't that what you want? If your (laughs) son is out there, he's quarterback in the New York football Giants. Like, they have to be pitching themselves at times, thinking this is awesome. Not only is he out there playing, he's winning games for this Giants team. Like, yeah. All of it's amazing. I hear his his agent too is an absolute hustler. People respect that guy. Oh, yeah. He's good. Yeah, he's got more I, FaceTime than ever now. I know he's happy too. Who's that? The his agent? agent? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's certainly pumped. But to be clear, a lot of agents get on camera. Oh yeah. Not all of them just command the attention of the camera oh, no. with the way they show up in their mocks. Mm-hmm. He's not fake either. This guy's real deal. Oh, yeah. a real this deal. is a real he deal. It's an honor. And there's a story going around, I guess, that he, uh, what was the story up there in uh, in Massachusetts? Yeah, so allegedly he was a, uh, used to be a wide receivers coach for a high school oh, team, yeah. St. John's Prep, small school, Catholic school up north in Mass. Then he also was training people in his basement, and he has a lot of the players from like the local area who aren't you know the starting quarterbacks, but those like third string guys who play you know on multiple teams he's got essentially like a monopoly on those guys those, those are his boys <laughs> used to that. be a wide receiver too yeah he used to play wide yeah. receiver yep he did look like he had a little athleticism oh, yeah. oh, he's yeah. got some wiggle oh yeah it's a real mob. See, I, i'm happy about the story i'm pumped about it congrats to the giants sorry to the packers hey, yeah. it happens Dolphins lose to the Titans. You picked the Titans plus 14. I think everybody was. I had to fade you due to the standings of the weekend. You go ahead and win this week against the spread. We'll talk about Vrabes and that Titans team and the Dolphins going forward at a later time. Because right now we have an incredible opportunity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're getting a chance to chat with a guy who is an incredibly successful coach at Temple. What? Right? At Baylor? Why? Wow. So successful at Baylor. Hey, yep. listen, college game day was down there. Oh, yeah. The eyes of the world were on Baylor. And the reason why we know how successful he was because an NFL owner flew their asses to Waco, Texas.
Okay. Yep. And said, uh, what's all here? Well, Dr. Pepper, I think, was founded here. Mm -hmm. There's some other stuff that happened. Magnolia away. Farms. Yeah, Magnolia Farms with Chip and that Joanna Gaines. Right. The other thing you were And then there was yeah. something else that happened way back in the day. Brand but we're, bingo. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> we're going to the head coach uh, to sign him to the biggest deal that has ever been kind of public in the NFL to head coach. That's how big his brain was. He goes to Carolina. It doesn't work out. Will anybody work out in Carolina? We oh. have no idea. Now he's back at Nebraska, leading the Cornhuskers in a brand new era of college football and Big Ten football. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach Matt Rule. Yeah, coach! Hey, What's up, guys? hey, thanks for waiting through the technical difficulties. That's 100% my fault. I do apologize for making you wait. How are you, coach? How's life? We feel good back in college ball again? Back on the 24-7 grind of college football? Man, I, I, I love it. I love, uh, I, love, I love game days in college. Um, recruiting's gotten a little different now. Now you're now you're recruiting uh, your team, another team, <laughs> high school kids. So it's a little different recruiting, but 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 the the players are awesome. You know they're they're all here for the right reasons, man. It's been a lot of fun, and Nebraska is a special place. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, how do you find those those players that are right like a, a good fit for you and your program? We're always hearing about yeah, you got to worry about people entering the portal and all of that. But how do you now, especially with how recruiting is? How do you know like, now that you're back in the college game? Do you look at it any differently than you did before? Yeah, I, I think I think you have to. I think you have to uh, find players that are coming here for the right reasons. Um, I don't think you can recruit them. You can't do a sales job. Um, you have to tell them exactly what it's going to be like. I think nowadays, uh, young people want transparency. They want to know what it's going to be like. Um, and so you better you better just keep it very real with them. Tell the parents. Tell them this is what it's going to be like here. Uh, have conversations and relationships with them. Like the, the, the gone are the days of like you show up and there's five other linebackers. You know, and you're like they're they're gonna know every player that you're talking to, and it's it's what it should be. Be honest, um, and I think when you find that, when you find someone that really wants to be at Nebraska, you take them, and uh, you know you you have them for four or five years because it's hard to win with guys for only a year or two. Yeah, building a program is going to be tough, seemingly, in this modern transfer portal era. I think there's over a 1,000 guys in there right now, and you talked about how you got to recruit high school guys, other teams, and your own team. Each year, you kind of have to make sure people stay as Nebraska Cornhuskers. Sound like you're trying to recruit out of high school that way. Now, there's headlines being made right now about you having massive success Coming out of high school, congrats. Well, okay. Here you go, Matt. Congrats. Hey, you're not allowed to talk about it, I don't think. I know the NCAA has really strict rules that are all really good and fair. You're not allowed to talk about it. And then also Transfer Portal, there's big conversation happening about you. How involved in all of that? How much are you preparing for the future with Transfer Portal guys, like for two years, potentially signing a free agent, first building the roster? And like, how, how do you kind of balance the modern day of – college football recruiting now that you're back in it and expected to be great in college football. I, I think each team's different. I think for us, we'll be like 90% high school and high school recruiting and high school development. It's it's kind of who we are. I mean, when you, when you win at a place like Temple, when you win at Baylor, you like getting guys in and practicing them and developing them and, um, you know, and, and you want them to, you want them to want to stay. So, and then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll augment it with a player here, a player there, someone maybe you have a connection to or a relationship with, but, um, even even in my time in the NFL, both as an assistant at the Giants and then our time in Carolina, it was really important to me. Like in Carolina, like I wanted to re-sign Christian McCaffrey. I wanted to re-sign DJ Moore. I wanted I wanted to be the guy that was taking care of his own guys in the locker room, not always going outside the locker room. And I think at this level, it's important to me that our locker room knows that you know what uh, the coach cares about them. He's not always you're not going to bust your tail for three years and all of a sudden coach is going to bring someone in ahead of you. Um, so that, that, that's really important to us. Try to do as much high school as possible. But when the time comes and you can get a difference maker, like, you better go get them. And uh, there's some out there. Yeah. It, how do you – you said uh, – we have your press conference actually two weeks. It was a big deal for me because I, too – now, you've been in a long time. But I'm getting, like, baptized in college football. I obviously followed college football and, like, knew what teams were good and everything like that. But I grew up in Pittsburgh. So, like, I didn't fully understand – college football as a whole and then now we're in this massive transition era so this press conference that you had just a couple of weeks ago was like very eye-opening I think for me and a lot of people about the state of college football here's you looking incredibly handsome by the way oh, yeah. from a few weeks ago make no mistake that a, a good quarterback in the portal costs you know a million to a million five to two million dollars right now so just 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 on the same page right so um <laughs> let's make sure we all understand what's happening so um um 
you know, there's some teams that have six, six or seven million dollar players playing for them. My favorite line in there, not only the information, because that was certainly mm -hmm. information I think a lot of people were excited to learn because we hear the chatter. But basically when you say, so that's what, just so we know, like that is what life is. It was almost like you were explaining to people like, hey, this is what college football is right now. That, that really needed to be said. Thankful for that. Is there like just a slotted amount seemingly already made for different positions? And is there like, do you, is there somebody that manages the amount of money that you like how it's professional, right? This mm -hmm. is like professional ball all of a sudden. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I, I took, so people were not happy with me. I've had some other college coaches kind of get on me and say, Matt, you know, you reset the market. Um, <laughs> but I do think it's important that people know, right? Because a, what, what I'm afraid of is, you know, and like, you know, like you said, I went to the NFL. I'm, I'm I, like, I don't care. I'll, I'm going to say what I think is right. And when people like it, they like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. Like I'm going to say what's happening. And, um, at the end of the day, there are no contracts. There are no, this is, and Charlie Baker from the NCAA is trying to make it where the college is like, we can't even have the conversation with the players about the money. So now you have all throughout college football, you have players getting agents. Sometimes they're great agents, NFL agents. Sometimes they're not certified. There is, there's not, there's no like NFLPA regulating it. They're dealing with third parties for each school. Each school has a different amount. And, um, it's 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 there's no system to it. I had a, an NFL GM text me this week and he was like, bro, how come you guys don't just make it binding? How come you guys? I said, I said, we can't even have a conversation or else we get in trouble. So it's them dealing with a third party. They can tell a kid, hey, you're going to get a million dollars. And then they can show you can transfer from Nebraska, go somewhere else. And then they say, hey, you know what? We don't have that money anymore. And oh, by the way, once you transfer, you're stuck at the second school. So you actually get penalized. Like you get penalized for recruiting a kid out of high school. He can leave for more money somewhere else. But if he goes somewhere else, he's stuck there till he graduates. So there is no system. And I think it's important that people know that. I because you know what? Some good Pat, some good coaches are losing their jobs and some good programs are they're 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 building players up and then players are leaving. And I'm all for players. Let me just say this. I'm all for players making money. Absolutely. I'm all for NIU. I just don't think, you know, people should be walking into your program and and offering a player on your roster money. Like that would that would never happen in the NFL. Like you know, you, you got to trade it. You have there, you have you have rules. There's conversations that have to like. There's a little bit of like some morality to this entire thing. Yeah, and, and so I, I worry about the players. I mean, some players are going to get a lot, but a lot of players are going to enter the portal and end up with nothing. A lot of players are going to be told they're getting X, Y, and Z and get nothing. And at the end of the day, not everyone goes to the NFL. So I think we have to have the conversation about it. We have to talk about it and not talk about it to get rid of it. Just man, like make make it competitive and make it real. Yeah, and the issue is it would have to be collectively bargained is what everybody says. So who becomes the players' union? Who represents them? Because those people have to be good. But what really legitimately sound person that is a good business person wants to take that job mm -hmm. instead of what they're currently doing? Like, it is – it's almost – seemingly looking ahead i've thought about this a lot too because i feel like nil deals are a lot in the world that we live in and like i'm a former player who has always been like hey pat white deserved to get paid whenever he was at west virginia steve slayton deserved to get paid whenever he was at west virginia i watched a couple guys build up an entire campus like change an entire university over a four-year run pretty much and they didn't see any of it and it was like so i've been pretty wide open about it but it's like to sign up and do that would be a tall or an mm -hmm. impossible task almost. It, it's like, it's an interesting time here because how everybody agrees that there's a problem. I think everybody, every coach we've had on, every commissioner that we've had come on. And I'd assume players that are getting screwed and fucked with for the first time in their life, realizing that these deals aren't real, they probably would like there to be some sort of binding guidelines in this entire thing. But how's it happened, coach? Have you thought about that? Have you have you given a take on how he figured out? Because I don't know what the answer is, and I've tried to figure out what it would be. I think, and I, as I said, Charlie Baker at the NCA mentioned this week about letting schools pay the money themselves. Because to your point, Pat White and Steve Slayton would have ended that year, and they would have had every school in the country saying, hey, come play here. We got guys playing at three schools now. You know, you got guys playing seven years. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about any one situation. I'm talking about in general. Um, There's guys playing you know, like, yeah, like yeah, eight I, years. They, yeah. 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 They, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have, they would have been, they would have had a lot of temptation to leave West Virginia. And, and again, every situation is a little different, but like, I think the school should have the opportunity to engage in communication and negotiations. Like, like, in a, you know, you're in the NFL. You're, you, what does your agent take? 3%, 4%. Max three. You know, yeah, three three percent, right? So these guys, you know, because it's marketing, because it's nil. But guys are taking giving away twenty percent of what they make, 
and to, to agents that are working with. And so now you're talking about 20% after taxes, which is really like 35%. Um, you know, I, I, you know, who's helping, you know, who's helping these guys. We're really lucky in Nebraska. We have an amazing collective 1890. Like they do, they, they, they do tax work with the kids. They, 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 they help them with all the, all these things because they, People don't understand capital gains. I don't even understand. No that. way. I yeah. do it. Like, no I mean, way. I couldn't even do it. Yeah. So, so I, I just think there's a, a way bigger thing out there that's going to happen. And right now, people have COVID years. People, this is all going to change in a couple of years. And there's going to be a bunch of guys as, as, as the numbers go down. There's going to be a bunch of guys that went in the portal. They're going to have to walk on somewhere. And um, I just think at the end of the day, like we should be fighting for players, and we're fighting for players to make money, but also not to not to get screwed along the way. And uh, I think there's, I think letting the schools be involved. You, like, I didn't take this job till they handed me a contract. Well, like, I'm pretty sure I saw your deal, Pat. You're talking about my deal at, at Carolina. I saw your deal. No, you, no, I'm sure no, you guys, nobody, I'm sure you no, guys signed no a contract. No one has seen right? my deal. Yeah, no. People think they've seen my deal. They have, <laughs> they have not. You know, they have not. But I understand what you're saying. Yes, you're not doing that until we have a, a like, hey. Who's paying? When are we paying? How's the money coming? What do I have to do? What do you have to do? What's expectations? Okay, now here we go. And then there's lawsuits that come on the other side if the, either side doesn't hold up the end of the bargain. Now, nobody wants to sue anybody. You hope to get into business with each other for good reason, for a long time, want to be great partners. But in college football, we've seen there's over a thousand. Shit doesn't yeah. work yeah. sometimes. And it's like, what happens to all that? I haven't even thought about that entire narrative of like deals not being paid. And then those agents that are taking 20%, where do they go? Oh, they got another client, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And uh, what a scene. What a scene in there right now. Go ahead, comment. The kid from Florida last year who plays D-line with oh. the Bears now, his deal was 25% of his career earnings for the rest of his life. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, Coach Roll, figure it out, dude. Come on. <laughs> figure, hey, figure it out. And it's, let's, uh, let's skip that whole conversation, though. Let's get past that. Let's talk about your team now. How do we feel? How do we feel about the team? We got to feel pretty good after the first year, right, with where Nebraska had been. And obviously, I think what I've learned from movies and watching on the internet and watching games, great fan base yeah. over there in yeah. Nebraska, right? Bro, it's, it's, it's outrageous. Like, I've never been somewhere where they are, the people are in the stands to watch warm-ups. Like, they're, 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 the, the stadium is full 45 minutes before the game because they want to, they appreciate their Cornhuskers so much, they want to watch all the players warm up. And they stayed till the end. And so, you know, we had we had we had a fun year, man. We were up and down. We were five and three at one point. We lost the last four all by a field goal or an overtime. We got it. We got a great young team. We'll be a team, I believe, in the in the coming years that everyone in college football is going to have to deal with. And uh, I think it's great what's happening with the Big Ten. You know, we're we're we're, we're a national brand now. We're like you know we're like the, a mini NFL. I mean, we're going we go from Oregon and Washington, USC to Penn State, Rutgers, and then here we are. In the middle of the country, just kind of sneaky, quiet, mm -hmm. with an amazing fan base, elite facilities. We can we can fly wherever we want to recruit. Um, I think we'll be pretty good. Okay, I love that. That's probably the reason why you took the gig, right? Because a lot of places want a Matt Rule whenever you're out of the Carolina Panthers back in college because of your success. I assume you experience all those things whenever you're doing your interviews and in, in sites. Yeah, you know, it's kind of you know, it wasn't cool to get fired. That that wasn't fun not to get fired in the middle of the season, but I, it gave me time. So my wife and I, we flew out here. We, you know, we flew out here on a game day weekend. We, we wanted to see the town. You know, I, I didn't have a great picture of what Nebraska was going to look like. I, I thought maybe like a campus and you know some farms and you know a small little town. I got here, man. It's a huge, huge city. I mean, not huge, a really nice sized city. I drive forty five minutes to Omaha. It's unbelievable. Uh, country concerts, college world series, unbelievable. Jeez, people. So you fell in Ju love. Julie I, yeah, well, Julie and I were like, you know what, like. Like we wanted to raise our kids somewhere nice with nice people. Um, these people here are nice. We want to live in you know in the middle of the country in the Midwest. Good, good values, good people, good everything. And uh, Trev Alberts was a former football player, is the AD here. And when you have a guy that understands what it takes to win in the office above you, you have a chance to win. And I've learned that. I've learned like I have to have a great partner. And uh, Trev Trev's a great partner. So I I said hey let's do it. And I've loved every minute of it since I got here. Congratulations on finding a home. Now, Ty has a question for you on that note. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned, you know, in like a couple years, hey, I think the whole country is going to realize like Nebraska is kind of a team to be reckoned with. And as an Iowa alum and an Iowa fan, like right when you got hired, I was like, oh, shit, Nebraska is going to be good again in a couple of years. So I'll, I'll echo that sentiment. But to what you said and like you look at Nebraska's fan base, like granted, they haven't been good for a while now, but in terms of being like a blue blood national program, you know, like they expect to win. How and considering what you've done at Baylor and Temple, 
how long like do you estimate like it takes to actually kind of like rebuild the program and get guys in who you know you're going to be able to compete in the Big Ten every single year, especially when you know like that allure to just go in the transfer portal and get guys right away and and try to turn around in one season. Like, how how long would you guess like it actually takes to go from where you guys are at right now to where you want to be, where you're contending for Big Ten championships? You know, it took us it took us three years at Temple and it took us three years at Baylor. So when I got here, I thought, you know, we, we would be relevant the first year. And I hoped in, you know, year three, year two, year three, year four, that we would be contending. Um, the, the, the unique thing with the portal is um, a lot of other coaches, and I mean this with the greatest of respect, they left another job. They were in another college job. And so they brought part of their team with them. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I left Carolina. I didn't get to bring Brian Burns. I didn't get to bring... Stephon Gilmore. I didn't get to bring Christian McCaffrey. So, you know, I wasn't bringing anyone that was playing for me. But, you know, you look at you look at the great job that, you know, like Coach Sanders has done at Colorado and obviously bringing his son and bringing Travis Hunter. And, you know, he brought great players with him. You know, Lincoln, who was a great friend of mine, goes to USC. He takes Caleb Williams with him. You know, we just came in and we started, you know, we started differently. So we just said, you know what, let's do it like we did at Temple and Baylor. Let's recruit young players. Let's play them. Um, you know, we, uh, we, 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 fe- we felt like we would be in every game this year. You go back and look at it. We were in every game, you know, we lost five game five games by three points or less. You know, we got beat up by Michigan, Michigan got after us and, and uh, Colorado got away from us, but we'll, we'll, we'll be in every game next year again, I believe. I love that thought of building it. Cause you, you love coaching. I assume, right. That's probably, you just love, coaching. I love coaching. You know how proud I am. Like you know how proud I am when I turn on the NFL and I see like Deion Dawkins and Tyquan Thornton and Tyler Matikevich and, uh, you know, Jalen Petrie, who was like a no star recruit, who was the only guy left over at Baylor. And he's one of the dominant safeties in, for the Texans now. And um, I love that. I love that relationship with the players. And so, you know, when I got fired in Carolina, two things happened. Um, a couple of the players on the team came over to my house afterwards, which normally doesn't happen in the NFL. And but what else, the second thing that happened was a bunch of my old college guys that I had coached. It was almost like I was dead. Like they were eulogizing me. They were like, coach, man, this is what you meant to me. And I was like, bro, I'm not dead. I just got fired. But but it was like, you know what? I'm getting back into college because I, we're talking about the portal, but young people still need adults and they need coaches to believe in them and push them and help them. And, you know, we first, you know, we, we need to, we need to have first generation kids go to college and graduate. And we need all kinds of things to happen that isn't always being talked about. But we're going to try to win at the highest level and still make sure guys get an education and make sure guys lead, lead good lives and you know what if we do that we're doing something right and uh you know coaches probably change your guys lives at some point oh, yeah. you know good or bad we just want to be one of the good ones yeah hey there has been bad obviously but yeah. the good ones do <laughs> affect your life forever i love the thought we haven't brought it up yet you know because you're at nebraska you never going back to the nfl you think never i i you know the hardest thing about being an nfl head coach coming from college is that you're coming from college like i would do like you know you start off and you do something and they're like, oh, this college guy, even though you even though you took it from Coach Coughlin, who's a Hall of Famer, you're like, that guy's, I mean, I, I, uh, Pat Stewart, who I think AJ might know from Ohio State, Pat had been at, Pat had been in New England, he'd be like, hey, this is a great idea, or Matt Lombardi, be like, hey, we did this with uh, Brian Flores, and you do it, and everyone's like, oh, this college guy, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not my idea, but, you know, you know, I mean, I hit it a really weird time, and I came in, COVID was really hard, because they didn't really know me. They hadn't, yeah, and so all of a sudden I show up and I'm a college guy, new staff, and, and we're, we're meeting over a Zoom call. Like that last year, um, you know, I was already on my way out, but I was really proud. I thought the guys, the guys battled and, you know, and, and so, um, but I don't think, I think, I think this is where I'm supposed to be, man. I think I'm supposed to be in college. I, I love this. And uh, I'll just, I'll just hopefully turn out a bunch of pro players from Nebraska and watch, uh, watch, uh, watch great coaches like, you know, Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay do their thing at that level. Yeah. And raise your kids out there, go watch a volleyball game, a women's mm-hmm. volleyball game in front of a sold out stadium. And then go see Luke Combs at night Ooh. and then just probably low taxes. <clears throat> if I had to guess, yep. Yep. Live, yeah. live out there. You haven't seen anything until you've seen Husker volleyball and they play this Thursday. They're, uh, they're outrageous. They're, they're such amazing athletes and, yeah, you know, to your point, it's pretty cool. I have, two, I have 10 and 8-year-old daughters, man, and I, I take them to the women's volleyball game. I take them to the women's basketball game, the men's basketball game. There's something about being on a college campus that's pretty cool. And, and yes, the taxes are pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. and there's great concerts, man. Old Dominion and Chase Rice this past weekend came to town. So we always have something good going in Nebraska. Chase Rice, good luck to your North Carolina Tar Heels in the Mayo Bowl, pal. Mm-hmm. Last yeah. time we met at that particular stadium, Chase Rice played his last football game. They win? 
No, they lost to West Virginia Mountaineers. Oh, okay. Yeah, by one. You know what I mean? By <laughs> oh, one. is that right? Yeah, it was a good time. Anyways, AJ has a question for you, Coach. Coach, after uh, your time in Carolina, was, did you give any thought to maybe taking a year off? I know Coach is Coach. You want to get right back into it. But what was your thought process after that? Yeah, I was absolutely, uh, AJ, going to take a year off. Um, I uh, I was tired. You know, I was, I was beat up. And I was like, hey, I'm going to take my time and find the right job. And uh, I think two things happened. I got fired so early that I had the rest of that year, which was almost kind of like a year off. And uh, like my wife and I traveled. We went to Ireland, man. We, first bar we sit down and I'm like, I just want to be away. <laughs> the, 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 the gentleman walks up to the bar, you know, we order two Guinness. And he's like, are you Matt Rule? I'm like, oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, he's like, I love the Red Zone. I'm a Jets fan. And, you know, and it, it, I mean, it was just it was just like, you know what? I'm a coach, man. Let's go back. Let's get back to work. But I wouldn't have taken any job. Um, I wasn't going to coach. I was going to take a year, you know, on my contract, I had to find a job. So I knew I had to honor my contract. And um, I wasn't just going to take any job, though. And and Nebraska came open, as I said, Trev. And it's one thing to go to a school that's never done it before and try to be the first to win a championship. Every day I walk through this building, I walk by five national championship trophies. Dang. You know, I, it's another thing to get a place back to where it was. I walk by three Heismans. I go out to practice and I have I have you know, Frank Solich and Tom Osborne at practice watching. I got Eric Crouch and Tommy Frazier. I mean, it's a pretty cool place. So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have coached had it not been for this. Um, but yeah, I, I really thought about taking a year. Um, but you know, my, this is what I do. I'll, I'll do this till I die. Guinness, we're beer. Beer is that? That's the, we'll go to Guinness beer. Is that what we're drinking? Yeah. It, it, I, if I'm if I'm in Pittsburgh, I'm gonna have an icy light. Oh. If I'm there, I'm gonna have a Guinness. Um, I, I'm, I believe in I believe in regional beers. Living. I believe in. I'm at Eastern PA. I'm gonna go to get a Yingling. I believe in you know yeah. sampling what's what's happening. You know where you are. What's there in Nebraska? Well, they got some corn IPA. Yuck. Yeah, there there there's some good things. I I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to say anything out because I don't want to get in trouble here. Um, I don't want one one brewery mad at me. What I will say is there's elite bourbons here. You you have access here to some of the best bourbons. So if you like to sip on a little bourbon every once in a while. It's a great place to come. Yeah, sounds like I mean, you're selling the shit out uh, of this thing. Yeah. Getting the job. <laughs> Darius has a question for you. Yeah, uh, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get game day soon. Hey, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh. Say that one more time. You weren't on the camera there. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll get. We had game day at Temple. We had game day at Baylor. We'll nice. get game day here soon. Okay. Oh, Hell yeah. Got clip. Boom. <clears throat> bang. <laughs> Let's go. When this happens, you know, in the next year or so. Pretty sweet. It'll be a sweet clip. It's like. This fucking Matt Rule guy. He knew. <laughs> he knew what yep. was going to happen. I'm sorry. Go ahead, D-Butt. Now, Matt, uh, I got a question. You obviously have uh, been into some a few different colleges and obviously had a head coaching job as well in the NFL. How uh, similar or different are those interviews during that process uh, on, on, in NCAA and in the NFL? Yeah, they're, they're, no, that's a great question, man. Because I, you know, I think in my time, uh, before I took the Panthers job, I had interviewed for like two or three jobs the previous couple of years. And so each one was a little different. You know, some it's an owner, some some use a search firm. Um, you know, the, the the jobs are so different. So much of the NFL is economics. It's money. It's, you know, how are we going to allocate this? How are we going to allocate that? How are you going to work with the GM? I really, you know, people don't understand, like to me, the salary cap uh, person is as important as the GM. So a lot of it focused kind of on those things. Um, as in college, you know, your conversations are about recruiting, about academics, about discipline. You know, you certainly didn't worry about academics and really even discipline in the NFL. So it was much more of a, hey, you know, is there something special we're going to do here? Like if you're in Indianapolis, hey, are we going to play fast and have great pass rushers try to get a lead and because we're playing in the Dome? Or, hey, if we're playing in Green Bay, are we going to play a little differently, you know, with the weather? So there's there's a little bit of that, I think. But a lot of it to me is the NFL is about player acquisition and player retention. And it's 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 all economics. It's about it's about who's willing to pay the sign and bonuses, who's willing to trade, you know, who's going to make the right moves. And so a lot of that was you talking with the owner, talking with the GM at all these places about how do you see it? How do they see it? How, you know, and so um, yep. it's, it's a little bit different, you know, still your core philosophy, maybe, but a little bit different in terms of the actual like do's and don'ts. You said something in your answer uh, about the interview process and drinking and somebody calling you out. You said because your contract one year you had to or something like you had to coach or you had to attempt to coach. Is that what? It, is that what? It, what? Yeah, I think you know, I think in all you know in, in all contracts, you know, if, if they're paying you multiple years, got it. And you know, if it, there's you have you usually have a duty to try to mitigate and go oh, find another job. Good so, business, try um, to do good business. Yeah, you could you know. So I, to me, it was really important to me that you know, hey, I wanted to coach. You know, the year before, I had some opportunities to go back to college with some really lucrative jobs, and you know, just in our discussions, you know, my family and I. 
you know, while it wasn't going great uh, in Carolina, I never wanted to quit. You know, I didn't want to be one of those coaches that just quit and ran. I didn't want to show my kids that. Like my whole goal in Carolina, besides, you know, I wanted to win, obviously, and, you know, uh, win a championship. I wanted my son to finish high school. And uh, we weren't able to, you know, he's, he, he's actually living there. He doesn't live with us anymore. He's finishing high school his senior year there right now. Um, but, you know, so I wasn't going to quit. But there, there were some different things that happened. So when I got this job, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, when I when I got fired, I was always gonna look for a job, and just had to be a good one. And this was a great one. Yeah, it seems like you're building up a, a beautiful thing over there. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine yeah. he does a Temple, Baylor, and then also mm-hmm. Nebraska? You say he walks past five national championships over there. Sweet. Yeah. Hey, those trophies got to look good, huh? Those are the uh, yeah. That's got to look sweet. Pretty. They look good, bro. Yeah, I could imagine. I could imagine. That's good motivation. Uh-huh. Also, whenever the guys get in there, you said you didn't know much about Nebraska. I like to think of the thought of you and your wife, by the way, at a Nebraska game with a hat on, just being like in the student mm-hmm. section, in the in the <laughs> tailgate or something, being like, "Place pretty sweet, yeah. pretty sweet, well got good energy here." The whole the whole thought of you building another school back up to a place is like you'll go down as one of the greatest coaches of all time but like that is that's a big deal right i, I mean i don't know your age i don't know your age right. how old are you 48 yeah, yeah 48 oh yeah you got what like another 30 years at least of coaching. i'm gonna coach for a long time i'll i'll um like, like if i if i wouldn't have gotten a job i, I would have coached like a, i would have been a high school tight ends coach in charlotte or so i'll, I'll always coach I, I i love kids i love i love young people so i'll always coach but I, you know, I think the big thing for me was it's not just winning. It's it's the way that we do it. And that's why Nebraska was important to me because Nebraska believes in player development. They, you know, they were when when Coach Osborne and Coach Devaney had this place rolling and then Coach Solich, it was, you know, they were the leaders in the weight room. They were the leaders in really sports science. They were the first ones to have a study hall, a training table. Like they were the Georgias and Alabamas of that day. And so we came back. And I'll be honest, I was very blessed to to be around Christian McCaffrey because my time with Christian, I learned more about sports science, more about recovery than I ever could have. And we came here and we took out a bunch of recruiting stuff and we put in, I mean, our our our, our building here is state of the art and it's state of the art for development. And so I, to me, it's about, it's about, I, I want us to win, but I want us to win in a way that honors the state of Nebraska and honors college football, where it's not a quick fix, where we're where we're recruiting high school kids and developing them and growing them. And if we can do that, then it's three places that we went to. And it's not me. It's all the whole staff that's with me. You know, I got 13 former players working for me in different areas, you know, from Carolina to Temple to Baylor. So to me, it's about like, Hey, we went to three places and we left them better than we found them and we built them from the ground up. And so I'm proud of Temple. I'm proud of Baylor. And I love what we're doing here so far. Um, we just gotta, we just gotta get over the hump and, and, and get to where we're winning championships. Thirteen X players tells me the players love playing for you. Yeah. you know, once you find your people, you got the people that want to stay in there, and if they can make a living off of continuing to do it, yeah. you're a good man for that entire thing. AQ has a question for you, Coach. Coach Roll, what's up? Uh, got a big what's question. Up, I, was, I was a little offended that you didn't mention offensive line. You mentioned Scott Frost or Eric Crouch and Tommy <laughs> Frazier, all these former guys, skill guys coming out to watch practice. You have offensive and defensive linemen scattered all over the NFL from mm-hmm. everywhere you've coached in college. You just re-signed Rayola to a, an extension coaching on Who's the that? offensive line. What's his name? Uh, Rayola. What's that, Coach Rayola? Coach Rayola, yeah. He has a pretty good lineage of, uh, yeah, quarterback in his family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. That. Anyways, he's offensive anyways, line coach. Anyways, he's the offensive line coach. Got it. How important is that for you to build up Nebraska among the offensive and defensive lines? Yeah, it, it's the heartbeat of of it's the heartbeat of this place, and it's the heartbeat of how you have to play here. Like, um, I would say, AQ, there's there's two quarters a game in most games where the wind is 25 miles an hour in your face, no. or 15, 25 miles an hour in your face, and so like we're not, you know, I watch, you know, you portal, you're watching kids in Texas, you're watching kids in Florida, like it's 26 degrees and the and the wind's blowing right at you, so you better be able to line up and stop the run, and you better be able to line up and run the football and. In the heyday of Nebraska, obviously defense, the black shirts, and obviously the offensive line, the pipeline. And those guys, you know, those guys obviously come around. Brendan Stye, so many of them, they, you know, he, he works here. They, 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 they care about the program, but we have to be able to run the football. In our, in our first year, you know, we were, we, I think we were first or second in the league, in the league in rushing. Uh, we, we, we fixed our run defense. We were one of the top two or three run defenses, whereas the year before had been the last. So there are such big people out here in the Midwest. You know, to me, it's about, getting them here, getting them in a strength program. And we want to walk out on the field and you to know that that's Nebraska. Like, like, oh, they're all six foot six, 
315 pounds. They got abs. They, that, like, that's what Nebraska football is. And so look at me talking about abs. But that's what Nebraska <laughs> football is. So, you know, we want to be that, you know. Your Temple team, remember? Oh, yeah. I mean, your Baylor team, too. But oh, that, yeah. that Temple team, I got to see a couple of the of them. Uh, um, they were all mm-hmm. stacked. Six, three, four, four. Absolutely stropped. Jeez. Just like won the game before the game even. Like, look on the field. It's like, oh, that team. What are those? What is that? That team is huge. You that is a goal for you. That is something that you actually like. Hey, we need studs here. We need to make them though in the weight room and everything like that because eighteen to twenty two is quite a development stage for the human body. So that is a focus of yours. Okay, I, I, that makes sense now. Thinking back to the teams that you've had. Yeah, so much of recruiting is like who who matured early. But, you know, you, you look at the, those teams you said at Temple, like, you know, Hassan Reddick walked on. And Hassan did it all himself. I don't take credit for Hassan Reddick. But Hassan went from a walk-on to a first-round draft pick in the weight room, in the way that we practice. Deion Dawkins, you know, we – Deion, you know, starting left tackle with the Buffalo Bills, someone I'm really proud of. Like, he had just gotten dropped by Cincinnati, had nowhere to go, and we stopped at his house. And we were like, you know what? It was like a, it was like a romantic comedy. I walked out of the house, and I stopped. And I walked back in. I said, you have a scholarship, you know, be there, be there Sunday. It was like Friday. I said, be there Sunday. And he showed up and you now he's making millions of dollars in Buffalo and impact in the community. So like that was that type of place, man, where you had the, you had to build your team in the weight room. You had to build your team on the practice field. And again, that all goes back. Like that team, after we won 10 games in 2015, would have been hard to keep together in 2016. You know, they would have had guys would have had offers from all over the country nowadays. They come play for us, uh, play for us now in 2023. So but I was proud of those guys. And so when I came here, we said Nebraska will want the type of team that we had at Temple. Defense, run the ball, play great special teams, and that's what we're going to try to do. Yeah, you talked about 26-mile-an-hour win. Ain't no punter or kicker signing up to go there. <laughs> nope. Going to have to get a real mentally tough guy. Going to have to get a real me- – hey, I'm pulling for you. You'll find him. You'll find him. <laughs> Connor has a question for you, Coach, about making people run through a damn wall. Yeah, Coach, one of my favorite parts of this college football season was waiting for that Sunday or Monday release video of you getting the mm-hmm. boys ready to play. I think you, you were like McGuire in the 90s just hitting bombs every week without for the your ster- team. Without the, without the, the steroids. BD, yeah. Although, who, who knows? But we don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He might be squatting 800 pounds, but uh, how how do you plan those? Or, or is that something that you go into the week like, hey, I got to start thinking of things I'm going to say to the boys to get them all revved up? Because I think it was a three and a half minute speech you gave once where it was about, you know, mothers and people who yeah. have helped your team kind of get to where they are. And I don't know if it was like a team mom at the end, but it was someone who clearly didn't swear very often. And she might've said a swear and you guys muted it and the team went ballistic, but what goes into those? And did you ever try to do one of those at Carolina and they just didn't really hit because it was the NFL? Yeah. You know, I, I certainly don't do that every week. I, 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 I don't plan it. I, I kind of go with what hits me and I kind of go with, you know, how I feel. And, you know, the, obviously the NFL is a little different because the season's longer, but you know, even you, you watch hard knocks, you hear people talking with passion sometimes and energy sometimes. And, you know, um, we were at a point this year, like that, that game was really special to me. Um, you know, my mom's a breast cancer survivor. My wife, Julie lost her mom to breast cancer. So, you know, Julie invited all the moms, grandmoms, aunts, sisters to line that's the tunnel on the way out to the field. And, um, you know, we're a young team. We're trying to figure out how to win. You know, nowadays everything gets evaluated. Guys are nervous about making a mistake. And, and I just wanted them to like, I want them to recognize because you sit guys in a room and then we all look at each other like, well, you know, I'm white. He's African-American. I'm old. He's young. I'm from the East Coast. You're from the, we find all the stuff that divides us. You start saying like, hey, who, who, whose mom had cancer? Whose dad had cancer? Whose grandmother? And guys start raising their hands. And what we find out is that your worst day was also my worst day. And it's not about from that point on what divides us about. It's about what unites us. And so for me, that was a way to honor all those moms. It was a way for me to honor my mom and for me to honor Julie and her mom. And um, what was great about Mrs. Piper was her son, uh, Ethan, uh, tore his knee up every ligament in his knee the week before mm. and couldn't be at the game. And as we were marching into the stadium, we saw her. I said, hey, would you please come down with us? And she came down and uh, she got the boys ready to go. And uh, we went out and we won that game, man. So, but yeah, I I, I don't ever plan it. Um, I, at the end of the day, like sometimes they might fall a little bit flat. Sometimes maybe they hit with the guys, but I want it to always be authentic. And I want it to always be real because players know if you're fake and they know if it's real. And that 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 game meant a lot to me. And I will say this, I've had more people reach out to me uh, who've had loved ones uh, harmed by cancer, or who have someone in the throes of it. And for them to think about like, hey, you know what, like it's not, 
it, 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 it's it's me every day of my life honoring the ones that I love who are battling cancer by the way that I do things for me to be a weapon and not just I think um, that that if we did anything good this year, that was kind of a cool moment. And, you know, it wasn't about me. It was about our team. It was about the moms. Mega viral. Mm -hmm. Great message. That's a good thing. I appreciate you letting you. whoever let that out out, you know, because that's a decision that has to be made as well, especially in the modern era. What do, what does, doesn't deserve to get out? What should get out? What helps the team? What helps the world, though? And you let us in yeah. on a little bit of that. We appreciate that, Coach, genuinely. Thanks, Go ahead, AJ. Thank you. Coach, what's it like going into someone's house, say, with their 16, 17 years old, you're recruiting them, and then bringing them into your program and watch them develop and become a starter, say, make plays, go to the NFL and kind of develop as a man? I would imagine as a coach, that's what you're, you definitely miss that in the NFL game, but in college, kind of mold these guys and help them in this pivotal part of their life. Like, what is that like for you as a coach? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's vital. You said something there that was really important to me, too, is go into their homes, you know, like, um, I go into every, you know, when you when you start recruiting, I try to go into every person's home if I can, because I, you know, I want to see their home and I want to see what's important to them. And, you know, we recruit people all over the country. And one thing you learn is there's great people everywhere. And, you know, my wife and, and you know, what, she did this in the NFL every Thursday night. Uh, it was Friday night in the NFL. She has a different position group over to our house. And at the end of the day, like the players love nothing more than hearing Julie. You know, I'm the head coach hearing Julie yell at me and call me Matthew. And they all think it's nuts. And. I mean, even the NFL, man, I had, I mean, I had, I had Stefan Gilmore sitting on my couch, playing with my dogs, hanging out with my kids. I mean, like life's about people. And so I like that part of it and seeing where guys are from. And the thing that's cool about college, AJ, is not everything goes like this. Not everything's like a linear equation, right? Like you go through ups and downs, highs and lows and guys, you know, they, they hit a pitfall. They hit a distraction. Something's going on at home. And we've always wanted to be the staff that helps them through that. And, you know, I tell them right now, like, hey, guys, don't worry about what you're doing as a freshman. Let's worry about as a senior, if you have a degree, if you won a championship, if you're going off to the NFL, if you're going to be a doctor, like, let's worry about that. And that's what I struggled with in the NFL was you build this great relationship with somebody and then the GM walks in the end and is like, hey, we need to let them go. And all of a sudden, boom, it's a transaction. They're gone and maybe they're back on Tuesday. And that's just not me. I mean, that's just that's just not who I am. I like having those connections with guys. And so. I obviously did it and I didn't always do it right because it was so hard for me. And so I like this. I like watching those guys grow and develop. I like, you know, I'm starting to get to the age now where I'm starting to offer guys that I coach as a young assistant. I'm offering their kids now. Oh, and so, oh yeah. 48, oh, yeah. 48, 48, you know, there's, you know, they, they had, they had a kid at 21, 22 and yeah. here we go now. So. Oh, it's over. Trust me to coach them because I coached them. To me, that's that's pretty cool if we can do it right. We don't always do it right, but we do the best we can. A lot of trust there from the players to you whenever they're freshmen and you say, let's worry about what happens senior year because, you know, we're just uh, – it seems like in 2023 it's vastly different. You know, it feels like this year from what we've heard and what the national narrative is about college football right now, it's not about, hey, two, three years from now. It's about right, right, mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. Right now, which leads to this from Tone, which is a wild thing. Yeah, Coach, I don't know if you've had to deal with it yet or if you've planned on how you would deal with it. Like, have you had any players like 19, 20 year olds who come into your office and say, Hey, I want X amount of dollars or I'm going to hit the portal and I'm going to go try to find more money at a different place? <laughs> like, have you had to deal with that? How how do you deal with that? Like, if you let them go out and bring them back, if they don't find it, like, what's this, what's the process there? Yeah, man, it's I, so I've definitely dealt with it. I've had guys come in and I've really had guys say to me, like, hey, coach, so and so from such and such schools reached out, you know, they've got this amount of money or the quarterback from this school, because a lot of it's going through like the quarterbacks are doing. Hey, this quarterback from this school has offered me this amount. And sometimes when the mouths are like, it's eight hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, bro, you should take that. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Like, I, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, that's that's fantastic. Um, I just try to make sure that they understand, like, hey, guys, listen, like going back to what we talked about words are words you know once you transfer you're locked in there you know and i'm really proud of the fact you know we went five and seven it's year one you know we had one guy go in the portal the first day you know wanted to go down and play fcs football we had another guy two other older guys went in the portal and um because they want to be starters i mean we, we haven't lost anybody and i think it's because i hope it's because the things we've talked about you know hey being the team that's trying to develop guys trying to help guys i, I hope that they feel that way and so as I said, we have a great collective. We have a great NIL set up. Um, guys want to be here. They like being at Nebraska. But, yeah, that's definitely the real world now. That's definitely the real world now. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's like yeah, you can time it any time you want. You can hit free agency, and you can go out and test the market. 
Um, I, I don't mind if a player says, coach, I'm a backup for you. Can I go in the portal and see if there's a place I can start? I've let guys, if guys are going to go out and see, you know, hey, coach, can I see if I get more money? I think they probably, they probably don't need to be here. But if, if it's, if it's because they want to play, I mean, I was a backup. I was a walk on at Penn State. I understand that. I, I'm always going to help guys if they want to play somewhere. Um, but we try to manage it just honestly and straightforward. And uh, thankfully, we haven't lost anyone. We are Penn State. Can't say it. Can't do that anymore. No, nope. saw me almost. Yeah, he was close. <laughs> I was big red. Ass. I'm a scotch yeah. ass. <laughs> no, I, I love Penn State. I love Penn State. I love James Franklin. The AD at Penn State, Pat Kraft hired me at Temple. I love Penn State, but go big red. <laughs> That'll be a big one for you. You know, that'll be emotional in there. Mm-hmm. Hey, future of the Big Ten is changing, right? Everything's uh, – everything. oh. yeah, it's great. Do we like this? We wow. like this. We, there's no more divisions, right? We're kind of – what do you think? Yes. I I, I, um, I would love to see a day where it's like, you know, four teams in the Big Ten all play a playoff to determine the league champ, you know, and I think that the SEC did something similar. Oh. Um, I, I wish I, – I just think college football like should get very – I think college football, A, I think we should have the same rules as the NFL. We should have a two-minute warning. Like – how are we playing college football and pro football? And we have different hashes. It makes no sense to me. Like, that makes absolutely. Down by contact too. Down by I don't contact. Yeah, why it's we all, down by contact is a tough thing to watch. Change it. Yeah, two it's feet. tough. Yeah. Two feet. I don't understand. Like no, no technology. Like you know, we go to a high school game. They have huddle on the sidelines. They got iPads. We you know we're we're holding up signs and boards. We don't have. So I'm, and I think they're working on all this stuff. But I, college football to me could be really healthy if we got the same rules as the NFL. We implemented technology, and I think. Um, if as they go to the bigger playoff, I think it's going to be hopefully really good for football. Like I'm, I'm up the other night till like one o'clock in the morning watching Albany play whoever I in know. the FCS playoff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm watching Furman the other night. I Montana. love college football. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. What a great, I mean, what great games. And so I, I, I think the Big Ten will probably have this league will probably have four teams in there every year. You know that's South Dakota State's world down there. Uh huh. They've won 27 straight games. South Dakota State Jackrabbits. <laughs> I gave the other team that, that credit. That <laughs> yeah. stat I messed up bad there, but I. Hey Pat, in my in my negotiations here, I was like, "Hey, listen, Fred, I know you handle, but can we keep the word Dakota out of our scheduling? I don't need to play it. <laughs> North Dakota, they, South Dakota, South Dakota State. Those guys are tough, great coaches. I I respect the heck out of them. Man. Yeah, we don't need to be, you know, in those early weeks scheduling uh-uh. any potential. Whoa, what was that? What are we doing? And also flying out there. To the entire place, which is one of the weapons of Nebraska, getting there. But once you get there, you're going to fall in love with it. We appreciate you, man. Thank you for spending time with us. This was a great conversation. I assume you had numerous things you had to do, and we just blew right the fuck through it. (laughs) So that's on me. Uh, But thank you for joining us. Man, I love this. Thank you very much. I I got a lot of family and friends that were like, when are you going to get on the show? When are you going to get on the show? This was Now my kids are going to think I'm cool today, so thank you. Me and AJ called... What was that, AJ? What are, that was the first time me and AJ were ever, I think. Baylor, Texas Tech, I believe we worked yeah. the game. Yep. Yeah, Baylor. Oh, Te- oh, oh, oh. With Cliff. Yeah, we actually talked to you. We interviewed you. Uh, we also Charlie talked, Brewer. Charlie Brewer. Charlie, man, what a football player. Oh. He had a jug of water with him, like mm-hmm. a full thing. It was the whole the whole team was doing it. We got a chance to really, yeah, dude, you were very kind to us. And you got a huge win. Yeah. Beat Cliff. That, 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 that got Fire. us to bowl eligible in year two. Uh, that was a huge, that was a huge day. And. Yeah, Charlie Brewer, man. What a football player. He's still I love playing in college? Kid. He might. He, yeah, he was playing like six <laughs> nah, he's, years. He's done. No, nah, he's done. He's done. I think he's probably, I think he's probably hopefully playing, trying to play in the XFL or USFL. or Kind of cool they have those leagues now, so guys have a chance mm-hmm. to put some tape out there. But Charlie, man, he could play football. Certainly could, just like a lot of the guys that you've recruited and brought into your programs. Good luck out there in Nebraska. Until the next time, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers football team, Matt Rule. Yeah, coach. Oh. That was a long time. Mm-hmm. Long yeah. time. That was a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. conversation. Great. I did not expect that. I at thought it was going to be a 10-minute conversation about that fucking press conference. Yep. And it looked yeah. we did. Yeah. Wow, that was a nice little surprise. Journalism. journalism. Yeah, it is journalism. How about that? I feel like we just learned a lot about that guy. I'm big, Since the first day we talked to him down there at the Baylor, Texas mm-hmm. Tech thing, I've been a big fan all the way since. Remember he, he said something to us, and we were meeting with him the day before the game, and he said, like, he said, I'm like the least fun coach out there. He was, we were all talking about like music and different things, but he even said like, he was basically saying he didn't have, I think he may have changed, but he didn't have music and warmups back then. But then he said like, he said it in a way of like, yeah, but my guys get it and they have a lot of fun still. Like, yeah, he's I don't just, know. Was, he yeah, basically just loves ball. He, like he, yeah. uh, ball it's, coach. it's just yeah. ball. That's yeah. it. That's why him going to the Carolina Panthers, it was like an interesting little, will it work, will it not work? Because mm. the development of it all is really the big part that he seemed mm-hmm. to showcase today, obviously. Mm-hmm. The college coach thing is hilarious, though. He's like, I got all these ideas from NFL coaches. 
But because I'm a call. He's on a Zoom call saying, yeah. all right, this is what I'm thinking. And God's just like, yeah. okay, bub. Ever going to work, college guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, works, that works against uh, Connor Campbell. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Playing, uh -huh. okay, linebacker. I don't, I don't know if that one's going to work for us. But this is the men's league. And you're on a Zoom, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So you can't even, like. Brutal. Guys, there isn't okay. even, like, an honor. Like, but, come on. No, listen, this is what I'm trying to do. Not even a chance of that. <laughs> All right, we'll scrap it. I, I got to unmute. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hold on. I, does anybody else have, before I, and then somebody else starts talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah talk about, this is dumb. He's like, boy, guy, uh, fuck. Brandon Staley, same way, right? Yeah. Didn't that end that how he started yeah. over there? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. During COVID, yeah. yeah. The hard knocks. I would like to see how many coaches that started during COVID make it. Man, it's a tough task. Tough like task that. right there. You're trying to implement your culture without even being able to be around anybody. That had to be a pretty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was MCDC the year after? Or the, yeah, he was the year after. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, the college Remember how things up. would get changed, too? Like, day-to-day, -day, they'd be like, oh, uh, everyone got sent home. Meetings are strictly virtual today. Like, mm -hmm. that would happen all the time as well to where, yeah, how do, you, how do you coach, especially being a new guy? That would have been very difficult. Very difficult to bring your culture in there. You would have had – that would have been – It's, like, legitimately impossible, it feels like. Yeah. I, in, in your meetings, remember they're having meetings in parking lots. Yep. Where they would have a Madonna speaker yeah. yep. on – a microphone on their faces – and then your offensive line is potentially 70 yards away in the back of the room where speakers are sending the speech to. It's like, mm -hmm. are those motherfuckers paying attention back here? Ah, no. That's going <laughs> to be it. tough. That's going to be. Now, obviously, the offensive line all pay attention. Mm -hmm. uh, Always in there. But you're like 30 yards away from the coach. Like, it's that would be a tough way to build anything. Now he's back at college. He loves the Yeah, he yeah. loves it. He loves the brat. Did you mm -hmm. hear that? That's what I heard out of that whole thing. Yes, absolutely. Loves everything about it. It seems like he, he enjoys the recruiting part of it, too. And I understand they talk about how tough recruiting is, but all the college coaches seem to kind of thrive on that. They, they compete with other coaches to try to get people. I think it's probably fun for them. All right, let's take a break. On the other side, we got a lot to talk about Titans and Dolphins. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got the road to the AFC number one seed and the road to the NF. C number one seed graphics mm -hmm. that everybody would like to see. The whole thought of music's off. Music's back. Mm -hmm. There it is. <laughs> the whole thought of a schedule being easy, though, I think is kind of bullshit. Because yeah. we see last night happen. No, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Eight underdogs won this weekend. Yeah. Massive. It's a lot. It's a ton. So the schedule, whenever you look ahead, you're like, when, should, when. Should win. It's like, who the fuck knows? Yeah. We don't know. Nobody. You might lose five players in the first three minutes. Tommy Cutlets and Will Levis. That's well, what last night does. Yeah. That's what last night does. Yeah. Any given Sunday. Or All right. We'll look at the road. Or Monday. Mm -hmm. Or Saturday. Thursday. Saturday. Saturday. Hey, or Saturday Friday. this weekend. So yeah. pumped. Super wild card weekend. For yeah. Me. We're Triple here. header. Yeah. We're going to be at the second one. Mm hmm. Good luck to your Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Gardner Minshew off a loss. You ever seen those stats? Undefeated. I assume, I assume they're terrible, but... Um, go look them up undefeated. if you haven't seen them. I thought he was like 0-14 or something like that. Yeah, you should go look them up again then. Mm -hmm. I think this is the year that the Colts uh, beat Steelers for the first time since 08, I believe. All right. I just heard Gronk and Julian Edelman talking about it, and now yep. we got Steelers people talking Enough about it. This shit. We're a good team. That's why everybody's talking about it all the time. That's right. I was not part of a lot of Colts wins, though, against the uh, New England Patriots up there. No. To Gronk's and Julian Edelman's point. Yeah. No, well, you're not. Nobody was against no that team. Was. Yeah. To be fair, everyone hates us. AQ. I was on the wrong side of both. In fourth and two, I was on the Patriots. That was that awesome. Melvin Bullet, big time pick. And came to the Colts and. The fight gate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They were, I just watched Gronk and Julian Edelman say the players were complaining about the ball. I don't think it. No. I don't think any player. <laughs> Especially after the game, we we certainly understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was a lot of other people doing a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. yeah. A different, and you've talked about it too. Every time it got brought up, I think a lot of the players were like, "Can we fucking stop? <laughs> stop saying thirty-eight to ten? Can we stop talking about this?" All right, it was a bad game. Yeah, it was a blowout. Who's up there? Competitive too? first half. Was it? What? Oh, yeah. Really? It was. What was, and, what was we had a, we had three and out. We had a muff punt early. Yeah, kind of changed the. the what was the score I'm, at half? Revis pick six. Half that was early, uh, wasn't it? I don't know. Probably like 17, 10 or something. Like that. I don't remember anything about that game except for Danny Amendola was fair catching everything. And anytime the Patriots start doing that, that means the game's over. Just get the ball back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> don't need to return anything. Nope. Helped my stats. Yeah, that was what? a hell of a conference championship game, though. You guys hung that banner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
It is still up. Oh, still yeah. up. That needs to not That's happen. What does it say exactly? A- 2014 AFC finalists, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, God, really AFC 2012. <laughs> oh, Four, it was 14. It was 14. 14. Yeah. 12, we lost to Baltimore. Mm. Oh, yeah. First round. <laughs> and then they went on to win the Super Bowl. So we <laughs> yeah. basically uh, won the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. Year, right? yeah. yeah. BA was Congrats. sick that game. Sick too. that morning. Woke so, up. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce Arians in a hospital. Yeah. Yeah. 2016, Ravens almost got it done. So close, AQ. You on that team, though? Oh. You got down Tampa though. Yep. Bingo. Oh. Yeah. My rookie year, we beat the Patriots on that Melvin Bullet play. Yes, you did. That was cool. Then you went on to lose to Drew Brees and the Saints. And then also, I'd play my role on a team that is not important as everybody else against the Patriots a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, too we, often, someone said. Yeah, I don't know what, you know, how Matt Rule just said, let's not. Be scheduling any of the Dakotas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somehow the NFL for I don't know, like two decades straight, they're like, you know what, Patriots, Colts, let's make sure this happens. No matter what, I had to have one on one. You had an onside kick that got yeah overruled. Yeah, yeah screwed. Bamboo. Yeah, Patriots. That's Belichick, baby. That was in Indianapolis. Totally they said right. it was our ball, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it's not our ball anymore. It's like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> How's that even? Well, it's an onside kick. Once you say, yeah, that's the person. That's mm-hmm. the per- that's the ball, and then no. Uh, Interesting. It's not how it works. In our house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the lot house. In the fucking lot house, Lucas Oil <laughs> Stadium. Lot before, house. before people knew that you guys were pumping in noise. It was <laughs> There's no noise coming into the lot house. No, no that was the no. RCA. That was RCA. It's organic. I, I've never mm. seen. The lot house? You guys think they're pumping in sound? Is that what you think? Well, Have you ever been to another no. like, venue? They make noise. There's noise. It's a little yeah. baby sledgehammer thing before pregame that you guys it's had. It's not a yeah. man, that oh, fucking head. Whoa. Did you see Vinatieri? Well, I mean, it's a, a miniature sledgehammer. Vinatieri would make a, a full full length sledgehammer look like a miniature one. That guy's absolutely jacked. He was swinging. So were uh, you. That sledge. Thank you. You're swinging too. Yeah, you from are. what we've heard. And he, you have a swing, actually. But the is that soaking thing real? That that thing from Zach Wilson is that a real? What do you mean? Quote. You know, we do know that Zach Wilson's a good boy. He's a sweet uh-huh. boy. There's no way. He's got a good personality. If we've learned, he does. Zach Very Wilson good. has a good personality. He does. I'm yeah. I'm guessing this is uh, Fugues, but pretty funny. Yeah. It's a damn shame. Because from my conversation with uh, Zach as a journalist, he's a good boy. A good personality. He is good a boy. good boy. He's a handsome boy. Handsome, handsome boy. boy. Yeah. He's a handsome boy. He's kind of a big boy, too. Yeah, yeah much bigger because his baby ass face yeah. makes yeah. you think, oh, he must just be a little thing. No. Oh, that, that sweet boy is pretty big. He's a big yeah. boy. He's a pretty Burley. big boy. The journalist that I was with asked about the coast of Carolina. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. The pick, and then mm-hmm. he got yeah. double teamed yep. on yep. national TV during the potential. Zach Wilson is the best player on earth. Chose mm-hmm. to go there to play. Yeah, that wasn't scheduled. Like, nope. yeah, let's go play yeah. Coastal Carolina. Mm-hmm. Zach, well, let's keep the teams on TV. Coastal Carolina having a year. BYU, hey, let's go. Let's do it. And then, oh, yeah, you threw a pick. Good news. That means one thing. We can fucking kill you. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They did. We asked about it. Mm-hmm. And he was nice. He was. Boy, he's a sweet boy. He said, you know, it's just football sometimes. Mm-hmm. Man, that was a <laughs> cool comment, sweet boy. He's a sweet boy. Thank you, sweet boy. <laughs> did he do that right after he said that? Did he do that little, yeah, he did. That little bow up a little bit? Mm-hmm. He, mm-hmm. He, I don't know if he did or if that was just my interpretation of looking at him saying, he's fucking much bigger than I thought. He might have been that. Big boy. He's big a, strapping dude. Yeah. Big, sweet, burly boy. Ah, uh, bad news. Oh, no. On a day, we learned that Justin Herbert's out for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Uh, come on. And we learned Malik Cunningham has gone from the Patriots sure. to the Ravens. Yes. Seems like a perfect fit, by the way. Yep. He's probably going to do really well there. Two oh. Louisville quarterbacks. Yeah. yeah no crush. A, a sweet boy. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Okay. Who was at the same gathering as uh, oh, geez. Good Boy. Oh, no. Zach Wilson. Mason Crosby has been cut from the Los Angeles. No Bring him home. Way. Bring him home. 
Whoa. What? What? Bring him home. Did they, what about did they activate him what about at all? Durs? Or no? No, they, they were thinking about activating him allegedly, and they stuck with Haversick Lucas, and then he goes three for three, including a game tire to send it to overtime as the clock is basically expiring in the fourth with that weather and conditions. He had, like, his best day. Good for him responded. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Good for him responded. That's not easy, you know, especially when a legend shows up like that. But I think what Mason proved was that his leg still – Still got it. Oh, yeah. You know, I think that was proved in this entire thing. Him just being a free agent now with a playoff run about to take place. And if you're a team, you know, that maybe has a couple question marks at the kicking position where it's like, are we going to allow this to be a reason why we don't, you know? And if you can if you can say, yeah, and just move along, okay. But if you say, no, we're not going to allow – it's like signing Mason Crosby – not only PR-wise, it's like you tried. Yeah, you signed. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. But also probably going to deliver. You think back at his time in Green Bay, he had like four bad games, five bad games. They yep. were bad. Oh, yeah. games. They were bad. But he was there for a thousand years. Always mm -hmm. bounced back, too. Yeah. Always answers. Mm -hmm. Athlete. Huge leg. Mm -hmm. Makes kicks. Kicked in Green Bay. That's a mm -hmm. the entire time. So, like, him at SoFi, it would have been like a dream for him. So, I'm excited that Mason Crosby is potentially – Going to find another home is go. what I'm thinking is going to take place. But also, I'm excited that that Lucas Haversick kid answered. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Congrats to him. <laughs> Mason Crosby on the streets again, though, AJ. I did not expect this, pal. Yeah, it would be interesting to see as the playoffs go. What, How is he still available? I don't know. Yeah. You want him at Green Bay, you said? Yeah. Dirt. Carlson's a good boy. He is a good boy. He's a sweet boy. He's a young boy. But uh, in just in terms of consistency, like because of, like four weeks ago, you know, it was like, hey, the Packers aren't going to make the playoffs. So like, who gives a shit? Let this guy kick. But like missing one last night, I don't think Crosby misses that one. Just, it just, I mean, him having played in Green Bay that long, like the way their offense is, like they can't afford to be missing kicks. And I know it's tough because I don't think Mason's probably kicking off anymore, and I don't. I, I'm pretty sure Durs is the kickoff guy. But bring Mason home, Durs. Yeah, mm -hmm. Anders Carlson, Durs. Okay, you call him Durs. Mm -hmm. Have to DC the Carlson kicking family. Yep. Obviously, one mm -hmm. that is very noted and successful. I couldn't believe that Mason Crosby what like openly wants gig, can't get one right now. That's wild. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, there are. Kickers are weird like that sometimes. All of a sudden, he's he's not in. Then say someone signs him, he does well. He could kick for another two or three years. Like that's what's weird. Ten, if you really. Yeah. I mean, Ten. who knows yeah. how long Mason's gonna last? But yeah, that's like Graham Gano. Graham Gano was on like four or five different four teams, I think, maybe five teams, before he gets to the Giants, and then it's like, all right, Pro Bowler, yeah. here's the spot. Yeah, guys, but they get into this like kicking carousel where you go, where you'll make a couple kicks, so you're on a team, and then you'll miss a couple kicks, and then the main guy gets back healthy, or maybe they release you and sign somebody else. Then you go work out for another team. Then you're up for a few weeks. Do you make? Do you miss? And then if you get hot, it's like, all right, now you got a job for the rest of your life. Like, you have a job for as long as you're hot. Go ahead and do it. Congratulations. It's a really cool thing, but it can also be incredibly stressful. But, like, it happens on a very regular basis. So the fact that Mason is in this kicking carousel and not getting picked up is alarming. Mm -hmm. It's wild to me. I'm like, yo, let's fuck. You know, we got Mackay, the highest paid kicker oh, yeah. mm -hmm. in the NFL. And there's been a lot of games this year, not this past one, but he just had a baby. So, you know, there's probably a lot going He's on. tired. He's tired, probably. And Cincinnati, not easy to kick at. But, like, that motherfucker did not miss. Correct. And it was fun. Yeah. Like, that, that's a really fun thing mm -hmm. whenever the kicker goes out there. Like, right now for the Browns, Dustin Hopkins, he's been on a bunch of teams. Yep. And now he's potentially found, like, maybe this is his home, like Washington was for a bit before he went to the Chargers. Now he's there. You think about Joey Sly. Joey Sly's been on, like, four or five different teams. It's like, you just try to get an opportunity, and then when you get there, you just got to get hot. Mason Crosby, who got to Green Bay, was hot forever. And then now he's like, I would like to go. And they're like, can't find a gig. That's wild. Like, Houston. No that's, what I, that's what I was going to say. No offense. Amendola, who right. is a he, same, has bounced around. It's like, you, you have a potential playoff team here, mm -hmm. and you got a guy, and in Houston, it's a dome. Yeah, proven. Is it the veteran men, maybe? Is that what it is, potentially, for Mason? Maybe, I guess, but if you, if you need weeks. a kicker, you do not mind paying veteran men. Yeah, it's four weeks left in the season. Especially those bubble teams. How old is he? 30. 38, probably, maybe 39. Oh, he said he's still hitting well, though. Mm -hmm. So that's all that matters. And he was pretty strong. Properly jogged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was a jocked boy. His, yeah. his, in his head, the way his fade was. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Huge. Big Salt neck, big pepper. head. 
He was having a good time too. He was. He was, he was good to see. Yeah. But yeah, he said he's still in his full work, still kicking yeah. the whole thing. All right, I hope he gets an opportunity. But congrats to Lucas. You know, because Mason Crosby showed up and he had his best game. Yeah. That's a dog. <laughs> that is a dog. What? Mm -hmm. All right, we got everything. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We got in the trenches. Yep. Coming up on the other side. And we haven't talked about the Herbert news yet or the Malik Cunningham news, really. Yep. I'm excited to hear your take on Malik leaving town. Yeah. And also, there's been some posts from some Patriots players, I mm -hmm. believe, wishing him luck on the way. And then Herbert out. Oh, oh no. And Dolphin Center tore his ACL. Oh, oh that's huge Connor loss. Williams. That's a Connor huge Williams. Loss. Huge. Huge oh, loss. Oh my god. And they already have, right? Some injuries. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a big loss. That's not good. He's I mean, he was playing very well. Absolutely too. massive. Yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote. Comp agrees what? with me too. That's it. Come no, he, he is home. Oh no. Oh, I no. am bummed out, folks. Bummed out. He is bummed out. Bummed oh, over. This is this is what happens. I finally started believing in this team. This is what oh, happened. I started watching exactly. Hard Knocks. Started saying we're going oh, to the, the Super Hard Bowl, curse. and now here we are. The Hard Knocks. I forgot. Hard, Hard Knocks, knocks. curse. They don't get them all bitch. tonight. Hard Knocks is on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, this is gonna be watching. Yeah, it should be a great episode. Hope you like it, America. You shouldn't watch this one. Can't wait to watch Hard Knocks, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. Sorry, yeah. Gump. Yeah. Let's get to a break. We'll talk about it all on the other side. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. Bye. Bye. I had no idea what to expect whenever I came out here to Utah. Yeah, don't get the shot. I can't make it. Steve Smith Sr. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Pac-12 champion, head coach of the Utah Buttes football team. Pulling in on a Harley Davidson Sportster, I do believe. Coach Kyle winning. Yeah. This is pounding up that I ain't even wish for None left over for y'all I'm locking the fridge door At the crib cutting hits I read through the catalog Came to conclusion No one's touching this Just finished the maiden voyage Hopping off the Mayfly Said I'm shot to kill them off Whatever the take down I seen the boats I'm at home I'm selfish with the goals I <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I mean, you gotta do it. I mean, I want you. It is 34 degrees out here in the back to back Pac 12 champions. The mighty Utah student section has been here in abundance. They've been loud in today's a day where they showcase to the world that it's not just Mormons and soaking in Utah. No, no. <laughs> It's great football and an incredible fan base. They've been so kind, I appreciate the hell out of you all. <laughs> Have you ever thought something negative about a kicker before in your entire life? Yes! All right, relax, dude. Okay. <laughs> Boston yeah. Connor was drinking with Dwayne Wade last night. $225,000. Let's remember this day forever, Cameron. That 29 out of the last 30 home games that happens right here at the University of Utah. The Utah Utes win. Cam Rising said yesterday, we don't lose at home. And today, they ain't losing. This place is going to be soaking in celebration this evening.
I am <laughs> jacked, dude. Lighting's wow. great. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Dan in Connecticut. Lovely place here on the Dano? 590 phone line. What's going on, Dano? Oh, what's up, Pat McAfee? Dan, you are it's too young to listen to this show. I can tell through, I think, well, how old I'm are you? I'm not Dan, I am Owen. Mitch. Mitch. Owen, how old are you? He's so different. I am at eight and a half. Oh, hey, that's a kid. Eight and a half. If you're okay. telling us you're half age, you're too young to be listening. That's a record. <laughs> Wait. What's on your mind, pal? What do you want to talk about, Owen? Um, I want to talk about how inspiring this show is oh, and how Owen. you're inspiring this whole entire world with how you're talking about sports and how you're talking about your life experience. Thank you, Owen. Owen, thank you. Love I you, Owen. Thank you, Owen. Owen. Owen, I'm taking oh, And also, fuck Boston. Oh! Oh! I will let Owen know, if you're still listening, Owen, Can't you're inspiring. You. Best kid ever. <laughs> Owen, the way you talk about sports is inspiring. Can't say that. Yes. I, I didn't know eight and a half oh. to do that. Is wow. That, shout out Owen. Time. That time. Go yeah. Owen. Hey, Owen. New generation in Connecticut, I guess. He was making me feel good, too, by the way. He was yeah. making me feel yeah. good, making the show feel good. He was talking us up. He was hyping us up, and then boom. Yeah. A little, was this Aristotle's brother? A little misdirection from Aristotle's <laughs> yeah. brother, Owen, eight yeah. and a half there. That was I'd, awesome. I'd say he put his balls on your forehead, but I don't think they dropped yet. So. <laughs> hey. Why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people! Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this, oh, it's a long one today. Tuesday, December 12, 2023. Hour 4 of the program starts now. Football! I think my mic went out. No, no, it was there. No, I, 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 I did. Uh, I did like those people in the bands driving uh, crooner that aren't blowing. Yep, yep. Oh. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boom. <laughs> what a, what a Emmy nominated. Yeah, damn right. Oh, That's AJ Emmy Hawk. Winning. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Carter and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the Hammer. Down. Cowboys Town Diggs is here. AQ Shipley and Darius J. Butler yes, combined twenty-one years of NFL experience. AJ played for another eleven years. That's thirty-two years. <laughs> And then I'll round it out to 40 years of NFL experience Hell right yeah. now nice. on this particular conversation. So whenever we chat about things, it matters. That's right. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, Malik Cunningham is now a member of the Baltimore Ravens. Ooh. Now, there was a time here not too long ago where there was a chance that Boston Connor was going to get bummed out about Malik mm -hmm. Cunningham playing because he might lead the Patriots to a win, oh, yeah. which would hurt their draft order this coming April for the New England Patriots that are already preparing to kind of tank, if you will, Bingo. fan base wise. They're one of only two teams that have been eliminated. So Malik Cunningham getting in there and winning for them would have been something that some Patriots fans wouldn't have liked, but they had that mindset that maybe he would be able to do that. He did not see the field. We have not, and now he's going to Baltimore Ravens, mm -hmm. which seems like a perfect fit for Malik Cunningham. Boston Con Man, I saw a couple Patriots post, uh, good luck over there where your skills are respected, I think is what yep. I saw Brown. from one, uh, Trent Brown. Yep on Instagram or whatever. What are your thoughts about this release? He was the highest paid undrafted guy that I'd ever heard of yes. to a team, to the Patriots. He's making more money than people that were getting drafted in the seventh round for his signing bonus. So, wild story up there in New England. Now he's in Baltimore. Yeah, wild. Well, I think he got three years, three mil, and it was like a $200,000 oh. signing bonus right off the bat. This, this undrafted. Undrafted. Oh, this was insane. the next day. That was the Monday after the draft was over. He was the first signing, so immediately when you see that, Belichick. 32 teams passed. Passed on him seven times. Then he <laughs> signed for a two hundred thousand dollars signing bonus, which I would assume is like sixth round, fifth round now at this stage, or maybe fourth. I don't know. I don't know where it is now. Hi. Yeah. But it, yeah, it could be. Yeah. It could be third round, whatever it is. Not normal for this to take place at all. So big expectations and maybe high hopes as well. Massive, especially with Belichick. Every single year, an undrafted player has made the New England Patriots roster, and that kind of looked to be him. Uh, he did get on the field for a couple games, but it was like three, four. $30,000 signing bonus, $200,000 guaranteed contract. Okay. Oh, there it is. 
$200,000 guaranteed, plus a $30,000 signing bonus. Does the $30,000 cut into the $200,000? We're not sure. Is it another hundred and seventy? dollars We don't know if that's an upfront or not, but $200,000 guaranteed, that is not normal to be made for somebody that goes undrafted around the NFL anyways. Yeah, and a lot of the free agents that we had gotten, the undrafted guys, uh, a la J.C. Jackson, he wasn't getting paid that when he was in New England on that first contract. But yeah, he got some snaps, about five or six, and it was basically just him handing the ball off. They never really let him try anything kind of that would be a Malik Cunningham a, a Ravens like a Lamar situation uh, I'm bummed just because of the fact that maybe next year Malik could have gotten his chance with New England because you know granted who knows what happens with Lamar but if he does get an opportunity he's unbelievable he, he was so good in the preseason and I know that doesn't correlate we don't know lot. we don't know yeah but usually it doesn't correlate because you're playing against me Ty and Diggs but still there was that opportunity <laughs> I'm glad that he hopefully will get that and to, to the very least, he's going to learn a shit ton from Lamar Jackson, more so than he even did at Louisville when they were, you know, one and two kind of. But I, it's a bummer. I'm glad he's gone just because now Jeez. just because now we can't use him. Mm -hmm. Now, now okay, there's, even, yeah. Yeah, there's not even a thought like, hey, Malik could come in if Zappi got hurt and fuck around and win the game, which he would do. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's part of the league. We're going to have a new quarterback next year. Who cares? It He has to be active now, right? Yes. Which is confusing because – they have Tyler Huntley and yeah. Josh Johnson, so he would be the fourth quarterback. So is he going to play a position other than quarterback potentially, or is this like a look at the future? Like, I don't know what Huntley's contract situation is like. Are they looking at him as the backup of the future, and they saw a chance to get him now? I talked about I talked about forty years of NFL experience, <clears> and two guys with none answered first, and they brought up some very good points. AJ Hawk, because whenever you get plucked off of. A practice squad. I think we just talked to somebody yesterday about this. Uh, yeah, it was a Schefter. Schefter, yeah. Schefter it, the rule used to be if you pluck somebody off a practice squad, they have to be active. It's three or four weeks. Yeah, and that was though. the exact thing that Schefter reiterated to us. Like, yeah, three or four weeks, he said. I forget what it was. So I think that's still the same rule. So this signing would tell us that that is the case. AQ Shipley, I'll, I'll go to you. You play for the Baltimore Ravens. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we watch the Baltimore Ravens. What does this mean? Tone Diggs asked a great question. What does this mean for the Baltimore Ravens? They have something up their sleeves. DaCosta and Harbaugh are always doing something to make the team better in some way, shape, or form. But I don't think it's going to be for another position. I think this is down the road. I really do. I think they're always mm -hmm. looking like, hey, how can we get better for the future? I think that's what the good teams do. The Ravens, all the good organizations that continue to see down the line. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what they're doing. They're seeing something down the line. What do you think about Malik? Obviously, Snoop made a Pro Bowl last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Snoop back up for Lamar. Obviously, yes, made a Pro Bowl started. last year. Started, won some games for him. Did yeah. their thing. Lamar's having a phenomenal mm -hmm. year. What do you think this is saying? Here? I mean, he was a problem in college. Haven't seen enough of him in the NFL to really have a real opinion on him. So, like AQ said, something uh, you would assume down in the future, or uh, if you throw that depth chart again, how thin are they at receiver right now? Is he? Can he be like somebody you? Could you imagine they put them like could Brad Smith package or something? Yeah, yeah. they are they are uh, pretty pretty slim, and um, he did get Cunningham did get reps at w receiver for New England. That is awesome to think. Like, yeah, because fourth, I mean fourth th is Huntley the third dealer? on the depth chart. Yeah, I believe Huntley only did a one year. Uh, you you got to assume they might have asked Josh thinking. Johnson, like, hey, what's the worst situation you've ever been a part of? And he was like, oh, well, I was on the Niners last year, and they didn't have a quarterback. So you should probably Couldn't get, throw a ball. Yeah, you should probably get one more. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a guy who can play wide receiver, too, if we need him. Josh had a really good preseason. Josh Johnson. Mm -hmm. There's The thing about preseason mattering is so fascinating, AJ. Yeah. Right now, it is so fascinating. Because, like, Kenny Pickett and that Steelers offense in preseason was – Lights out. Do you remember? Oh, Best yeah. in the league. Won't we'll ever forget. Oh, yeah. Explosive. Steelers fans were like, yup. Seven's coming home. Yeah. Yep. We got TJ Wout on the defensive side, and Cam's going to be here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Minka, the defense is going to be good. We ain't going, but did you see the offense? Oh, baby. The Pre draft. In every preseason game that happened, it was like, oh, no, they're getting better and better. Yeah. Kenny. And then the season started. Literally, the moment football started that mattered. It was just a different game. What happened? They played the Niners week one, and the Niners <laughs> ruined them. Yeah, yeah, there's a yeah. chance. Like, Niners do that to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just broke them, you think? Just emotionally, physically? <laughs> mm -hmm. The yeah. whole thing? They, they they went into the season with high, high aspirations, and then they played the Niners, and the Niners showed them what they are, and that ruined the entire year. Remember last year, oh, the thing with the Niners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's that? The, the teams who played the Niners last year, <laughs> Not the whole entire covered. thing was – 
the week after, those teams were like 0 and 16. Just demoralized. Yeah, yeah. yeah le- legitimately Eagles teams. What Eagles this year. Yeah, they just suffered the the yeah. wrath of it another week later. Yep. Just look in the mirror. Not nothing ever doing's right. God, they're good. <laughs> we're not gonna win. They're so no. much better than us. Why are we doing this shit? Why are we? <laughs> they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why? Hey, why aren't you like Kyle Shanahan? Why are we doing this? None of it's working. We, we did this last it's week. My favorite theory yet. Going up to your left tackle. Hey, can't you just play like Trent Williams? Can't you just do it? No, not only not only trying to mimic him, but it's like everything we were trying to do, like our greatest ideas, yep. just completely <laughs> smacked in the mouth mm-hmm. and bullied. Like and oh, bullied yeah. on top of it. And they danced in your face and they showed up in your house. And talking shit like mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be demoralizing, I guess. How about that is the Niners? Can't even have the security guard on the field anymore. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> Kill Big Dom. Yeah. Uh, the Justin Herbert uh, news obviously has ripple effects. Justin Herbert will be out for the rest of the season because of an injury to finger and throwing hand after also having one in his other hand. Max Duggan. He's Boom. getting elevated to the Los oh, yeah. Angeles Chargers Hell active yeah. Yeah. roster. Come on, Duggan. Yeah. Hey, listen, we don't have to tell you about Max Duggan. No. But if you forgot, he put a team on no. his back and ran with it mm-hmm. all the way to the national championship. Know what happened there? Don't talk about it. No, uh, they made it there. They got Niners. We were yeah, they did. Yeah, we were there. We certainly were there. Ooh. This Max Duggan guy, though, grew up near a railroad track. That's yep. right. Dog. Got benched. Mm-hmm. Was a starter. Got benched. Just waited his turn. And then when he got in there, want bananas. Mm-hmm. Connor, this Max Duggan guy is a real story. A real dream come true. And now he's on the active roster over there. Good for Max Duggan, dude. Yeah, I'm assuming that Chargers fans are probably pretty bummed out right now because they know if they get to Duggan, Duggan's going to win out. Like, there's a chance now, I think, that this guy can lead this Chargers team. Honestly... They the Chargers should think about firing oh, Byron Staley look at right that. now. Head fake. Make Duggan mm. the head coach of the mm. Los Angeles <laughs> yeah. Chargers today. Yeah, Duggan's Duggan's out of Iowa. He's Lum- an Iowa boy. Lumbering around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Heart surgery came back. Mm. Ooh. He's tough. Mentally tough. Physically tough. Oh, yeah. Now he's now he's acting. Now he's getting paid more money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Happy for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very happy for him, AJ. Legitimately. Yeah. Also, Malik going to be getting playoff checks now as well with the Raiders with the Ravens. Congratulations, Ooh, Malik. Yeah. I mean, congratulations. Kind of That's big blow. money right yeah. there. What's that? Kind of a low blow. Didn't need to bring it up, but yeah, sure. What Malik Cunningham? Yeah. Plus, I mean, what if AJ jinx him? What happens if they end up cutting Malik Cunningham? Then oh, so you league? got you said low blow because of Malik Cunningham, not because he was implying that the Patriots weren't going to make the playoffs. No, that is why. Oh. But, but now I'm parlaying it into the fact that he might have jinxed Malik Cunningham. Huh. Well, he's got to be on the roster for the rest of the season, it sounds like, right? Yeah, if, it's if he's, we if he's on the Game roster, checks. they can still cut him, right? They just can't put him on practice squad. Oh. I don't know how that works. Me neither. Still gets his four game checks or three game, game checks. checks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it four or three? We've said them oh. both. I thought it used to be three, but I do not know. Me neither. COVID changed everything, I feel It did like. used to be three. Okay, and, so that, we'll... and that guaranteed you a year towards your pension. So that was a win. Oh, four games. Yeah, three. I think three used to, right? Uh, three and a four. It's supposed to be when you once you start that fourth. Once that fourth game begins and you're on the active roster for that game, that's supposed to be like an accrued season, I believe. Yeah, but credited as three. Boys, that's for the four hundred one k matching. Sure, oh. sure. And yeah. everything down the line. He's been mm-hmm. active already this year too, so he's already got a couple Over under there. his belt. Okay, so he's got an accrued year. Yeah, vested. Go for sure. Let's go. Well, he's big business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big business. Going to an offensive system, too, that might, you know, promote work. what he's about. That's what Trent Brown said. Yeah, mm-hmm. it'd work for him perfectly. Yeah. I mean, granted, hopefully he never touches the field because of the Ravens, because they obviously. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't. And no ill wishes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. We want Lamar to be healthy. Roll him into some special teams. Get him into yeah. some special teams trickery. They, they will. The Ravens will do yeah. that. The Ravens special team so sound. Just like so, so sound. The punt that Stott sent to the Rams. In the fur uh in overtime when they got it also down the middle, very unexpected from Baltimore, because yeah. like Baltimore is like so good. They're coveraging it like so good. Mm-hmm. Right there. Yeah, they're the punter always gonna be good for Baltimore. Kicker always gonna be good. Coverage units always gonna be good. Return game always gonna be lethal. It's like they're very sound over there. I would assume that they will put Malik Cunningham somewhere. You know what I mean? 
Like they got to figure something out to use him. Have to put, put in the Kelsey play, line him up yeah. at receiver, and have yeah. him fucking throw in. Boom! Back to Odell, saw. hooking or, ladders now. Yeah, exactly. getting called into everything. Mm-hmm. That would be fantastic. You guys would be fucked, right? Because rally to the ball. Well, we can't rally. Yeah, the ball. That, yeah. Think about when, see, when I watch that Kelsey play. If that's something that's actually implemented, and people copy it. It's gonna be tough because now it's almost like um, when we used to practice it, the last half, play of the half, or usually the game where you're throwing it back and ladder, and you got to stay as wide as the widest. I mean, that's ridiculous. Like, that's rugby that's all on, of a sudden. On Tony over there. Now you you can't rally to Kelsey. Like, that's crazy. I love that old buddy didn't know he was throwing it. He's like, oh, shit. This yeah. guy, he's mm-hmm. going to block the, trying to block a pass mm-hmm. 30 yards down the field yep. for a lateral. It's it's smart. I, I, I assume there will be a time where this is more normal. Most coaches are too scared for that, though. I mean, so, you got you to gotta have, I mean, yes, so unbelievable goes back. trust. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable <laughs> trust in Kelsey to make that throw. If it gets bad, we saw what happened with uh, that Chandler Jones and uh, yeah, Jacoby yeah, Myers. Yeah. Jacoby Myers, yeah. like, uh, Another rogue agent. it's just so much that can oh, go wrong. Oh, Mac when... Jones. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Six Josh Allen had one, too. Um, the, the pass rusher, Josh Allen, for the Jaguars. Yeah, he oh, just took, picked uh, off, when he we were in New York. Boy. Yeah, when we were in New York, yeah, Tyler, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah he, he intercepted right a double pass that the Bengals tried to run, and Tyler yeah. Boyd just threw it right back to him. Yeah, it was awesome. Those even defensive all. coaches get pit. You know, Rex Ryan used to love it. Like when his guys used to be out there pitching the ball back. Even Ed Reed, the Baltimore guys, they would pitch it back. But most coaches, a hey, we got the ball. Yeah, we got the ball. Take care of it. And if they we're throwing the ball. We want the guy we're paying forty million dollars to. Earn. I always had a dream that there'd be a kickoff return where they try the throwback thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you and I'm staying down. I'm hiding <laughs> like, down. Yes. I'm hiding down the opposite <laughs> side. You know, we used to. They used to try to practice it against us every time. I'm trying to. I'm <laughs> wait. I'm getting a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Right that is my entire. Oh my god! And then the, the worst thing that could happen is it's right out of my reach. Oh no! Yeah. And then. Gone. Oh no! Yeah. Worst moment of all time. Instead of greatest, but yeah, that whole we don't have to do this. <laughs> this is the most. He just one. he smooshed Mac right into the ground. Pick. Yeah, skate, get out. You get, oh. and then he almost steps on his face. That was yeah. the end. Yeah, I was gonna say, what did Mac Jones say to him? All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, I had mean? to. I got upset. Okay. What do you mean? Felt like you guys were attacking me. Yeah, it felt like I had. I was in a corner, and when you're in a corner, you got to put your dukes up. Especially when you're a wolf of the type. Angle. Of a- yes. So sorry. I said well, that. did. I see you guys trying to find the ten wolves during the break. Yeah. Did and how we do? Did we I find mean, it? It's like the back of a cereal box. Yeah, it's tough. There's a few tough ones on there. Bind the eyes. You can get them. I only got six. Uh, so it's, it's, it's forced. Did it tell you that on the tag or something, Colin? That, Why did you say there's 10 wolves? Because, yeah, the, the shirt is called the 10 wolf shirt. What if there actually isn't, though? I mean, I don't know. There's that's, one on the moon. That's for me to know and you to find out. Yeah, I do see a guy on the moon. Is there one on the inside? There's one down there. They're all inside. Yeah, I see them all. Yeah, in, I see these, in these particular games, normally you got to zoom out a little bit, too. You know, in these pictures. particular. Is this the red dress, oh, gold dress thing or whatever? No, 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 no this is not that. All purple. These are, these are like Yarnies. little games. You remember the bar games there used to be? Oh, yeah. Photo hunt? Yeah. Oh, I love mm-hmm. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Erotic photo hunt? Yeah. What's that? All right, Nick, we didn't need you What's rocked that, up at the bar. There yeah. was boobs, and you had to find the difference in the boobs. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it is true. Be like, oh, the picture the on the difference? left, he has a nipple on her forehead. Yeah. Fucking hit that, circle it. <laughs> yeah. you know. It was down there at the O, too. They had, yeah. That was the first ones I seen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this one waxes. That one doesn't. <laughs> what games are you? Yeah, what I'm what porn bars what are you guys going games to? Are these? these are at very <laughs> just regular uh, every bars. normal bar. Normal bar. You, you could actually play like you know that. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, uh, the Whack a Monkey. Oh, yeah. what a game! You know Classic. That, game? Yeah. that was a great game. Yep. They don't have them at bars anymore. I don't know why, because they're just everyone's got, them out. Yeah. everyone's got game on their phones, so you don't have to have games. On it the was like phone games, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. At the bar. You never saw that? You never saw those? Whack-a-mole? Like at Chuck E. Cheese? Photo hunt. You no, mean like, like the little thing that's on the booth? Like the little no, thing that's no, 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 in no. a booth? This is no. at, like, if you're looking at a bar, like, it's always on the corner of the bar. It looks like a... Old yeah, school square like, TV. Okay. Yeah, it's like a 13-inch yeah. old computer school TV. Like a, like a bowling screen. alley. Yeah. 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 But there's also bigger ones, too. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah just High quality. Yeah. Nice the ones, basketball yeah. game where you're shooting three-pointers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've been in there. Oh, yeah. It was a good time. Yeah, those games were the shit. They were back in... They used to have Kino, too. Uh, what are you talking Golf about? No, not there. Golden Tee. Oh, okay. That's what I'm talking about. How are you? Golden Tee pretty good? Shuffleboard? No. Not going to Golden no, no, Tee? No, no. I 
I don't play it much. There's like little cheats. Oh, you yeah. used to have one at your house. You still no, got it? Yeah. Uh, it's probably somewhere. Yeah. I, I did not get rid. I would not get rid of it. Yeah. What's the cheat? Sure. What's that? What's the cheat? The cheat. Like you go like I don't know. I haven't played in years. But like you go like completely sideways and then you shoot like a different way and yeah. it just like you slaughter the perfect. Ball. You hit it so far. You hit it like four hundred yards every time. Yeah. And then the putting one, there's a cheat too mm -hmm. for that whole thing. Buck Hunter was the best game though. Buck Hunter was a good one on there. Loved that. The bowling on there was pretty sweet too. Mm. Bowling used to be yep. good on the the thing. Do we hang out at bars too much? No. Did you hear the conversation we just had? Here? That's, that's just, our parents' fault. That's just what you did. Yeah. 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 Okay. Pretty good at billiards too. Why? Well, because well, they're just there. Sometimes you're bored. Mm -hmm. Darts. Yeah. Yep. Darts. Yep. Darts are fun. Yeah. How are you at darts, AJ? I've gone through like um, you know different times where I got deep into darts, and I was, it was I'm either in or I'm out. I've had to, you know where I've gotten the the board, the electronic board that I keep track. I love playing. Uh, what are the games called? I forget the one I always like. 301, 501, cricket. Yeah. Cricket there. Cricket. I like playing cricket. Yeah, Knock back out. in college, I had a little run of that. Boom. There's the mega, knockout. There's the mega, the mega touch smash. max. That's what we're talking. Oh, about. Oh yeah, okay. these yeah these are still big in Ohio. Really? You never saw somewhere. One. You literally yeah, said you saw one. I'm somewhere. Sure. No, somewhere. you said whatever the whack a monkey game you were talking. I don't know what that is. Uh, action down there, lower right corner. Yeah. You see that lower right corner mm -hmm. action? See the erotic tab? That's where the uh, photo. Oh yeah. <laughs> it really is an erotic tab. Yeah, dude, this is just on bars like at restaurants. Yeah, that's sick. Just standard operating procedure. Four yeah. of them, like boom, bang, pow. Yeah. If this one's taken, go to this one. If this, you go over here, if you need to. Oh, this one's out of, out of order. Don't worry, we mm -hmm. got three others. Yeah, that was real. Yep. Something. Another thing, phones took away, huh? Uh huh. Yeah, phones just did that. Like, hey, we'll do a spot uh, 10, 000, just a thousand times over. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll just put it in your pocket. We need upgrades, though. We need, you know, isn't it time about time for the yeah. next? It is. Yeah. Don't you think? That's what this one's supposed to be. This, the audio. Innovate. Audio is next level. Airdrop is next level. It's amazing what's happening. Mm -hmm. Just the whole thought. Like, FaceTiming is so stupid. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand how it happens. It's crazy. I'm sitting in the middle of a fucking field somewhere or a parking lot, and then I'm just able, like, I was up in Foxborough just sitting in the middle of the parking yeah. lot, and then I just FaceTime my wife, who's, you know, back here in Indiana mm -hmm. or whatever, and as it's happening, I'm like, this is so fucking dumb. Like, 4K image right there, oh, hear yeah. everything, see everything with what she was going through. It was obviously a big deal, like, emergency situations. Like, back in the day, could not happen. No. You know what I mean? Like Even a phone is, call. We're in a crazy, yeah. we're in a crazy time. Let's make sure we enjoy it and not abuse it. Enjoy it. That's, That's right. Abuse it. We, used really. it. we used to see it on like a little movie cartoon here and there. Somebody just pops up on the screen talking to him. Like, oh yeah, that never happened. Mm -mm. That's our generation though, I think. We're like the last ones mm -hmm. that uh, high school didn't have internet on phones. Correct. No. Oh. And if you did a good thing. accidentally hit the internet button on your phone, oh, you boy. had to exit out immediately because that was $400 a minute. <laughs> yeah, $79.99 on the next bill. <laughs> That's and, fucking crazy. The that... coach was not going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> coach yeah. was not going to be Run an extra sprint. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> looking up nudes. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. <laughs> Anyways, it's a good time. We I'm try right. to enjoy it. Let's not abuse it, though. In the future, sounds crazy. Though. These AIs. Yeah, just wait. What? Lots going to change. I heard the new uh, meta ping pong is great. Yeah. Hmm. Somehow, I Ooh. bet that got better. I heard the new virtual reality ping pong. 11 is the name of the game. Okay. Yeah. I heard it, it's gotten even better. I've, I've been watching some videos. Believe it. 11 has gotten a little active on their social media again for the first time in a couple of years. Okay. I've been seeing some videos. I've been seeing some updates. Sent them a message. I'm like, excuse me, what's going on here? They're like, oh, yeah, we got good. we got real good. Okay. Yes. I'm like, okay. This is how the future's creating cool stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. There will be some bad things, but the cool things will outweigh them, hopefully. A ping pong. It's that time of year, too. Can't go outside. Let's play ping pong. People in warm climates will never understand it. Right. Never. Some places. Oh, d -Bus probably never. got a tea time for Love Thursday. Christmas. Get a bubble hockey machine. Christmas, just the bubble hockey. toys. Get a bike. Go outside, ride it, whatever. It's the best. We do that in the snow, D-Butt. Yeah. Yeah. Sled. Suck snow, it. Snowboard. Um, Tough guys. <laughs> no. Because you have, you have to. <laughs> yeah, no choice. Other option. <laughs> tough. Yeah, you guys are real yeah. tough. You get in ping pong ever? No, nah, I never got good. It's one of those things, like kind of like Call of Duty. You get, a, you get in, the, in there with a ringer, and it's just like, yeah, I'm not good at this. I'm cool. I just learned. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, cool. there's spins and shit. Yeah, I'm, good. I'm, I'm like playing the Niners. Yeah, that's what happened to the Steelers. This, this is 11. This is Ooh. the game. It's really good. These two stink, but is like. Is the same game, <laughs> game you're I not used a, to play? You're with? not a cat yeah. head anymore? 
It is? Yeah. They said it looks it, way different. They said it got better. They, they said it's gotten much, much better. Way yeah, you different. need a cat head, bro. Yeah, Wait, why? Is this a new Oculus, though? Is this Oculus 2.0? No. Three. I think it's three, actually. I think it's the third one. Uh, that one looks much bigger than... 11 table tennis. Yeah. When are we going to be able to just have glasses or even something small? So there's Meta. a sport one here. There's They do have those, I think, already. But there's like a sport quest that Zito got me for, I think, my birthday or something. Like, I appreciate you, Zito, because I box in there and everything like that. And it's like a sportier version one. But, like, I could see out the bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was not, like, the that glasses. Yeah, like, yeah. the glasses, I don't think, what, I think it has to be pretty... Pretty big. Isn't mm -hmm. Apple making the very skinnier ones, like the, uh, oh, the yeah. goggles? They are making the smallest ones. Oh, They're, like pit vipers? Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, there is a way. I actually just got a new pair of uh, sunglasses that they could use that format that would encapsulate your entire eye. Yeah, because they have those biker glasses, obviously. Yep. That, like, obviously... Yeah, in the pit vipers, like you mentioned, they, they, they're they here to hear. Skydiving sunglasses yeah. are what you need, I think. Those Even just work. like those goggles that you go yeah, swimming swim in. Swim goggles, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to have the full... Mm -hmm. These, right here. These, the virtual reality glasses that I had when I, my eyeball was up. Look, yeah. see, yeah, it covers everything. What about the bottom, though? I mean, I can see at the bottom. We could do, put it some rubber gaskets here maybe to go against mm -hmm. my skin so I can't get, see the light. Okay, which Zito actually did for this, by the way. I was mm -hmm. like, I, I keep seeing it. I'm getting kind of sick. And the next day, it's from Amazon. He was like, let me sure. check this out. Good? Yeah. I'm like, Zito, you're a fucking weapon, mm -hmm. first of all. But that's how it should come. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why. For sure. You should put those back on. Would you do it if it was <laughs> contacts? Huh? Would you do it if it was contacts? And it takes like... Oh, oh, I'll God. try it. You would? A hell that, I mean, that's the future. Hell Your future no. phone is going to be a contact or something that just mm -hmm. kind of sees everything while you're living life. I got LASIK, so I didn't have to deal with contacts yeah, anymore. Dude, I would not do that. Contacts are then scanning really? your eyes, right, Connor? No, yeah. no, it's not even about the scanning because they're already doing that with the iPhone. It's more so about the fact that, like, if, the, if anything were to sh sort, short circuit oh. in your eye, then I I'm assuming you're there'd dead. be problems. Dead. Dead? You're yeah. Dead. I mean, eyes, if there was just a little your flicker. Your eyes close to your brain. Yeah, electrical currents going right to your this brain. Is, Boom, you're dead. Don't do it, AJ. You just said, I want to do that. Don't do that. Yeah. I don't want to do, I don't want to be the first person that tries it, but after, you know, 70, 100,000 people try it and they don't die or they do, maybe I'll be next in line. Million, 3 million people <laughs> 70, try it. 100,000. That's a lot. I think he's 72, 100,000. So, like, if 85,000 people or 82,000 people were doing trying mm -hmm. it, AJ would be like, you know what? Give me some of his contacts. Yeah, Good enough sample it, size. Give me out of here. I want to go be Ready Player One real quick. Mm -hmm. Nope. Ready Player One didn't do contacts. They they stayed with the with the cool thing. They did a great. Face. That was a great movie. Great movie. We'll yeah. here, so. I mean, it's based out of Columbus, Ohio. Really? The future uh, capital of the technology world. We learned about a movie today. I think we should all watch and see our right. thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned about Aaron Rodgers' recovery. He never really gave you a date, although I think the twenty fourth was probably. What it was, don't you think, AJ? Yeah, what, who, uh, what, Sala did not know anything about that? Who, who put that out? Yeah, I don't know. I was, I was trying to see if you would right there. I, thought, I don't know. I, I was trying he to get kind of referenced that last week in studio with us. That, that was like his initial, mm -hmm. he was thinking, like, hey, around Christmas. Oh, and obviously, yeah, yeah. like, it wasn't going to happen, but I'm pretty sure he told us that. And okay. they opened their window, so it's 21 days. And then a report usually the... comes out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, so and so says this is the date. What are you saying? What are you saying about the report? That's just what happens. Hmm. And history. He's the source. Just hmm. saying. Yeah, and they needed to put him in the active roster before the 24 because his window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they, they could not have him dressed for like a week or two or whatever the case is, however long they were saving him for. Yeah. Right. That, but the 24th felt like. It was the, it was the end of that. 24th time. felt like the one when we were just kind of looking at it with the pipe dream of what it could be. And then uh, could you have fucking fathom if he did that? That'd be awesome. Still a chance, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. still think he's gotten this far where it's like, even if he doesn't play, I think athletes can still look at him and be like, I could I could come back. Mathematically eliminated, right? You know what he said, AJ? Yes. I don't remember. You tell me. Yeah, but they're not technically. Right. They're, uh, I saw him on a graph. Got to keep winning. This is I'm on set. Why not? Yeah, just yeah, keep right playing there. that way. Who they got? Somebody's got to win. So we have we have graph a bunch of the graphics for the rest of their. Do we upload the AFC East future uh, records or schedules? No, the AFC East one. There's another one in the group text. I think from Dirty AFC East. That Looking for it. Yeah, you got it. That, their, uh, their last four. They're at Miami, home against the Commies, at. 
Cleveland at New England. Win them all. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers jogging back on that field. I mean. <laughs> you think he just has that video on loop at his mm-hmm. house whenever he walks in? Yeah. Background on his phone. Triple A and him are just getting after it right in front of that video, just running on the yeah. window, the, mm-hmm. one of the yep. windows he lives in. This Triple A guy has gotten a lot of pub. Yes. Rightfully so. I couldn't even fathom what people think of this guy who have never seen him or met him or anything like that. Just think weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's all you need to think. Right. Yeah. Larger than you. So I didn't talk to him about him being jacked. I asked how I could be more jacked at the party, and he gave me a whole thing. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, Foxy got the secret sauce. Yeah, yeah, I did. What is it? Well, he told me, he asked me what my routine is. I said, I run a mile. And then he said, stop running a mile. You got to go sprint, sprint, mm-hmm. sprint, yes. sprint. Yeah. And that's all I got out you of it. Any big long distance runner? He said, forget about it, kid. You got no fucking shot. Yeah. Triple <laughs> 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 A did not say that. <laughs> no, he did say Triple A believes in everybody. He, he does. Like, yes, he does. Foxy, I'll tell you a little more, but it's going to be 1099. And after that, then I <laughs> that's can... not how AAA works. No, I know he doesn't. Uh, AAA ain't car salesman. He is body guru though. He is. Yeah, he is body guru. Yeah. and he is properly jocked. Mm-hmm. You don't want to wrestle him. He's no. former he wrestler. Can, yeah, he can jump over islands on jet skis as well. If you coax him into it. Yeah, and then he will immediately throw you under the bus to the next <laughs> Snitch on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but two buddies were These guys on. made me do it I didn't want to Bro we are terrible Fucking people though Like if you look back On that situation It was fun for everybody though Everyone <laughs> Everyone consented Everyone said yes We would love to see you Go everyone jump consented. That thing on a jet ski Don't know how to explain The situation Without telling the whole story Don't want to do that But anyways Most jacked guy of all time Is on a jet ski In the lake In front of where we're staying. Doing gainers. And he's jumping this thing. He's a professional fucking jet ski rider. Yeah. So there was a floating thing on the water. Uh, Turns out it was the neighbors. We didn't know where the fuck. How do we know? We don't live there. We have no idea. It was a floating thing. Looked a little soft. We're like, can you think you could jump that thing over top of that thing? No, I think we said, there's no way you could jump that thing. There's no way, Triple A, you could do that. I think we led to it with him going, let me go take a look at it. And obviously he was the only one on the jet ski, so he had to go look and come back. He was mm-hmm. like, it's pretty big. And then we got into the, no yeah, way. You don't yeah. stand chance. No <laughs> chance. That. Nobody could do that, though. It's impossible. No human on earth could do that. He created his own way. Yeah. Yeah. He started he doing did. donuts. He did. He did. Yeah. And then, like, pushing the lake at it. And then he would zoom into a rock almost. Yeah. And then fly back. And he was just trying to jump over this yeah. thing. Off his own wave. It was absurd. And then uh, the neighbors came. Hey! In a, ro- <laughs> in a rowboat. Hey! In a rowboat. <laughs> a little rowboat. <laughs> And they strapped this thing to their, yeah. mm-hmm. to their like it was like a canoe, and they pulled it out of the water right in front of our face. <laughs> oh yeah! Like as we were all big fuck you. Oh, it was so uncomfortable. Like it was so <laughs> uncomfortable. We were like, all right, well we're gonna go upstairs. You know, mm-hmm. like sorry. Well, actually, I think we did a couple sorry about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So sorry, we did not know that. We didn't break it. Obviously, Triple A got over top of it. Would have got another one, but they got it out of the way before we could break it. <laughs> That's right. Triple A would then go apologize to the family, he told mm-hmm. us. And then he would tell them that we were coaxing him into doing it. Which? He felt obligated. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and we're sitting there like, you, you kind of threw us over buses. No, I didn't. What? I didn't mean to. Kind of, Triple A is a fucking beast on that jet ski. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's an animal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. We have footage of Boom. Triple A. No. Jumping. Boom. <laughs> Listen to Gumpecker. There's the ways he created. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Is this when he almost dies? Yep. Oh, hey, jet ski's going down. into pier. Oh. Oh, jet ski's about to go into yep. pier. Oh. Yeah, he had to hightail it after. <laughs> and there's obviously the situation. Yeah, that's... Good find. Whoever found oh. that. He had to come in and put a, a life jacket on after this one, I believe. It was awesome, dude. What a stupid life we live. Mm-hmm. It is so dumb. That fucking thing right there floating there might be worth forty five thousand dollars. That's how, that's how the neighbors were out. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's an expensive if. little dock. Yeah, and that boat right there was never used. Nope, not one time. Nope, nope. Tried to use it, didn't work. Battery's dead. Was See how fast means. he was, that was swimming to get to that thing. Yeah, he's triple oh, yeah. A, bro. Holy he knew. Shit. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's triple A. He, he's literally. You see him. It's like that's not real. It's Jason Momoa. Dockway. 
But yeah, from Aquaman. Yeah. Not like Jason Momoa. Have you seen Jason Momoa? Oh, yeah. No, what happened? He's a fucking tank right yeah, now. He's, oh, yeah, really? he's shredded up, right? He's probably training. Well, he's, he's, he's a movie big. coming up? Yeah, he's, yeah. I think he's just a tank. Like, I don't know if he's shredded. I think he's just a fucking house. He's right huge. Now. Yeah. I don't know if he has a new movie. He does. Yeah, Aquaman he does 2 Aquaman comes too, out in like two weeks. Yep. Bro. It's going to fucking stink. <laughs> yeah, this is Whoa. the. No, no, this is the movie where Momoa was showing up, boozed up. <laughs> they gave up on it halfway through it. What? What's that? They gave up on the movie halfway. That Connor just said Momoa was dressed up as Johnny Depp on the set to mess with Amber yeah, Heard. Yeah, like they, they didn't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah, he was all boozed what? up. Oh, was yeah. he really? These yeah. are reports. Yeah. These are reports. This is not like fucking around. <laughs> there, there are reports about how he would yeah, he's show a up reeking a booze, dressed as Johnny Depp, talking like Johnny Depp to fuck with Amber Heard. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. wow. TC should beat their ass for that. Yeah. When, when's the movie come out? Soon. Soon, December. Was it Sunday Night Football? There was a commercial. Uh, one of the studios has three movies coming out, and that was one of them. Okay, so we got big movie time coming up. Always is around Christmas. Yeah. Yep. The oh. uh, new Paul Giamatti Christmas movies getting like ridiculously good reviews as well. That's not recent, oh. right? I, I don't think that's recent. I do, from what I've seen. Hair looks shorter. Looks kind of skinny there too. Yeah. Shred it up. Shred it. Shred it. Shred it. Absolutely shred it. Absolutely shred it. Skinny. You know Roman Reigns. You know he has the Momoa look. He does. Mm -hmm. He is awesome. Yeah. Just everything he's got going on. Give him some lines, damn it. What do you mean? Next movie he's in, give him some freaky lines. He was in Hobbs and Shaw. He didn't have any fucking lines. He's a professional wrestler. He's the greatest of all time. Okay? he's. I uh, agree. He doesn't have time to do movie lines. No, but you, He was doing a favor to The Rock there. Then don't give him lines. Just let, let the tribal chief be the tribal chief. And whatever he says, he says. Just put it in the fucking movie. I agree. Let's go in the trenches, shall we, to wrap up this glorious Tuesday? Hell yeah. You're right. Let's if he's gonna be in a movie. Just let him yeah, hey, Roman, if you got anything to say, just fucking do it <laughs> and we'll we'll run with it. Done. Whatever you think we should add, mm -hmm. <clears throat> add it. In the moment. Yes. Yeah, he could have just done that. Yeah. And they'll be like, holy shit. We I mean, are the ones. I mean, he played his part. He did get a good spear in, in the rock yeah. movie. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He did, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean he's not the rock though, so yeah, when he's doing the spear stuff, it's like, yeah, but do we? Like when he's he needs to be the tribal chief. He doesn't he doesn't need to be Roman Reigns. Yeah, think about that one. I don't think I fully understand. This is pre Roman's addition of forty pounds of muscle as well. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. look at the Rock. Though. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Rock is such a specimen. You want to take lines away from the guy on the right? It's me. No, no, I didn't say that. No, that's the Rock. That would be The Rock. That's As, The Rock? Rock's like, is he like 50-something years old? Yeah. Uh, we should look that up. He was incredibly kind to us. He was, yes. Either way. He's he gives man. a lot of people he, a lot of hope. 51. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say 51? That. A lot of hope? I don't know if that's what anybody else is going to look at no. 51. But no. Like no. Think, but I, uh, <laughs> right. like, no, I don't right. think, think that thought has kind of been circulated. Well. I don't know if anybody's having that. Maybe you, AJ's yeah. having that. Yeah. Yeah. You and Bob. Which I appreciate. I do appreciate. But like. Jeez. That's traps. Remember, his, like, big story is that him and his dad used to actually just, like, go to the gym as mm -hmm. a kid. So, you know how they tell a story about Bill Gates being, living and growing up near the only computer. Going to the gym with his dad, right? Both He did, too, didn't he? The no. mental gym. <laughs> the mental gym. Are we gym. talking young rock right now? No, I'm talking about the I outliers. thought when he was young, though, no, his Bill. training was serious, Bill Gates. I mean, maybe. Uh, on the computers or in the gym? No, in both. Weight room and computers. He got away from the weight room as he grew older, I yeah. guess. Yeah, he was preparing for those pool parties, obviously, as a child. But he was also mm -hmm. grew up very close to, like, one of the only computers in the United States of America. So... If he doesn't live there, does he come on to be Bill Gates? It's like The Rock's dad was like one of the most jacked guys, and he was just working out with him as a kid throughout his whole time. And obviously The Rock's very thankful for that, but it's going to be hard to catch up to The Rock. I think if anybody's trying to yeah. look like yeah. The Rock, his muscles just were... Because he got thin at one point it's when he went jeans. to Hollywood. Good mm -hmm. jeans in there, too. For the Tooth Fairy. Yeah, he looks better now. He looks better now than when he was 40. Much better, yeah, but he got like real small and then he built himself back up. It's like his muscles remembered. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they knew. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. they knew what hibernation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we're fucking bigger than everybody else is. Yeah. <laughs> and he could fish too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He could do anything. That Outliers book talks about <laughs> a lot of that stuff. Like they talk about how uh, Italians in the Pittsburgh area, a lot of them got there because the their home in Italy, when they migrated, it was very similar to the landscape that they lived in in Italy. Mm, it's really? Like, yeah, some of the information in there is next level. Like oh, yeah. hockey players in Canada. Like if you're born oh, no. before mm. April 1st, your odds of making the 
Canadian national team are way higher than if you're born after April 1st because, like, the birthday cutoff is there. So, like, if you're born April 10th, then you're the youngest kid in that next class versus if you're born January 1st, you're the oldest motherfucker that's going to be on the team. Got you. It's weird. They, like, go through all the – And that probably as a kid, if you make those teams, probably stick with it a little bit more. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and those are, like, the kids that – like, the Crosbys and a lot of NHL guys are on those teams. Speaking of, Connor Bedard takes on Connor McDavid tonight. Oh, baby. Here we go. Here we go, boys. Cannot wait. Jack. 10 o'clock yeah. Eastern, AJ. You watching? Definitely. Yeah, I'll watch. There's a chance I see a little bit of it. I'm going to say that. Okay. There's there a chance go. I see a little bit of it. Okay. I will catch up with what happened tomorrow morning. Yep. I will give it a rating, okay, because I appreciate that this is happening. Mm-hmm. Now I like that it's on ESPN. There's no chance in fucking hell no. I am going to make it to the end of that game. No, no, no. The uh, also so it's normal hockey lines are one and a half. The puck line is one and a half. It's very very rare. It's two and a half. Uh, so that means that Edmonton is supposed to win by seven thousand goals tonight. Yeah, mm. is well, that what that means, Frank? Who are we betting on here? Because aren't you hot in hockey? Is he hot in hockey still? Yeah, uh, you can't bet a minus five hundred game. Yeah, this one would be no play. I haven't touched it. I'd bet on McDavid or Bedard to score in this game, but I wouldn't touch any of the lines. I'm oh, both sure. of them to score, yeah. right? Parlay, both of them together. Yeah. Because the boys are going to want to show the other. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Of whose barn it is. Mm -hmm. I'm the real car. And I'm not talking about their bingo. And I'm not just talking about the barn in Edmonton. I'm talking about NHL, the barn. Exactly. A lot of horses in those stables. Mm -hmm. Two Connors. I mean, tonight. McDavid Hattie is the bet. Like, oh, you want to be the next great Connor? Yeah. Just wait. You think Hattie? I think Hattie for McDavid. He's been on fire. I like that. Good odds. Putting the team on his back. Probably not. PK said they absolutely fucking suck, though. The start of the year, they were terrible, fired hot, their no. coach, and now McDavid is fucking cooking. I love that. Um, I also love that we're trying to promote the game. And PK was like, 31st team in the league. Yeah. Taking on this <laughs> they don't have team. I'm like, PK, right, it's a good game. It's, good game. it's going to be a good game. He goes, it's Connor and Connor, yeah, worth yeah. the watch. I'm just telling you how it is. He's awesome. PK's awesome. Big fan. I really enjoy yeah. him. He's really good on TV, like talking about hockey. I think he does a great job of explaining it to someone like me that doesn't know a whole lot about hockey. Yeah, even though your brother in law is Stanley Cup yeah, champion. Yeah, sure. that's all. Yeah, and that's all I do is pepper him with questions, too, when I see him. Yeah, so you know the hockey. And speaking of the hockey, tonight's a big one. Mm-hmm. A former host of a hockey show oh, will now nice. teach us about yes. what he did yes. to win a Super Bowl in the NFL. Ex host of Hockey Talk. 12-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, A.Q. Shipley. It's time for In the Trenches. Hey, baby, A.Q. Hey. A.Q., so let's go in the trenches. Hell of, hell of an intro here. Hey, and speaking of Matt Rule, let's showcase one of his former guys, oh, Deion yeah. Dawkins. We got a tackle pooling right here. We got back-to-back plays here. We got the Buffalo Bills and we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to show two plays, exact same play, two different ways to block it. They decide to trap the end man on the line of scrimmage right here. They get the tackle pulling down so we can get a double team and a double team. AJ, watch this. Watch this little vet move right here. Pull him back in. Watch Mitch Morse. Pull him back in. Oh, oh wow. That's holding. That's holding all day. Yeah, I, I knew you'd say that, but what a move. Oh. Pulls him back in. Then we get the gash. We get the gash up the middle. That was a fun play. Jimmy now we go play. the other way, right? We, we pulled and we trapped the end man on the line. Now... Tristan works. We're going to man it on the front side. We're going to pull on the linebacker. We get a nice single block right here. Watch the guard here because this is huge. They teach the high leg gallop technique. Watch the high leg. Get the hip. Puts him on the center as he can climb to the second level. And that creates the big hole right there. Wow. So innovative. Same play. Two different ways. Is that Shipyard alumni Bob Hainsey open up that hole? That is. Wow. Hainsey. Robert Hainsey right here. Nice little Ace block. A little combo. little combo right there. Aaron Stinney, JMU alum. Forgot to mention him whenever you guys read JMU. Go Dukes! Heck of a player. Gets up to the linebacker. Great job. <laughs> what did he say to Indiana again? What his do you mean? first press conference. Yeah, when he was at the IU game, basketball game. Oh, yeah. He just, you know, they trotted him out. And who do we hate? Purdue! <laughs> And, and Michigan and Ohio State stinks too. Yeah. Go Hoosiers! Yeah. Kurtz got the boys buzzing. He, killed he, he did. Killed uh, he did. Oh, yeah. AJ, AJ, this has been happening a couple of times around the office. Yeah. I'm glad he added that to the repertoire. Yeah, we are addition. too. Addition. Actually, uh, good luck down there in Bloomington, Coach Signetti. Yep. Gonna need it. <laughs> Centerville. No, they're, they're raising money. 
They're already raising money. Yeah, okay. So he's a Pittsburgh guy, right? Yeah, well. well he doesn't really Dante? play. He doesn't. West, West, yeah. West, West Virginia more yeah. so. Oh, okay. All but right. he's 62 years old, that guy. Yeah. He's down in mm -hmm. Bama, and he does his thing at JMU. IUP. Now he's at IU, and IU's raising money. I retweeted a tweet from a okay. collective. I saw that. I said, oh, they'll nice. give $2 for every retweet or whatever. Yeah. I said, you have, oh, I yeah. bet. Well, I'll retweets? fucking run this thing. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I have no idea. And did the money go in? We don't know. But Sig Daddy's going to do his yeah. thing yeah. there at Indiana. I know. Six and six, seven and six, whatever it is, they're, they're going to turn that thing around. What's your problem? No one gives a shit about IU football. I'm glad he went there. I appreciate it, but he's no. going to do it. Who no. they hate, though? Well, they hate Purdue, <laughs> <laughs> which I get and I appreciate. IU basketball, too. Centerville, oh, great. Gabe Cups, now kind of yeah. the guy yeah. Yeah. there. Yeah, he is. Indiana basketball is no joke. It is. Yeah, not. Well, Assembly it, Hall daughter. Mm -hmm. It has been awesome. a joke as of late, but hopefully it's not, not what it was. Yeah, but not this year. Well, wait till you see what IU football is with Signetti at the helm. Yeah, Can't probably yeah. going against Purdue Can't every wait. week. What's so funny, AQ? Well, I'll tell you the next the next play. IU is not going to look anything like these guys. I promise. Whoa! So you're hating on Signetti's <laughs> IU Hoosiers as well? What's your problem? Oh, you're Penn State all of a sudden. Not a absolute, Big Ten. We got absolute. a lot of Big Ten on this show. Yeah, we do. Are you still in the Big Ten next year? All right. Um, <laughs> legit question. Yeah. What is your deal? They kicked him out. Oh, my God. Nah, need him for basketball. Hey, Coach Signetti, oh. you hear how these people are talking about you around the Big Ten? Use it. Disrespect. Use it as. He'll hear it. He hears it all. Yeah. yeah. Bulletin board. Yeah, yeah we're he just giving him something. He came after Ohio State, though, too. Yeah, he, he did. did. I respect it. I respect the move. Yeah. Me too. Didn't Bob Carpenter like flip a shit and destroy his office when he heard that? Bob, yeah. Bob drove there and tried to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's it. Bob does morning radio, right? 6 to 10 a.m.? Yeah, I believe 6 to 9. Here. Oh, three hours. Okay. Did he talk about the Signetti situation? I don't like him saying. This son of a bitch. I don't bitch. appreciate that. <laughs> he, he did not. He has not yet. I'll make sure I bring it up next time I see him. Yeah, tell him we think he maybe lost his fastball if he's yeah. not talking about yeah. uh, Signetti saying he hates Ohio State. Yeah, coming after him. First that first night on the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, this North Niners team is not IU. You're right, AQ. Hey, they're unbelievable. And listen, let's just talk a little bit about why they're so good. And it starts with their head coach, offensive play caller. Shanahan does such a good job at creating angles across the board. Like I said last week, most of these zone schemes, we're always chasing a guy. They will always be working back to a guy. Watch Trent as he goes here to the front side, works a little combo block with the tight end, comes back. You also get a hell of a pancake by Jake Brendel. Used to be in Miami. Gump, you guys could use him at center right now. Oh, He's doing a heck of a job. Thank you. Oh, shit, AQ. Check this. Boom! There it is. Now we get Kittle out in front, and they have some of the biggest holes you'll see all year long always because they always have angles. You get ass cheek, you get ass cheek. You got 10 yards of fucking space for CMC Jeez, to run through. There's nobody there. I mean, there's nobody. And it's all because of what they do, and they steal a guy always with their motions. They how, always steal a guy. How happy do you think is CMC that he's there? Yeah. I mean, this was the best thing that could have ever happened to his career. I he's mean, he was obviously great. Yeah. yeah. Obviously great. But getting teamed up with a great blocking scheme, great offensive line, great play call. It's like, this is a perfect situation. There's right? one great offensive lineman on that team. Let's be very clear about that. <laughs> one. Everybody else has kind of, they've been on multiple teams. It's just scheme, and they got a great offensive line coach, and they put themselves in positions, like I said, where they always have angles as they work to the second level. Always. One, one good guy. Yeah, what is what was no, that? No, one oh. great guy. One okay, great all right, guy. All right, all right, one great one guy. One great guy. A lot of good guys. A lot of good guys. One great guy. It's not like they got the across the board the best group in the league. They don't. Great blocking tight end, too, and a great blocking fullback. He's the best blocking tight end of all time. And IU might be one of, of the best. Of all time. Yeah. Of all time. Really? really? Hey, congrats, Kittle. Right. That's hey, awesome. Good job, Giorgio. Congrats. Giorgio's dad, offensive lineman, yep. mm -hmm. takes a lot of pride in being a blocker and also has the maniacal laugh of course. whenever uh, – Whenever he pancakes people, mm -hmm. oh, he yeah. loves it. He loves everything about it. Then you're right. This particular fella here, Yushchek, he's not the biggest dude, mm -mm. but he's always he's the he's the person you follow this mm -hmm. entire thing. And he put he's always AJ knows right because you used to always have to go against fullbacks. He always puts himself and his head in the right spot to create the hole every time, every time. Smart man. And he's so good. Now listen, let's watch trend on this one because I love this play. Listen, he gets the jump reach. Now watch, before you let this thing keep going, right? He gets the jump reach. A lot of times when these guys get this, they fight hard over the top. Watch Trent with this little vet move. I love this move where he throws a rip in, 
And once he throws the rip in, mm. watch it, we're coming right here. Look at that, it's over. Oh. You guys see that? It's well, like a little vet move, the little right arm rip yeah. through, and then he just basically plays basketball and seals them off. Huge hole. These guys all over pursue. We get hell of a job where Jamal Adams, who knows what the fuck he's doing. And then you get IU. Whoa. <laughs> you get you get IU. What are you saying about Jamal? It's a vet. Why is he running away? <laughs> he's got alignment on him. <laughs> he's running away. Yeah, he, didn't any, back. he didn't want any of that. No, he can't let him get look, up the side. Look he got to sit back inside. Listen, look let's be very cut. clear. This was the first play of the game, boys. Not first play start. of the game. And you don't want contact on the first play? Game's over. He just sent it back to his boy. Come on! Send it back. They covered. Yeah, he went 77 yards. Well, great job. 72, but also Whatever it was. the first play of the game, you're talking about two different tones. Look at this fucking guy. And then obviously the other Look situation. at this, boys. We got the center getting another pancake there on Jaron Reed, who's a hell of a player. They're a physical team. Yeah. What a group. They beat the hell out of you. What a group. What a group. Look, Jamal has <laughs> turned it back in. That's Hust why he Hust stopped. Hustle. Yeah, he never gave up. And then they don't even give the touchdown to uh, Christian, I think, right? Hold on, yeah, because I, I actually put a tweet out about so how good. Kyle normally makes up for people. Yeah. Like Debo, he gave the an end around whenever he had a big, long completion, he got tackled at the one. Yeah. That's normally his thing. Christian, for some reason, I think after I saw the 72-yarder and then I saw the touchdown, my brain just like stopped working. I was like, oh, Christian scored a touchdown there. And then the Debo touchdown happened. I'm like, that feels like a Kyle Shanahan thing. Like, yeah. on a regular basis, mm -hmm. he looks out for his guys. Sure. Because there's, like, bonuses potentially in play, mm -hmm. legacies in play, everything like that with a lot of weapons and a mouths to feed. Shanahan normally does. Christian McCaffrey had to take a little break. Mm -hmm. Take a little yeah, break. It felt yes. like they, uh, they overused all McCaffrey's plays when he was on the streak. And now since the streak, he's obviously still scoring. But on the goal line, they're not afraid to just give it to Jordan Mason or even mm -hmm. Debo. Yeah. Purdy chase dog the in, the, in the playoffs they will in the playoffs he'll stay in for yeah bingo yep. 100 percent. and Purdy. he probably already hit all his incentives Purdy catching up to him hey he's huh he might be yeah he's a guy oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen oh, they'll win we now we got some big oh, yes. now we got some big finally, ones finally flacco read option aj yes. you're gonna love this one this guy's on almost every week right why tell her we talk about it all the time buffalo bill screwed up should have never let him go watch this this doesn't look like it's crazy because he doesn't kill one person he kills two people he comes around and we just give a little right hand throw. Boom, boom. Oh, boom. Oh, <laughs> shot put. A little shot put. Oh, no. Looking like Maya Lesnar there, out there. Look, he's he's there he's looking at the sidelines, too. He's talking. Oh, no. Yeah, he just stares at the sidelines like, come on, boys. Bully. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough it? block. In AQ in space like that, you guys hate that. It's an impossible block, especially with the fact that we can't cut downfield anymore. Great. And then. Now you're out there in space with a guy. Boom, boom. <laughs> really, I mean, it's head to, it's helmet to helmet with your own teammates. <laughs> yeah. How awesome is that Jeez. one? I like to stare at the side, though. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Joe he might have concussed. He might have concussed <laughs> both of them with their own head. Joe Flacco has got the boys buzzing. Look at that. It's, oh. How no. great is that? <laughs> what a freak. Oh, oh, man. I love the little shot put. Like, there's no, like, we're just going to throw. Oh, mm. Yeah. Heard it. Did he tear his ACL? Ah, yeah. <laughs> like he pulled his knee out. Yeah. Look at that. Temple to temple. Ooh. Bro, football is so hard. Mm -hmm. Violent no, sport, no, boys. So violent. <laughs> so, look, How's everybody not hurt every single play? Exactly. Seriously. Like, look at number two. Number two had no idea his own teammate was coming at his head. Just yeah. boom. Uh -huh. Like, until what? An eighth of a second beforehand. Oh, my God. There's, yeah. That's my own guy head hunting me right now. The one thing that's my favorite about... The and game then of a whole the game pile's of coming yeah, on top. A Luicon ta tackles him on to Devin Lloyd. A whole pile's coming on top. Jeez Louise. Football's so hard. Mm -hmm. So hard. Yeah. What a play. It's throughout all of the violence, throughout all the violence, throughout all the violence. We want to make this game safer, but we still enjoy the shit out of this. Sure. It's what we well, love. Well, well, you, yeah. you, you question everything about Roger Goodell last week. You remember? Well, like, yeah, oh, sure do. Should. I don't know if he's going to come on the program now. Yeah, you guys remember how big this guy was? He's very oh, big yeah. I think Gigantic, he's right? Jordan Davis. That's why I wanted to show this one. First of all, center is going to love a guard whenever you kind of get beat right here. He's going to jump him here. He gets backside right here. He gets the A-gap. He's got a clean A-gap. He's holding on for dear life. We get Zach Martin, Ooh. the best guard of this generation, right? He's beat right now. Nope. We're going to go clean up this guy. Uh-oh. King Kong oh, goes no. down. Oh, no. I mean, he's going to take a center out, too, but it's awesome. Oh, <laughs> two for one. You just like any time somebody head hunt or rib hunts a yeah. little bit out there. Come on. Cheap shots. It's the best part of the game. When you play offensive line, Whoa. you are looking for these plays because his head's on a swivel the rest of this game. His head slows him down. Slows him down. That's all we're trying to do. These guys are so good, and if we're not scheming it up right and we're in a drop-back passing game like – you are a lot of times in today's day and, day and age, right? 
Now these shots slow him down. When Hassan Reddick comes on an inside stunt and my man cleaned him up in the game, he did. He's got a good one. I might put it on. I might put it on Twitter later. There you go. On a X. good one. Yep. Hassan comes. Boom. We get those plays matter down the road. This crew is a good one. It's a very good group. Offensive line for Dallas or defensive line? Dallas. Offensive line for Dallas is a very good group. They're talking about Tyler Smith being the best guard in the NFL. He'll be a first-team All-Pro this year. He's, Damn. I mean, he is so strong, and his play strength is incredible. Tyler Smith incredible. back, all the way back. He's playing great. He's running in space. You see him? He's not mm-hmm. running. He, yeah. he doesn't look like he's – there was a point where everything was hurting him where he was yeah, running like this. You know, now he's back. Every, everybody's back. They're playing well. Yeah. And they did a great job in this game. Terrence Steele. Had a rough one against Philly the first week. They did a great job this game at always putting a chip to his side. Always. Appreciate you, Aki. Great work. Hey, I think we got one more. Do we got one more? Mm. Chicago? Chicago? Oh, yeah. Real quick, real quick, real quick. We'll get this one real quick. No, no, not real quick. I didn't see it. Dude, this is not real quick. Okay. This is the Bears – are on something good. Let's yeah. go, Bertrand. Hey, let's yeah, we got enjoy him. this. We got him. Let's enjoy this. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Tevin Jenkins, another guy who's on this quite a bit. He puts him down, you know, just a nice little put down right here because he's doubling with his tackle. And then 94, Foxy, I apologize in advance. Because it is going. Oh, I mean, uh, 96, 96, brother. We got to we gotta <laughs> be a little more stout. My <laughs> no, man. no, 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 my man. Hey, they didn't show up this game. Come it's okay. On, we put man. this. Now watch what? it. Brother, my, oh, my man. <laughs> this what is what is Hutch is dealing with. We need to get 79 a new number, too. Boom! Oh, no. Big stick. Holy hell. Oh, Ooh. I remember Almost that Almost had it. I remember that play. Yeah. <sighs> my God. Hey, that? I mean, 96 is playing <laughs> patty cake up there. He slipped. It's tough. Soldier oh. Field. Oh, yeah, yeah the right. weather. We'll, tough, we'll give the weather surface. the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, he's getting, he's getting doubled. doubled. It's Soldier Field. What do you want from the guy? The play's going the other way. <laughs> I think he legit just snapped. <laughs> uh, I'm done. I'm going to tell you this, though, because, look, you guys can see this, right? We got a one-on-one block with a two-way go with a lot of space for the center. Lucas Patrick is sitting there holding this oh, yeah. fucking block like, fuck, somebody. Come on. Somebody come somebody get these ribs. Somebody cheap shot this guy. Somebody get these ribs. Somebody cheap shot this guy. Yeah, I got you. And he's always Boom. coming. That's, Devin. that's Mercedes Lewis over there? Yeah. He's big yeah. dog. He's huge. He's still, yeah. what is he, like? he had a catch. Yeah, this is 19. Year 19. Year? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Just always he's doing so it. Big. Yeah. So Look big. So big. how big this dude is. They could put him at tackle. <laughs> Think yeah. about all the joints with how big he mm-hmm. is. To play 19 years. The amount of recovery, workout, everything that he has to do. Mm. What a stud, dude. Hell yeah, Mercedes. The old football he was he's playing, too. He's literally playing tackle right there. You, what's yeah, that? He probably he's, play another I said he's literally he's playing tackle. tackle right there. Yeah, he's a stud. Always yeah. has. Ladies and gentlemen, A.Q. Hey, Shipp. Hey, A.Q., hey, 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 before you sit down over there, what are we doing today? What are you doing? Oh, putt. It's a putt. No. no you no. become, you know, this has become a thing now with you doing this thing. You the football? I mean? Just everything. There you go. Are you going to make it or you're not? Like, there's real – there's been a little Great. bit of a buzz in the air, you know, whenever yeah. you step up to the plate here. All right, let's go. Let's throw a football. Oh, man. All Don't right. hurt your arm for tomorrow. You're going to need your throwing arm for tomorrow. True. And you True. should get good vibes going into war games. You know what I mean? you, you got to be nervous. He's, he's got to be nervous. You don't know body. what he's getting into. I don't, Keep know the this, upper body. I don't know if this guy has the ability to be nervous. I like what you're doing. For something like this, honestly. Look, he thinks he's good. He oh, yeah. It's fucking what if he's got to run hard? Right here. What if he's running 10 miles through the mud? Like, he could be then doing he's that. been training for Hey, that. AJ, then guess what? You run 10, thro- 10 miles through the mud. That's oh! what you do. Good answer. Of course, you're an adult with three oh, yeah. kids, and this is, yeah, we're doing this. Duh. We're doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Are you yeah. going to join? No. You want to sign up? What if they just I'm, do I'm not buds? T- I'm not tough enough for that. What if I'm you really just? Not. What if this is like play buds? Oh. You know what I mean? You're sleeping. Well, then we're gonna find out what I'm made of. Yes, we are. Real yeah. quick. At this age, too. Yeah. I think you wouldn't hit that belt. I'm in better shape now than I ever was as a player. Yeah, but mentally, yeah. you got you know pretty good house life. Yeah, true. The whole thing. Bud. It's like the Conor McGregor thing. Now, now sleeping I'm feeling good about life. He's training at resorts. I if he yeah. wins. That's one of the most mentally tough things of all time. Yeah. Because they're showing him, like, run sprints and circles at resorts. Yes. Like, actually. I mean, he trains on his Outside yacht. Outside of his yacht. Yeah. Outside of his yacht, he's yeah. working out shadow boxing on the dock. Yeah, he's working out, like, trying to get an actual workout. And people are like, Conor McGregor's, oh, yeah, you're Conor McGregor. They're standing, like, two feet from him. He's like, I'm trying to get a real workout. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's like, a real, I'm training for an actual fight. If he wins doing that, 
he should be as loud as he possibly oh, yeah. will. Is, yeah. it, oh, yeah. is it a definite? Is he fighting Chandler? Like, has that ever yeah. been announced? It's definite? He's back in the testing pool, they I said. No, I have no idea. Okay. I, don't know. I have no idea. Big but, one this weekend. There's no way he wins. Who's that? Covington, Edwards. Oh, that is a big one. Tony Ferguson, yeah. Patty Pimblett. Oh, Patty Pimblett's fighting this weekend? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Right. Oh, yeah. I watched that. Kobe hasn't fought forever. Uh, kobe has been a couple Tony, of years. Tony Ferguson's been training with David Goggins. Oh, yeah. holy shit. He, is he going to be at your war games? <laughs> no, I, I think he's out this year. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, there is, uh, you know, Vikings Lions is at 815 this weekend. Oh, well, speaking of Vi right, uh, right. Vikings, brand new quarterback this weekend. Mullins in for the Pastronaut. Ah. Announcement made by Tom Pelissero, Minnesota native. So Nick Mullins is now the starter for the Minnesota Vikings. The Pastronaut story was a good one. Good run. It was. It good was run, a good one. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it was. Thank we you, had Doc. fun. Hell yeah. It was a good one. And NASA was involved. Yep. You mm -hmm. know, so like we even got others, members of society. Everybody enjoyed it. That was a fun story. It was. Yeah. Kevin O'Connell showcases his coach. AJ, that was fun when it happened. You know, it's over. Now. A lot of fun. What, you think it's, you think it's over? You don't think he's going to get another shot somewhere? Yeah, it's over. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> get another shot. I, I hope he does get another shot. Yeah, he's gonna be, I think we're finding he's out He's always going to be in the league, and whoever's <laughs> yeah, in front maybe. of him is going to get hurt. He, I think he's going to get another shot. Hey, Josh, let's go, bub. Let's go. He, said, yeah. oh, get him, Josh. he just got all his furniture into his fucking house in Minnesota now I after getting it. pushed out of Arizona. Yeah, I know. Better get it back We don't out. appreciate that for you, Josh Dobbs, but that's life professional he's probably, he's quarterback. Probably he's, probably, he's probably kept it in the pod, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you got to make sure you pay those bills because if not, you're going to get auctioned off and yeah. it's going to be on storage wars. Exactly. Sure. Big sure. Daryl. AJ, yep. AJ, you think AQ makes this shot or not? How many people you think we should give uh, Should we give winners to? It's the holiday season coming up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 15. I think 15 winners when he makes this first one. I like that. Okay, I like first that. That was like really, that. that was very reasonable. Yeah, was. right there. 15 people, $500. All AQ has got to do before he goes to war games, put that football into that basketball <laughs> hoop right over there. He's had a great day today. He has. Great day. He's got a seal on his hoodie. It's not yep. to save the seals from getting killed by whales. It's the Navy fucking seals. Amen. For them. The only seals. Well. Well, okay. All right. A, I mean, if you want to take a stand that seals aren't real, like the, <laughs> uh, the, the uh, mammal, wow. fish, yeah. whatever it is. Flex seal, not to mention. The mammal. Yeah. Flex seal, there's a package thanks, right over thanks, here. Thanks seal also real. Seals. seals. But we're right. Hey, we fucking roll with the Navy seals. Yes, Hell we do. Yeah, yeah, brother. Finger seal. Don't let them down. Yeah. yeah. Good call. There's a couple yep. different seals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Presidential seal. That is a seal. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is. There's other seals as well, not just from the president. Vacuum seal. Seal the singer. That's what. Yeah. yeah. Kiss by a rose. Oh, that's what he said. That's <laughs> a good one. Oh, I heard him for sure. Seal on like a water bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one too. That's yeah, a good one. Mm -hmm. Also, seal on goggles. You know, you got to get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're so talking. We're telling you. You're not Sealing. telling us. Yeah. Because yeah. remember, you said. I know there's no. Shut up. There's only, you there's only one seal that matters. Yeah, you mentioned that. Okay, all right. <laughs> People are coming at me, huh? I don't know. I don't know. Here we go. Probably. Hold on. Nobody can come at you. Who's going to come at you? Yeah, you're about to go to GI camp. You want them to come at you. Yeah, you're pro Navy SEAL. Thank you for your yeah. service, AQ. Thank you for mentioning the Navy SEALs today. Thank you, AQ. Yes. Hero. All right. Is this right, going in? 15 people, $500. Here we go. Make their dreams come true. 500 bucks during the holiday. He's too jacked up. He's a Navy ooh, SEAL. Ooh. ooh. That was oh, pretty high, good, though. High. That was a little high. He's a Navy SEAL for the next two days. Yep. He's, right he's already in the mindset. He's a method actor, just like Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's just got to be a regular ass football player. And if he could do that, 15 people, $500. When he makes this football into that basketball hoop right over yonder, AQ Shipley heading off to war games. Ah, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Trying to back. That was cool. bad. That was bad. That was bad. It was really bad. Hope you're not throwing any grenades this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it like that way, right? <laughs> you can do it. Got to get close. Drop, trying to get drop it by your foot. Yeah, AJ, you can... any final thoughts here for our War Games competitor uh, over the next 48 hours? I like to I like to stay positive usually when it comes to these types of things, but I don't know if I'm super confident this third one's going. Wow. Right. wow. Jeez, Thanks, AJ. The whole world's against you. This is what the Navy SEALs That's right. prepare for. Uh -huh. exactly. Exactly. Here we this go. type of adversity is what you've been training for. This is going to get you ready for whenever they drop you in the middle of the fucking woods and tell you to come find us if you want to yeah. eat breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's about to happen to you tonight mm -hmm. in a pitch black. And right. I'm ready for it. For good vibes, good mojo. This also, 15 winners of $500. Just put that football right into that hoop right over there. In AJ's face. Oh, yeah. Ooh. AJ, I think you were right. We all felt the same way yeah. you did. Yeah. <laughs> what is your guy's problem? I mean, you're not even getting it up there. I mean, that I was, was there. That was there. No, that was on but it was, Okay, see right? that? What I hear, though, is confidence. Yeah. 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 I, I hear a guy that hasn't lost it. D-Butt, anything to say to AQ <laughs> to make sure that this is the ball that goes home for not only himself, 
but the Navy fucking SEALs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not about you. It's about the United States of America. Exactly. That's right. Well, well said. Right. Well said. Well said. Why don't you get into character and serve this beautiful country yeah. and the 15 people that win $500 when you put this ball into that hoop right over there? <gasps> this guy loves Al-Qaeda. <laughs> he never played for the He's though. going to SEAL camp. We don't need him. Well, yeah, why don't need is that he beating. making it for the SEALs? Nah, we don't want to do the Bama one. Hey, Q, you already uh, Oh, and a donation. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Here you go, Akish. What we got? 15 people, $500. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also a donation to this Navy SEAL Foundation. C4, mm-hmm. yep. C4 Foundation. Done. All you got to do is make the Duke into the hoop mm-hmm. and 15 people. Come on. Plus some good, feel good philanthropy. Hell yeah. Will happen on this glorious Tuesday. All right, here we go. Just hours before yeah. you're locked in the woods with Navy SEALs and Jack Osborne. Boom. Here we go. Here we go, AQ. For the good of the SEALs. For the good of the people! Holy shit, Jeez. your worst one yet? This guy is your worst curious. one yet? Cut, cut. Took a good hack, though. You're already, good hack. you're already stealing Valor this week, and now you're stealing donations. What he's trying to hell? earn a little Valor, I think, is what he's trying to do, but he ain't going to be... Can't All right. Do it, right? The Bama one's usually pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Bama That's one, the one is the one. It's yeah. small, the hoop is bigger. Chuck's never missed it, so if you miss it, you're worse than Chuck. I watched, yeah. Chuck, I watched Chuck miss a lot last week. So I don't, oh, geez, don't try to bring other people yeah. down. It's I not did. an ABC yeah. I missed every week. I'm not, I'm not bringing anyone the down. Ball, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold Slow on. Slow down. Con man? Yeah. As a man who's wearing 10 wolves on your chest today. Sure. And obviously a man who has numerous friends that are Navy SEALs. Mm-hmm. Numerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you have to say about this Navy SEAL thing? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Doer. Yeah, sure. AQ Shipley and his next attempt here to win 15 people $500 and a donation to C4, a Navy SEAL Foundation. Honestly, I am very negative when it comes to this stuff, but I yeah. think this one's actually going to be the one for Okay, Con. I've also, okay. I've also, hold on. I've also checked the internet and people are calling you Osama Shipley. So if you don't make this, mm-hmm. that nickname. It's only going to get louder. Follow you forever. And we don't like that, mm-hmm. especially going into your gonna Navy SEAL camp. Yep. Yeah, right, here we go. Game. Here we go. Yeah. Well done. William Regal. Yep. That was well done. I thought that was Raider, man. Well, he's a part. Oh, I thought you were throwing Church it. Wow. Oh, Church my God. Hold on. Me Don't have second guessing because yeah. there's a lot of positive I energy just, there. Yeah. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Here we go. All you got to do is make that 15 people $500 and a donation to C4, the Navy SEAL Foundation, for a man who's going into a war camp here in about an hour or two. AQ Shipley, good vibes, good mojo. Represente. Oh, oh man. Boy. I thought that was in. All right. Well. Can't make them all. Or any. Yeah. Oh, hold the phone. <laughs> oh. Oh! oh! Let's go! Oh! Oh! What? Let's Swing! go! Oh, that was nice. the whole way. We couldn't eat of my course. hero. Oh. Of course. Right. Count <laughs> that was awesome. You don't Count throw, it. you shoot. Count it. All right. Good yeah, shot. Yeah, you're right. Maybe seals. seals yeah. do. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. They shoot. Yes. His Boy, first. Shot. That's on me. Was that take, take and and the intimidate. Anyways, Anyways, they went down too. Hey, that, that was good vibes, good energy there. Hey, I'm proud of you, yes. AQ. Way to bounce that back. Good work. Way to battle adversity. There was zero confidence in that basketball shot. That's what. Just that's honest. what you need to go into war games with tonight. Yeah. All right, because that was the best thing we got. Yeah. AJ, have a good one. Mr. Rogers, thank you for your time. PK Subban, obviously, thank you. Can't wait for that game tonight. Matt Rule, what a time. Dog. What a day. Yeah, shot. Good work, AQ. Bang. Splash. Way to go, AJ, or AQ. You got a donation and 15. Mm. Splash. I think you're standing right in front of it with your head from the camera, but we saw it. We saw it. Perfect. Hey, I'm proud of you, AQ. Great work, AQ. Proud of you, AQ. Proud of AQ. Wow. Got a good eye on wow. that. That was a good shot. Yeah. Good shot. Good shot. That's a Great tough shot. shot. Yes. Look how fucking surprised I am. <laughs> I was so uh, I was you yeah. were surprised. Yeah, I think we all were. <laughs> yeah, we all had no idea what was happening there. And you know, that's the funny thing about life. Mm-hmm. I love it. Sometimes the things that you have no idea about to happen turn into be great things. They're the best things. So just live in the moment. Mm-hmm. Don't try to forecast what the future will be too much because then you're going to find yourself worrying about what it might not be. We have no idea what that is. Nope. In the past, move past it. Yeah. Learn from it. Keep it moving sure. and enjoy the hell out of right now. Because that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Amen. 
Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, big one tomorrow. Massive show. Big one tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Very excited for it. Goodbye.